The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Sports, 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 sports. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Coach Saban Thursday, October 19th, 2023, this sports program starts now. Football! It is happening. The weather has turned here in Indianapolis. Mm. We will not see the sun for the next five months. It is raining. It is getting chilly. But that means one thing and one thing alone. That means that football matters most right now. Tonight, NFL Week 7 kicks off as the Jacksonville Jaguars will travel down to the Bayou to take on the New Orleans Saints. Saints favored by two. How's that possible with mm. what the Jags have oh. been able to do? Oh, Trevor Lawrence, quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Questionable. Will be a game-time decision although people on the internet are assuming that he's going to play. We do not know what the case is. We will continue to try to snoop around to try to get the best answer for everybody for the next three hours. We have a packed show today. We have Artie Smith joining us in about 15 minutes, the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. They take on the Bucks on this Sunday in a big division matchup yes. down there in hot Tampa Bay. Then we have Coach Saban joining us in the next hour. Cannot wait to chat with him. Massive win last week. They didn't win by 20. No, they didn't. Only won by three. So yeah. we'll count that as a loss. We'll let him know that. We are all very disappointed. I'm sure he'll be excited to hear that. But he's got a Massive rivalry. The third Saturday in October is happening for Alabama this weekend. Playing against a Tennessee team that's different this year uh -huh. than they were last year. How does he feel about his team? Then we'll have uh, Peyton Manning join us. Ooh, oh, wow. the sheriff. Yeah. Peyton Manning's going to join us. Okay. Uh, season four of Peyton's Place is oh, nice. launching. Nice. Uh, so I cannot wait to chit-chat with him. There might be an appearance by me what? in this particular season. All right. Okay. Whoa! Oh! Whoa! Break oh! Am I a thespian? Maybe. Whoa! Oh, Maybe. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad. Cowboys turn digs this year. And a man who has coached football for 36 years, 18 years in college, 18 years in the NFL. My head coach at one point for the Indianapolis Colts. A defensive extraordinaire and a man who is 5-1 picking against the spread mm -hmm. on Thursday Night Footballs this season. Ladies and gentlemen, Paisano, Chuck Pagano. Hey, hey Chuck. How's it going? Chucky P, how we doing, pal? Doing great. You look great. Good. To be here. Look Feel great. great. Hey, oh. five and one against the spread on these Thursday nights. Now, very lucky. Last. Well, don't. Chuck. Don't come say on. that. Don't be acting like that. You're just diminishing all the hard work that you put in. You come in every single week, every single morning, whenever I walk in here. You're already sitting down at your little desk there next to Zito. What's that, man? Is that a five? That's a five, man. Mm -hmm. I got five of those things. Let me pull this out of the pocket. Boom. Not a middle finger. Five. That's what I got. Chuck Pagano's on his MCDC bullshit. He's looking to make it six and one. But every morning whenever I walk in here on these glorious Thursdays, you're already sitting down, notepad out, looking up names, pronunciations, doing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You are more detail-oriented for one game than I've ever seen anybody in my life. It is as if you're taking your head coaching cap for both of these teams every single week. And we appreciate the hell out of the money train that you have yeah. Hell yeah, Legitimately, yeah. we appreciate that. Have a lot of fun. Not easy to pick games no, against the spread. Hell, are you kidding me? It's impossible. Last year you did Coach P's Keys. It was awesome. I felt like we were kind of making a mockery of you a little bit too much. <laughs> I didn't think you deserved it. This year, I wanted you to be a part of every discussion because your football intel and brain is a fantastic mm -hmm. one. And now the fact that we're also benefiting from it, uh, we love it. So we appreciate every time you come. Let's start diving into some of the news that is happening around the NFL. Video has been released of Jalen Ramsey back at practice for the Miami Dolphins. He has never played for the Miami Dolphins. If you do recall, was with the Rams, gets traded to Miami after signing a big deal, gets hurt, don't get a chance to really experience Experienced the Jalen Ramsey, Miami Dolphins, Vic Fangio defense, but now he's bouncing around, bopping out there. This is a weapon that Vic Fangio is going to be excited to see out there, oh I assume. Oh, my God, no doubt about it. What and type of player is he, Chuck? 
he's, I, I mean, if you want to match him up, you can match him up on the other team's number one. That predominantly doesn't happen in Vic's defense. He usually just plays left and right. He played in the slot at the Rams, so he's got versatility. I don't say. I could put him in the back end if you want to put him in the back end as a safety at some mm. point. So there's so many things that this kid can do. He hits, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. He talks his shit. Mm-hmm. He hits. Brilliant. He's a mood booster, I think, for everybody on the team. He's a guy that you want on your team, would hate if he's on the other team. Yep. And the Dolphins are getting him at just the right time. We're starting to see more and more clips of this coach, McDaniel. And, uh, Gumpy, I saw a video today that you posted from Hammer Don, Don. the day before McDaniel was hired for the Miami Dolphins to become the head coach. And your thoughts were like, kick, yeah, I'm in. It can't get any worse. What it has become with this guy has been a dream, I'd say, Gumpy, with his sweet hat on back there. He is one of one. Like, I've never seen anything like it. And what he's done with Tua and the whole team, like, everyone's buying in. You don't hear a bad thing about him. And, like, the history of the Dolphins and their coaches – this does not happen. Like, okay. this isn't real life. Okay, so let's talk about the reasons why. And I don't know how he wasn't a head coach earlier, although he is a very young man who mm-hmm. became a head coach, obviously. Mm-hmm. If you hear him talk and learn of his story, it's like, wow, this guy is supposed to be leading an NFL team, especially in this very offensive-heavy era that we're in in the NFL. Yep. Here's a clip of him talking to Carissa Thompson about being a father and what it's like with coaching, and just listen to the empathy pour out of this human soul. He's supposed to be a coach, and I think he's supposed to be a dad as well, obviously. How has becoming a father made you a better head coach? Oh, I think, ironically, they're similar in that it's a servitude role. I'm so proud of you. I mean, you are a everything you, you wanted to be and more. Being a dad is very much like being um, a head coach in, in that you're constantly concerned about the well-being of other people yeah and i know for a fact i couldn't be oh, any of the things that are the most important things to left. me <laughs> father husband man and then head coach all of those are a consequence of wanting to be something for someone to not exist for yourself is a beautiful thing This dude's a beautiful thing, Mm -hmm. okay? And I had no idea how long it was going to go because I can listen to that man speak for hours. I didn't Mm -hmm. see the countdown on the lower left, so I apologize for interrupting a great moment there with Carissa Thompson in that one-on-one interview. But whenever we hear this guy do his thing in press conferences, he's nothing like anybody else. He's very relaxed. When he came in and did our show at our old studio, just sat down Mm -hmm. and was like, what's up? Yale brain, Mm -hmm. obviously a mastermind whenever it comes to offensive football, but has committed his entire being to this Dolphins team. Wakes up at 2.30 in the morning or something like that yeah. to do his whole life. This guy's special, con man, and he's in the AFC East for the next 20 years probably. Yeah, absolutely brutal for anybody who isn't a Dolphins fan in the AFC East, but it's cool that there is this new era. Like, I, I feel like the the LaFleurs and, you know, the Kevin O'Connells and those guys, like, they're kind of different from what McDaniel is. And, I mean, Gumpy just said it. He is one of one. And then when you see the other teams try and copy him, you'll definitely see it this weekend. When they do the sprint out motion Mm -hmm. every other team right before the snap right before the snap every other team is peeking back turning around to make sure that they're not going off sides or they're not going fast but the dolphins like they they are so well there's a well-oiled machine that when tyree kill sprints out there he doesn't turn around he knows when the ball is snapped and it's it's impressive because aq always talks about the reason the san francisco O-line and that run game is so good is that they just practice the motions over and over and over again and it doesn't come easy. And you can tell that with the Dolphins team. Like they're practicing that motion and it looks easily and simple and it's like why hasn't anyone else done that? It's probably because it's so damn difficult. And it's credit to Tyree Kill and Waddle and all those guys too, but like McDaniel you know, bringing that to the NFL has completely changed. Yeah, that. and I think you'll hear a lot of coaches uh, said this about Bill Belichick with Tom Brady and uh, LaFleur with Aaron Rodgers, where they go, hey, it's real easy to win with mm-hmm. all those people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, we heard, heard it at the Niners. They're like, well, if you put Mac Jones mm-hmm. in where Brock Purdy is, Someone said that. he could play like that. That's right. Okay, now we don't know what like that means, <laughs> if he's saying exactly or not. Just kind of completely diminishing the mental side of being a quarterback, which is like 85% of it, especially at the NFL, going to have to be able to make every throw. But now some of the same conversations happening about Tua. Mm-hmm. And not only do you hear Coach McDaniel, like his empathy and he's a deep thinker 
and he's he's one of one. He has those six shades. He oh, wears yeah. Yogers mm-hmm. tightened up. He's got the off-white shoes with clips still. I mean, this dude is different than anything we've seen as a head coach. Listen to the passion whenever people say bad things about his players. In this particular case, it's Tua. Anybody could do what Tua's doing, right? There are some folks who believe that many quarterbacks in this scheme with you as the coach, with Tyreek and Jalen, maybe even many, many quarterbacks would excel, would flourish, would be near the top of the passer Raider leading MVP candidate. What, if any, pushback is there relative to? Wait, no, no, hold on. Yeah, Tua push, is a little different. I'm about to push this podium over. Um, <laughs> my my answer to that would would be who the f cares because it's it, there's Whoa. it is a team yeah. we're we're working together and I know one thing um, I've coached stuff a long time I haven't seen um, people do what our guys do. Yeah, I mean, he he gives an answer that goes on to basically just say, yeah, we're a special group. But the whole thought of people saying that anybody could do what you're doing right now kind of diminishes a lot of the greatness that is taking place and all of the work that is taking place behind the scenes. Whenever we talked to Coach uh, McDaniel, he came in and he said, it, it's actually one of our commercials we, we run, where he said, well, first, I want to see what Tua does well. The reason why the team is built the way it is is because McDaniel watched 7,000 clips of Tua Tonga-Valoa playing quarterback, not only with the Dolphins in Alabama and high school and Hawaii and probably whenever he was in his youth league, yeah. but he said, what does this guy do well? Well, his timing's great and his accuracy is perfect because he was a run game coordinator mm-hmm. okay, for the 49ers. Now his offense is known as being the most timingly beautiful offense where everything's in there in speed all over the place. He was a massive piece of why they built the team this way. Tua is a massive reason why the team is being built this way but it's not just as easy as yeah we get speed and we have good play calls and it happens why do you think the Dolphins have been so successful and why do you think McDaniel's been successful Chuck he's putting those guys in position to be successful there's a lot of guys that have fell into rosters like this and had plenty of talent had a quarterback but they're set in their old ways and they figure hey I'm just going to run what I like to run instead of figuring out like what was the play clip he put together on Tua? It was a thousand, I think it was a thousand, thousand yeah. seven hundred plays or something. Whatever, mm-hmm. right? And watch every play, and I guarantee you, he did that for everybody on that offense. And so, there's a lot of guys that don't have the ability to go ahead and say, "Okay, what do these guys do best?" And then to be as detailed and uh, execute the way that they do. You guys are talking about that motion. It's like the tush push. Everybody now is trying it, right? It's Turn easy. on oh, yeah. Tuesday night football, Wednesday night football, mm-hmm. Thursday night football, high school. Right, 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 right. And how many people are being successful with it? It's only Philly right now, right? But he's, he's unbelievable. He plays to those guys' strength. He obviously can relate to them. You told me, I think, whenever we were interviewing McDaniel on the show, I think Chuck texted me and was like, I'd go coach for this guy. Why was it literally from the beginning that you thought, yeah, this is a guy you'd want to coach alone? He's real, and he, he's obviously bright. He's very smart, but he delegates, and he, he sees the best in people, and he brings the, the best out of those people, but he lets those guys coach. And he, didn't have an, he doesn't have an ego, so for him to say, hey, look, I've got the offense. I've got the quarterback. We're going to get him right. All right, get him in the jujitsu. He's going to be healthy. Hey, it's right. out. working. Yeah. Yeah. We got all these at, we got all these pieces, right? And then go hire Vic and let Vic run the defense. And hey, Gumpy, still and a lot I, of room to grow on that defensive side of the ball in the fans' eyes. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, definitely. I think Ramsey back will help. Jalen Phillips still not on a full. He's still on a play count this week as well. But the Cam Smith they drafted in the second round this year has not played a snap this season. He was supposed to be a very good cornerback as well. Is that the South Carolina yeah. kid? Yes, sir. Yeah. It, ta- it takes time, and, and sometimes those guys get in there and they're ready to go, and sometimes they're not. So getting Jalen back will be huge. But And this guy, you don't see him ever get flustered. Ever. <laughs> no. Like, I watched a game the other – on Sunday, I think – and You're old. We know. something happened, something happened. Yeah, like, yeah, right yeah, before, yeah, I forgot what yesterday. Yeah, right yeah, before yeah, the half, cool. you know, and clock ran out, and then guy go – Ballistic, right? Oh, that was uh, prime time. You're talking about Dayball. Yeah. Dayball. Oh, yeah. okay. about Giants right? Bills. Yeah. This, go after a coach, go after the play. Come on. What are you doing? Like, you won't ever see Mike do that. 
Yeah. Like that's that's ridiculous. He has an old soul. Like too, everybody, like. we're all pissed off. If you're a, if you're a Giants fan, you're pissed. If you're one of the coaches, you're pissed. If you're the OC, you're pissed. If you're Tyrod Taylor, you're pissed. Everybody knows that, right? So why pile on? Well, I think the thing about Dabo, it's interesting. And this is just like Doug Peterson tonight. Like I just assumed Dabo would be running the offense, calling the offense. He is yeah, not. Hey. Doug Peterson down in Jacksonville, he is not calling the offense. It's like that's a fascinating thing. So the funny thing is, right? So who's got the final say? Oh, so you're saying he's still potentially in? Like, no, but hey, tell this is touchdown or incompletion. Oh, to Tyrod Taylor? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh, 100%. We, we, so don't give them, don't give them any option on this. This is a pass and a pass only. There are no runs. No, 100. percent I agree completely. But it's like in that moment, Dayball's thinking to himself, I assume. Like, if I was doing this, this would not have happened. Yeah. So that's why he goes right up to the offensive coordinator, and then he goes up to Tyrod Taylor. Because right before that, you can drop in the ear because you have, like, what, 10 seconds pretty much to talk before you give the play. Hey, this one's going out of bounds or in the end zone. That's it. That's only – you can drop that reminder to Tyrod Taylor, who's 34 years old, by the way. Right. Yeah. So he should know that as well. But also, heat of the moment, first start in a while, he's in there. You can give a little reminder. Dayball thinks to himself, I assume, like, oh, well, if I was the – this would never happen. So that's why he goes – so I appreciate that he's a little emotional. Whenever you go to Doug Peterson, though, I wonder if he's thinking the same things whenever Press Taylor's got Trevor Lawrence's knee getting banged up in a game that's already pretty much locked and sealed away, and now here we are in a short week, Thursday night, wondering if Trevor Lawrence is going to be able to make it back. Early in the season, if you have any injury, if you're a quarterback or wide receiver or any of these positions that are skill positions and everything, week seven, you have a good record right now. Yep. There's a lot of games left. It's a Thursday. If he had anything actually wrong with him, I don't think it would be a real question. I, th I think the question would be like, yeah, we're going to take this one, and then you're going to get back mm -hmm. the next week. Now that they're talking about, like, getting him back, working him out, they're still thinking about it. For me, I don't think the injury was that big of a deal. I, I think it was like maybe a bruise or maybe something like this. It wasn't as serious. And I think Trevor plays it. For some reason, on this short of a week, with the quarterback being the star that he is, and the team revolving around him, and you hear the stories about his rookie year, how it was whenever Urban was there, and what Doug Peterson had to do to basically lift him back up because of everything that happened in his first year. It's like, would you roll the dice if there was a little bit of an uh, on a short week this early in the season with Trevor Lawrence? Or do you think that this is one of those things where Trevor Lawrence might be fighting it, saying, no, I want to play, I want to play? What do you think, Chuck? Why do you think we're even... There's so much mystery behind this because there, nobody practices on the short week. You go and do walkthroughs. So you don't even know, okay, he was limited, he's this. Everybody's limited. You know this being a oh, yeah. plan on a short week with the practices. They're, they're not. They're hats, they're shorts, they're walkthroughs. So there's no physical. Yeah, even physical, me and Vinny were pissed at you no, if we had to kick. Like, yeah, what there's are we, no yeah. physical part to this. You know? so, us, what hell? are you doing? As we can play on Thursday, bro. Yeah. Yeah. See you Thursday? So Bane we, over the wall. We need a couple. Don't we need a couple, you think? <laughs> That's a funny way to look. So if they play them, I mean – you're, ri you're risking, happening. you're risking, you know, you're either going to hand the ball off to ETN, down after down after down after down, try to stay ahead of the chains, get it out of his hands, throw quick screens to Ridley and, and Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, boom, boom, boom. Otherwise, you say, no, we're not doing this. Also, you, you can let use CJ this as, Beathard go. You could use this as a buy for Trev. Exactly. Because England, two games, and then last week, so they're living in London for two weeks, then they have last week. So if it's anything, you would think he would not be playing. But there's still a big conversation on maybe he is playing, which leads me to believe that maybe it's not as bad of an injury? I don't know. The, the more books, gamesmanship. Though. Oh, yeah, or it might be. You're the right. The insiders, Pelissero and Rappaport, are reporting that he is pushing to play and he's confident that he will play, but they they did, they did brought up their third string, Nathan Rourke, to the active rosters in case he can't go tonight. Mm. And they're going to test it before the game to make What's sure. What's that mean? You're, you just gave a big, like that, that meant something that they activated. Well, the I mean, that's all part of the, you know. Gamesmanship? But once you bring that guy up, because they haven't had three up yet, right? Nobody's know, really using that third quarterback. Uh, right? the Patriots did last week, I thought, didn't they? Uh, maybe so he's third designated quarterback, yeah. so he's not eating into any special teamers or anything? Or is he on? It says uh, Nathan Rourke signed to the active roster Wednesday was how it was listed. So that means that they are willing to sacrifice another position this evening on a Thursday night football game to bring up a quarterback. Is that because they don't know if Trevor will be able to last, if they think it'll be a little bit more painful, or because he's not playing? I guess we have to read all these tea leaves in just a guess. And another one is like, Jags underdogs tonight against the Saints. Jags have been playing very good. I'm not saying the Saints aren't a good team. I assume the Saints are going to be in the conversation at the very end to win the NFC South and everything like that. But for me, I didn't expect – I thought, like, Jags wagon right now. Yep. Now, granted, I watched them last week just decimate 
the Indianapolis Colts. Mm -hmm. So, like, maybe I'm living in recency bias. But it seems to me that they believe that Trevor will be hindered a little bit in that. Uh, is that not an accurate assessment? Yeah, and I, I think the the home I think the Saints' home field is one of the most adjusted in, in lines in the NFL. Like, if this was on neutral, the Jags would, what, be like a two-point favorite? <laughs> what, they beat us by dinner? 50? Were you there for that? 51. Yeah. Yeah, that's Ooh. when you were the quarterback, right? No, yeah, well, you were. that was Cur Curtis Painter was down there. That wasn't you. The that year they put 51 on us? Well, there was another year they put 60 on us. Oh, you oh, is that when MJD rest for 300 and whatever? Oh, no, you're talking about the Jags. I'm talking what about the Saints talking? down in New Orleans, mm -hmm. the home field advantage down there. It's oh, a real no, deal down there. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But I was there. I'm sorry, I was there I all off. week, too. Buddy, it was tough. I mean, Jimmy, that was the year Jimmy Graham did his thing, mm -hmm. and we were certainly in the middle of it. That's Curtis real. Painter was our starting quarterback, and I loved Curtis Painter as a human, but he was not set up for success. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think they were necessarily putting him in the right spots. I was throwing, though. I, I played quarterback through the week uh, against our defense it was just cards you know and it was seven on seven or whatever and boy I hit the seam to a tight end I might have threw for 10,000 yards <laughs> like, yeah. literally might have threw for 10,000 yards if it because I look at this one and if that's covered if Mike's this way boom we're going this way to this one and then if I look this way he slides boom I'm going this way and I'll tell you what Drew did, Drew Brees did the same yeah. thing I did. Yeah. Oh, I never could have guessed that. On the flight down to the game, <laughs> there was a lot of chatter in, on the plane about like, "Hey, are we gonna be? Are they running the plays that I was running?" <laughs> Like, I almost won the damn MVP this week. Yeah. Like, this is not – and they did. It was the same exact thing as practice. I mean, they just ran right through us. First play of the game, strip sack, uh, I think, touchdown. Fumble touch. Against <laughs> us. Yeah, Curtis Painter got the ball. Good way to start. First play. That was the first play. That was when oh, our okay. offense – their defense scored first play whenever we were on the field, let alone what their offense was going to be able to do. But you're right. When that place gets rolling down there – it is a real problem. They got that whistle dude oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. drunk Cajuns they everywhere. They do a very good defense, too. Joining us now is another member of the NFC South. And this man has a massive NFC South battle this weekend in Tampa Bay. We've been incredibly lucky to get a chance to chit-chat with him throughout this entire season. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons, Coach Ari Smith. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Coach, how we doing? Great. I, I'm fascinated. I, I heard some of your quarterback. Uh, stories. Yeah. Hey, listen. When was this? This is like my first yeah. three years. So the first three years, whenever it was the old regime, they let me like do stuff in practice. Then Chuck came and Chuck was like, no, I'm throwing these balls to the <laughs> DBs. I'm throwing this entire thing. But I was, I was dealing the week we played the Saints and uh, the Saints did better than I was doing. <laughs> and we went in there. Let's talk, I'll talk to you about this because now obviously in the mm -hmm. NFC South, that's a place you're going to have to frequent for the next hopefully 15, 20 years as your head coaching stay at the Falcons. That building down there is bananas. Is there any other places around the league that you either look forward to or fear going into? I think you enjoy it. I mean, I, I appreciate their uh, the atmosphere there. It's like Seattle. You know, Seattle is another one where that place, when it gets loud, it's it's – rocking so that's uh that's what you want you know that's obviously uh as as you get different places and you're trying to build those atmospheres and uh, certainly at home but but new orleans can get loud in my first year we went down there and we won on the last second field goal went back and forth and when they made that momentum charge i could everybody had been telling me about it and i was like it's real so uh i i see what you're saying I still want to know that Peyton never look at you and think that he was going to lose his job <laughs> watching you run scout team quarterback. I'll tell you, the year, I think it was my first year I started, uh, I was with the linebackers first. So I was like the running back with the mm -hmm. linebackers. And then I forget there was a quarterback that was on the practice team and then he got pulled somewhere. So then it was like on a Wednesday. And at West Virginia, I I'd done it a pretty good. Hey, I can all-time quarterback basically my whole life mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? I could get telephone pole mm -hmm. to telephone pole before, before anybody else. So I got dropped in on like a Wednesday, and then I think we won. And then it was like, all right, here we go. Every day I'm running back to the linebackers, and then whenever we go to passing, it's me throwing for like the next like two years pretty much. Yeah, it was great. And then Chuck, once again. No fun. Please go work on your punting. I became a much better punter. Mm. <laughs> I became a much better punter whenever I was working on that in practice as opposed to being a quarterback. But I can really spin it, Coach. Let's talk about your guy, your quarterback. Throws for 300 mm -hmm. yards, okay? Bananas. Mm -hmm. Then there's a couple turnovers, obviously late and in the second half that happened, and you got memed. You know, your hands overhead, mm -hmm. mustache making the move. Oh, you know, that whole thing for his – how do you talk to Desmond about these types of situations? And what do you like basically tell the whole team about these types of things with your trigger man being the play caller? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, quarterback, and you know this, and you know what you sign up for. I mean, you could play pretty well 90% of the game, but if you have a couple of critical errors, they're going to get magnified, and that's part of the job description. No different than, you know, being a head coach. You may – or a play caller. You may think you're calling a good game. You may call one bad play, and it may be the difference in the game. That's what you got to live with. But, you know, and, and, then, and the reality is, as you know, Pat, when you're behind the scenes, it's never just on one person. Oh, yeah. You know, there's so much that goes on in every play, and and again, it's your job to stand in there and and, and accept the the blame and the responsibility, and really ultimately is to get things fixed. But with Desmond, he's made a lot of really good plays. There's a lot of you know, as a young quarterback, there's things that are going to happen. The last two weeks, he he has thrown over 300 both times. Um, but those critical errors you get in a game like that, that that that'll never change. Turnovers, whether they're fumbles, interceptions, and then I kind of put the punt return in there as a turnover as well. It's hard to overcome that. And you play a game like that. That's just life in the NFL. We've got to eliminate that. Um, so, we, you know, it's not a trend going forward. How does Desmond handle it all, you think? I, I, because he – a lot of people talked about him looking like a 55-year-old whenever he got drafted, but he did play, like, a lot of football in college. <laughs> he does. He, yeah. he looked like uh-huh. – there was a photo that came from the oh, rookie yeah. premiere. Oh, yeah. And it was oh. like, all right, there's a, there's a rookie, there's a rookie, there's a rookie. Did that guy serve in two wars before he came <laughs> back? And then like, very – but you talk about him football-wise, very mature as well. He's been through it. How have you seen your young quarterback handle all this type of scrutiny, conversation, highs and lows of the season thus far? Yeah, you just – he, it's all about perspective, and Des is a uh, real guy, and he's he's fun to coach because, you know, a lot of times too, like it's, like I talked about, there it is it is hard to play quarterback, but when you can have honest conversations, and that's part of the the relationship if between the quarterback, the head coach, certainly the play caller as well, you need to have a real relationship. And the thing I like about Des is he's honest, he's authentic, he doesn't run from things or make excuses, and. Um, there's a lot of guys in this league, you know, they, they when things go bad, they they sit there and they they try to say the right manicured thing in their press conference. I'm sure their PR person kind of gave them and their agent, and they get up in the press conference, the other thing. Then they have their they create drama to make sure it's not their fault. And uh that's not Des. And that's why guys in this locker room love him. Um none of us are gonna be perfect. Like, I'm certainly not, but but he's a real guy and and uh we believe in him and he's played 10, 10 games and we know that yeah, there's always things to improve. And he turned the ball over. It's going to be hard to overcome, and we've got to eliminate that, but there's a lot of good things going on here. Hell yeah. Coach, it sounds like you're the perfect guy for Desmond Ritter, and it sounds like he's the perfect guy for you. Another perfect guy for any locker room that I've learned, and I've known this guy uh, from just events that I've got to go to where he was at, and he has a great time. I've never seen him not be liked by everybody that is around him. He's the tallest person in the room, every room he's in. He has the deepest voice in every room that he is in. And every time I've seen him, he's the guy having the most fun in every room that he's ever been in. But football-wise, he's a leader, he's a mentor, and he just got his 100th sack. Clay's Campbell. Hey, yeah. let's go. Tell me about this guy. Obviously, the shot is sick. Ah! Get off me. He's been doing that to guys in the NFL for like 45 years, it feels like, with Calais Campbell. What's he like in your locker room? I've heard he is a perfect teammate everywhere he's been, Coach. Yeah, that's real. Uh, that's another guy that uh, I've really enjoyed getting to work with, Calais. Uh, you know, maybe the oldest guy in the building. You know, we talk about that. You know, he was <laughs> part of the uh, – Jimmy Johnson's last recruiting class at Miami. So <laughs> he's got a lot of uh, a lot of history in, in football, uh, college, and pros. Uh, he's awesome. He's been so much fun to work with. Uh, you know, you know, as Pat, there, I mean, there's there's all kind of records they make up now. Like, you know, who's had the the best net punting average in October, you know, 13th or whatever random stat they put up. It may be you. I don't know. You a Ray guy, but yeah, um, good one, yeah. guy like Calais, when you get 100 sacks this league, that's that's impressive to me. And he's also done it. He's played every spot in a lot of different systems and rushed over the center, rushed over the guard, obviously on the edge. Uh, that was really cool. It, it it bothered me that we couldn't reward him with a with a team win after that. And, you know, I brought that up Monday. So the young guys understood, like, that's a that's a hard feat for a player to do to have 100 sacks this league. Yeah, Calais is the man. He's been focused. It seems like he's nowhere near his end either. I, you, you're you around him, obviously, every single day. He's doing the dirty bird afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yep. He's just re-energized, it feels like, every single game. What a leader. This weekend, you got a big one. Chuck has a question for you. I do. 
Hey, Coach Smith, I know how difficult it can be uh, preparing for this Tampa Bay Bucks defense. I know Bolsey likes to run a lot of, you know, jam fronts or bear fronts, whatever you guys call them. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to bring pressure from, from every level, right? I mean, double corner cats, uh, all those zone pressures, the exotics. Hell yeah. How big a challenge is that, Coach, going down there to play that defense? Yeah, Todd, Todd does a hell of a job, Chuck, as, as you just brought up. And, uh, got a lot of respect for him and as you know you get in the division it's it's you know each other so well and and he does a good job changing things up week in and week out and, and really year after year uh the middle of that defense is uh stout to say the least you know with Vita Vea and uh Devin White and Levante David and they do a good job with that and that you know that's you know people throw a lot of pressure on us you know a lot of times people do that to try to cut up our run game at different times and and we got to handle that and going on the road down there and uh it's a big Big NFC South game, but uh, we'll be ready to roll. But yeah, we got a lot of respect for these guys, but it'll be a big game. Hell yeah. Well, have a great one. Safe travels down there. Please tell Dick Smith we said hello. Yep. yep. You know, we're still we're still we'll, waiting on the logistics uh, yeah. deal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, we're pressing him. He, he, you know, no pun intended. He better deliver for you. That's what he told him. Boom. <laughs> we appreciate you. That might actually be yeah. – that's a new tagline. Yeah. Right. Look at you, head coach in the Atlanta Falcons, marketing manager for FedEx. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's an incredible feat that you're able to have. We appreciate you every week. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, you talk about made-up stats, by the way? Guess who has the greatest passer rating in the history of Thanksgiving games in the NFL? Say it. Say it. Say it, Arnie. <laughs> you do. And Chuck wouldn't let you play quarterback enough. So. I mean, you're right. I mean, it could have been more than just Thanksgiving. It could have had... Look at that goddamn yeah, I don't Christmas. Know why, I don't know why you didn't bench Andrew Luck for you. I don't know, Chuck. I don't know why you didn't do it's that. On me. <laughs> Listen, every year when I was almost in, Art, you know, what, I don't even want to get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach, Ar Coach Arthur Smith. Yeah. Do you remember last game of the year? Okay, last game of the year. We've already lost five quarterbacks nice. really, at this point. Andrew Luck was dead. Whitehurst was dead. Mm -hmm. What? Hasselbeck. Uh, Hasselbeck was White. dead. I mean, there was just zero. Like, we were rolling through quarterbacks. Uh, just like, well, Kitna was not on the squad, but he maybe would have <laughs> yeah, looked for him. Yeah. So Chuck Pagano, and I've told this story before, Chuck Pagano on his Tuesday press conference, the day we're off, we're going into our last week. We have no idea what the quarterback situation is because Whitehurst just blew his hamstring. Tore it off the bone, Miami. Oh, oh. Couldn't even take a knee. Was worried that he wasn't even going to be able to I, go. I, 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 think it, I think it's ripped, Coach. <laughs> That is exactly. <laughs> so Charlie White, this is after Luck gets hurt, Hasselbeck gets hurt, Charlie Whitehurst clipboard, Jesus gets brought in. One of the most hilarious humans of all time, by the way. Yes. If you can get around Charlie Whitehurst, you definitely do that for at least a night or two. Best. Love everything about him. The team loved him immediately upon arrival. But against Miami, he's scrambling for his life, and that thing just gone, okay? They were worried he couldn't even get into a, a victory formation knee. He had to do it with the opposite leg because of his hamstring. So now we're going in. I almost had to go and take a victory knee. Uh, victory, uh, Dominic and Sue, right oh, here. Oh. <laughs> Another one. Jeez. Like, I, like, there's a thought, like, hey, you might have to go in here and take a knee. It's like, I don't know if this is the right time. <laughs> I don't know. We're about to win a game. It's a big-time game. I don't know. If, so going into that next week, okay, Tuesday press conference, we don't have a quarterback on the roster. We still have another game to play. We do not play on the line, but we have another game. And Chuck's like, yeah, we're we're putting some things together. You know, we we got a plan in there for Pat McAfee to be quarterback. And I'm watching at home. I'm like, what the did this guy just say? <laughs> yeah. No way, bro. I got an offseason coming in about five days. You're telling me that I'm going to court. I'm going to die. So next day I'm walking through the building, see Chuck, and we just say, good morning. You know, Chuck and I always uh, got to look good morning. And I just walk by, like, you have anything to tell me? You know, like, uh. Hey, Pat, you're going to probably end up with broken ribs this weekend. Hey, you're going to end up with a broken ankle this You might get a concussion this weekend because somehow we couldn't. And then you did the greatest coaching job I've ever seen in the history of coaching. Josh Freeman, who was on the oh. Coney Island. Coney Island Thrashers, nice. which was a professional football team in a league that I do not know the letters for. Served sure. ice cream at halftime, soft serve. Okay, players had to do that. <laughs> Good league. Smoking that six. was the first round pick. Yeah, he loved ball, though, so much. Yeah. He was playing for the Coney Island Thrashers. Arm. And then in, could throw the ball forever. Didn't know where it was going a lot of times, and I saw him in practice, but sure. in the game, the guy showed up for us. And then also an Uber driver. Who was the Uber driver? Ryan Lindley. Ryan Lindley, Lindley. was brought in to be quarterback. Boys went out there and got a win. <laughs> well, last week of the year, Josh Freeman, straight out of the Coney Island Thrashers, Ryan Lindley actually driving Uber the week before, straight in, they split time, get a big-time win. Chuck Pagano was the leader of that whole thing. And all Chuck told us was, uh, boys, Listen, we just shined two guys, had workouts. Don't judge. 
<laughs> we can't judge. We can't judge today, Wednesday. We can't judge Thursday. We can't judge Friday. Let's just worry about Sunday and worry about our own jobs. And the reason why he was saying that is because yeah. that first drop back that Josh Freeman took, bang, boom, boom, and he went ahead and he put that thing right off the top of the roof mm -hmm. uh -huh. in the barn that we practiced. You in. could have seen the workout. That's what I told you guys on the work Tuesday workout. Like, his were going through the side of the walls, right? Hitting nobody, right? <laughs> Killing Frog and T trying to catch him. Equipment manager oh, standing no. like this, ball going overhead, like not just a little bit. We're talking like so strong. And Lindley, Lindley was accurate, right? But it was like taking a long time to get to the guys. Telegraph. It's two polar opposite <laughs> yeah. guys. Yep. So Chuck literally opens a team meeting. Don't judge. Okay. Mind your own business. I'm trying to do this. This is a message for me and for you guys. Okay, we were going to win a game, and they absolutely did. It was beautiful. But, yeah, I remember back in practice when I used to spin it. It was the greatest. I used to have so much fun. Remember I'm, halftime? You thought you almost had to go in because we took Josh out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that was on roll. the offense. I had not, that was offensive coaches. They said, okay, they prepped Ryan to be the two-minute quarterback and take it off of Josh's hands because we started Josh. So Josh did a great job, and then Ryan goes out, and you're on the sideline with Adam. You look up and see Ryan in the game. He's like, what'd you do? Yeah, I said, am I going? Oh, no. What happened to Josh Freeman? I go, I go, am I the backup quarterback right now? Like, this guy, no offense, Lindley, Lindley knows this. At mm -hmm. the time in which he joined the Colts, it was a little bit of a – a little bit of a softer ball. Sure. Now, he was able to lead a two-minute. He went right down the field. He went right down the field and scored. It was one of the Damn. dumbest things of all time. But, yeah, he seemed a little smaller. He was in an Uber like a week before right. that. So I thought Josh Freeman was pulled from the game. Thought Lindley was now our quarterback. And I immediately thought to myself, okay, so we've now killed four quarterbacks. Yep. Mm -hmm. And now we got a guy who was driving Uber three days ago. I'm going to be uh -huh. I'm gonna be playing quarterback. In this yeah, game. better get ready. So I go over to Clyde Christensen. Am I the backup quarterback right now? No, no, no. Just two minutes. Just two minutes. And then he goes all there. I'm like, thank God. I'm going to shit my pants. I was in a bad spot. I love that Artie Smith joins us. Feels like he's got a good handle on that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He really does. Feels like he's got a good handle. And Desmond Ritter sounds like the perfect quarterback down there for them. I'm excited to see what they end up doing. Obviously, I don't think anybody's expecting the Atlanta Falcons to win the Super Bowl this year. No, no. Okay, but I appreciate the fact that he has come on this show yeah. and remained coming on this show and remained the same exact human. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He hasn't mm -hmm. changed much. I think they know that this is going to be a process to build this thing up. Who knows if Calais is going to be there next year or the year after and everything. But I think they believe wholeheartedly that Desmond's the guy of the future, and they're going to ride the waves with him this year. And it feels like they're always going to be in it. Like, we talk about this with MCDC in Detroit. Like, Artie Smith, it feels like it's per perfect for Atlanta. Like, mm -hmm. the style of play they have how gritty they are him drinking beers right. in the locker room with the offensive wow. line after like Atlanta might be one of those teams as long as Artie Smith is there that is just always going to be in it no matter what going to be able to run the ball yeah, you know, yeah. the way he sets it up they're able to do that you got Bijan on the team yeah. for at least the next few years you would hope you know what I thought the other night so this is what they this is how they need to fix this whole thing they need to make running back rookie contracts two years oh here we go that's an easy right yeah running back yeah. position just make them two years re-up earlier yeah, I think that's probably the way to fix that. Next CBA, just like, yeah, if you're a running back Something contract. Think about, yeah. yeah, rookie contracts will only be two years. Even, or yeah, now, I don't know if the NFL is going to necessarily want that, but maybe they will because a lot of guys aren't, you know, like Bijan, aren't like Jonathan Taylor, yeah. aren't like great. Normally, other guys just kind of fit in. So if their contract is up after two years, you probably are able to do that whole thing. I thought about that the other day. Even three is a huge difference. Yeah. Because what is it? It's four. four with a fifth option now mm -hmm. if you're in the first round? Bingo. Yeah, but in general, though, yeah, normally yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a four year yeah. deal. So you just cut that thing in half. Now they get a chance to bite at the apple yeah. earlier because their contracts and their careers yeah. are all expiring earlier. That feels like the easy answer. It's basically what the veteran running back contracts are. They sign them all to four years, but two of it's guaranteed. So it's it the NFL make, makes changes. It may make sense, but it's like, okay, if we do this, and what are, what are the ramifications? What Pandora's box will we open up? We got to do this for the running backs, and we got to do it here. So then they're going to just sit out. No, all the it. other guys are going to be like, well, why can't I get a two year deal? All the receivers are going to start doing it. All the tight ends are going to want it. And then you're going to want those guys are going to want to re up sooner, too. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. amazing that that's how, you know, your immediate thought has to be because yeah. it does say, feel like a good answer. But remember, everybody was on the running back side. Yeah, they were. You know yeah. what I mean? They were saying, hey, you can't be diminished in the running backs. I felt like players were more unified about a player in position getting more money about the running backs than ever before. Now, whenever the new CBA is up, what will the NFL be? Yeah. You know, who knows what will happen because everything's cyclical. Maybe the running backs will be back in high demand. And then when the wide receivers aren't as – 
which I don't think will ever happen, but let's just say that is the case, then they'll get pissed off about it. Yeah, I guess it's a never-ending cycle. They just have the rookies come in and they can pick whether they want a two-, three-, or four-year contract coming in. You want a little more? Yeah, that's what owners will definitely <laughs> do. Yeah. Players, but the more options the players have, the better, is how the owners definitely view things. Speaking of the owners, they did make a move. Obviously, they extended Roger Goodell in 2027. Congrats, Congrats, Roger. Congrats Rog! Congrats. He's 64 years old, I do believe, at this moment. Tagliabu retired of 65. The pre previous one was like 63. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be outlasting both the two previous uh, commissioners whenever you talk about age-wise. Still has his fastball. And we saw him talking. Oh, yeah. He was three buttons open yeah. on his dress shirt. Chilling. We're talking about Roger Goodell letting a little meat kind of hang out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe That's he's on his Peloton every morning getting yeah, after burger. I didn't see any, no. no He's no. got that super light. Yeah, very, it would be like a red, yeah. Yeah. I would assume. And we would like to let Raj know, yeah, but I got like dark chest hair, you know. My chest hair right now, pretty dark. Like when it pops out of my shirt, people do notice it, and they do get pissed off about it. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do. Raj Goodell has a nice, clean looking. Oh, yeah. You know, right? Yep. Nice V. Yep. Smooth. Well manicured. It, he, gets like, yeah. he gets his chest waxed every day. And he's making he's 50, a, 60 million a year. Somebody's yeah. doing his chest for him, and obviously he has earned it. And look at how clean that chest wow. is. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This guy's letting it hang. He works out now. Absolutely. He, he stays I, in great shape. I saw him run a 40 in the office or whatever. He was yeah. wide open. I'm like, yo, at your age, that's a hamstring sniper waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. So congrats to Roger. Even though he's scared to come on this show. Yep. Right. Congrats to our commissioner, Roger Goodell. There you go, Good old. Another thing that they changed was when the coaching cycle will happen. So they actually made a change to something that I think we all think is smart, but we all assumed would not be possible because the NFL to make any decisions normally takes forever. Sources, says Albert Breer, the NFL owners have approved the proposal to delay in-person head coaching interviews involving candidates employed by NFL teams until after the divisional round of the playoffs. Big change designed to slow down the process. Vote was 32-0. Now, I don't think that's enough. I think they should have pushed it until after the Super Bowl because a lot of the Super Bowl competing coaches are the ones that are getting interviews in other places and there's zero reason before the biggest game of their lives mm -hmm. that they should have to focus on doing an interview with another team. Now, they have to do it because there's only 32 jobs. It's a dream job. It's where you want to go. It's what you've worked for. You win to get that opportunity. But I thought the NFL should have taken that situation out of it completely, not made teams or coaches feel obligated to do that while they're preparing for the biggest game of their lives with their current team. They do make a little bit of a change here. I think we appreciate this. We like this. And how will coaches react to all this? I, I think step in the right direction. And I think, like, the first interview anyway, it's going to be over Zoom. They don't have to leave the office. So they're, they're stepping away from their stuff for maybe an hour. And they can carve out an hour. And it's probably just to get to know you. You know, hey, do, I, what's, do we connect here? Even though it's Zoom, it's not in person, which is, you know, whatever. But I think, I think it's okay. And I don't think it's, like, once that's over – they kind of get an idea now, hey, we can – it's more of a who do we eliminate out of the group during that first interview to me? Who do we kind of – okay, no, 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 no. Here's our five dudes or four dudes, three dudes, and then we go on. The thing I hate, I don't appreciate, like guys – like Steichen and Gannon – Mm -hmm. Okay, both offense coordinator and defense coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles are now head coaches in other places. The Colts interviewed like 14, 15 people. Yeah. I forget the exact number. And there was like four rounds of 20 interviews. Hours a long time. It's like Steichen had to do a lot of sit downs with Chris Ballard and I assume lead counsel, president, whoever it is, when all he should have been focusing on is how do we make the tush push even better? Yeah. For me personally, as a person, if I was a Philadelphia Eagles player, that's what I would rather. But I'd also be pumped for my coach getting the opportunity it feels like they're making changes we appreciate that Ty. yeah for sure but i think you're right like i don't know why you wouldn't just still do it after the super bowl because this is this is just going to be kind of the same deal come playoffs this year there's going to be two or three candidates who are the hot names who have their teams in the playoffs and then we're right at, we're right back at the same thing like ben johnson you know if the lions do get in the divisional round I imagine he's going to be one of those guys who has a bunch of interviews, and then what, is he going to have to kind of pick and choose? Like, okay, well, three teams want to interview me, but I kind of got to wait wait and choose who I'm actually going to go, you know, actually interview with while I'm also trying to prepare to win our Would be a play. shame if that happened to the brand new Lions. Exactly. Uh -oh. I can't even think about that right now. I would Let's lose go. my mind if we make it past the divisional. It's so early in the okay. season. Go all right? interview whoever yeah. you need yeah. Yeah. Go right. interview whoever you need to. But with that being said, we do got to go now because Ben Johnson's gone after this well, season. Well, Aaron, his name, Aaron Glenn, they keep playing defense like that. It'll be the same thing as the Philly just went through. 
They could lose both yeah. those guys. But yeah. to your point, you know, after the division round, you got two weeks, right? So you're going to do a lot of that prep. So there's a big window there for those guys to go get on a, get on a Zoom call. I hope so. Because a lot of those teams, they travel to those guys too. So if there's four or five openings, those teams will go to Ben. They'll go to Detroit. So he doesn't have to actually get on a plane and leave. They'll go to him. I just still think it's stupid. Yeah, still there's... got stuff. We're talking ball all year. Yeah. We're talking ball. Mm-hmm. The reason we're thinking ball, we're talking ball. Coordinators don't even have to talk to the media that much. I mean, it's just like ball, ball, ball. Coach, 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 coach. They probably figure it's going to happen anyway. Oh, you think what people are you, gonna cheat? Are you, you know talking? what I mean? Oh, so, are no. you talking about, Josh, you talking about tampering, Josh? You're talking about people. Somebody's going to talk cheese? to somebody. So there's going to be agents involved. Josh. They're tying together. They're hooking up a. Hey, this head coach <laughs> and this GM, this is your twosome. This is going to bring your franchise a Super Bowl championship in the next three years. Yeah, that's a new thing, right? Is the agents are kind of piecing together a GM and a head coach for these teams already. Hey, these two already get along. Don't have to worry about whether or not they get along. We know them. They get along. This guy will bring in bang. This guy will coach this type of boom. Here's the power struggle they've already set up. 51, 49%. This is how this is going to go. Now, if you would like to interview them on whether or not you like them as people, that's a much easier thing. That seems like a natural evolution of the whole hiring process. Just move it after the Super Bowl. And then people say there's not enough time before the draft. We'll make it a one-week bonanza. Yeah, there you know, we, the, yeah. we can market Figure this decision. entire thing as the like agency. the coaching. Yeah coaching, like, yeah, coaching hot stove. Boom. Put it right there, and it becomes a thing. Hopefully one day, whenever I'm the commissioner of the NFL, that will all take place. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about a coach that lied to his employer. Whoa. Uh, Mike McCarthy, yeah, if you do did. recall, yep. Yep. he set up a fake team meeting in his basement in Green Bay. I don't know if you heard about this. The arrow, Tom Pelissero of NFL right. Network, was a part of this entire con, we will say. Now, we are big Mike McCarthy fans. He's a yinzer who has done great and has never lost his accent. Yeah. Anytime a Pittsburgher gets out of Pittsburgh and has success, normally there's going to be people that tell him, you can't speak the way you speak. All right? You're going to have to change that down to a down, mm-hmm. and you're going to have to start speaking a little less mumbly whenever you talk. Big Mike McCarthy has remained a yinzer throughout his entire stint as an NFL head coach. Wins the Super Bowl yeah. with the Green Bay Packers. Has a street named after him in Green Bay. Then when it's his time to step away from the Green Bay Packers, he has won into disappearance. Then a couple years later, we see Tom Pellicero with this piece where he said, what if I told you, like an ESPN 30 for 30, what if I told you that big Mike McCarthy has been living life as if he's a head coach every single day? day since he left the Green Bay Packers. He went on a full, dis- this is a pseudo team meeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mike McCarthy actually draws up motivational speeches every single morning for if he was to still be speaking to his team. Then they had like sad music over it as Big Mike was like, we lost the game today. How am I going? <laughs> yeah. It was a big, it was. It got us, hook, line, and sinker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, of course it's this Yinzer is excited to still be coaching. He needs a job. So then he goes to the Dallas Cowboys and he tells Jerry Jones right to his face. I watch every single one of Dak Prescott's plays. Mm -hmm. Every single one. I've been coaching every single day since I got out of here. And Jerry Jones is like, I love this guy. This guy just eats, breathes, and sleeps football all day, every day. This guy needs to be leading the Cowboys. He's from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Dallas back in the day, whatever. Green Bay, Dallas, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is the right guy. You're talking talking about a guy? What's going on over there? You're talking about a guy that has been in his basement being a a coach for these two years. He hasn't had a job. That's the type of guy I want. A guy that's all in. So in the first press conference, Big Mike goes, yeah, I mean, I told Jer I watched every single <laughs> yeah. Dak Prescott play, but I won the job, you know? So just like openly said that. And then he said, yeah, Tom Pellicero basically said I was doing a certain – that was like once a month, Halloween. Yeah, yeah, every now and then. Yeah, we just did a little nostalgia thing. So Big Mike hustled his way back into being a head coach, and I'm pumped about that. But now he is getting the opportunity to realize that being a Dallas Cowboy head coach is a little bit different than being a head coach anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And having a quarterback like Dak Prescott, who is so highly scrutinized, is a little bit different than being a coach of even Montana, right. Rogers, Favre, right. all the guys he's coached in the past. Here's him with Shine, Shine on Sports. That's right. On Mad Dog Sports Radio. Mm-hmm. You wanted it. You asked you, for it. There it is. You got it. Here's Big Mike McCarthy talking about Dak Prescott in the media coverage of him. How would you characterize Dak Prescott as your quarterback? <laughs> oh, I, mean, I, I love Dak Prescott as, as our quarterback. I, I think the way he's built all the way through, obviously his physical skill set is, is excellent, um, you know, but what he endures mentally – and emotionally compared to the other 31 is is you know, is, is unique. Uh, I've, I've never seen 
and speaking on experience of being around great quarterbacks, I've never seen a quarterback uh, under so much under a microscope like he is. And just his consistency, you know, and his personality and work ethic, and how he handles all that and navigates all that, and he gets out and all goes that. out and performs it every week. I think it's. I think it's special what he has to endure. I think his injury accent has gotten worse yeah. somehow Don't since me. leaving Pittsburgh, which I appreciate. Yeah, he's got to deal with all that. And when you're talking about, like, the media and the fans and that, you're talking about gummy bands and, uh-huh. and, and buggies. I mean, you're just talking. <laughs> this guy's awesome. Chuck, I saw you uh, making a face. Yeah, that was he weird. Said that? He has been more scrutinized than any of the other quarterbacks he's ever coached. You don't believe him? You think Big Mike McCarthy's a liar? You don't think that's the case? Whoa. You think Dak Prescott deserves it? Go ahead, Chuck. Add your name into the list of people that Micah Parsons is going to attack like your Ocho <laughs> on his podcast, there. Chuck. I'm not going there. Hey, much is given, much is required, right? Well, so Chuck, he does get scrutinized a bunch, but I don't think any more than any other quarterback in this league. I think you're wrong. The, the only reason why I think you're wrong is because, like, Molly said it this morning on first take because Dan Orlovsky was trying to make this guy. I know, I know, <laughs> Dano in his bag. He was. He yeah. had glasses on today. Yeah. Hell of a year so Bro, far. He looks so. Hey, Dano, keep going, Dano. Dano. Keep Dano. going, Orlovsky. But Dan said basically something similar to what you said, and Molly stopped him pretty much and was like, "As the host of first take, I will say." that we certainly talk about Dak a lot more wow. than we talk about anybody else. And then I guess undisputed I, on Fox, from what I've been told, maybe a couple hours of Dallas Cowboys talk oh. on one particular program. You're, the Dallas Cowboys are on prime time every single week. They are going to get talked about more than any other team. So I guess in proportion to the exposure that they have versus other teams, they're going to get talked about. But Dak Prescott, I mean, he got drafted what round? Third, Third round. Yeah. Fourth, fourth round. Fourth, fourth, I think. Fourth. fourth round. Yeah. Fourth round guy. Okay. Becomes the starter. Kicks Tony Romo to the booth, which we're all very thankful for. Yep. And then now he is all of a sudden the face of the most marketed team in the NFL. Yeah, he's going to get scrutinized. That's how it's going to be. But we pride ourselves on being a program that we say, that's a good player. Yeah. He's a good, well, good player. That's a good right player. And the yeah. programs that you mentioned, yeah, they talk about him because one, they're told to. And two, Stephen A. loves talking to Cowboys, and Skip is was a Dallas Cowboys beat writer, right, and grew up in the Cowboys. So yeah, they talk about him a bunch, but you know, I think everyone else is you know very, very, very fair with Dak. I think personally. I well, think I, don't, I I think anytime you're in front of the most eyeballs, you're going to get the most coverage. And yeah. that is what the Dallas Cowboys and Jerry Jones has accomplished as being the owner of the Dallas Cowboys. And I think he's also on the television. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I think he's a part of the television committee in the NFL negotiating TV deals. Yeah. Oh. So whether or not networks are like, we should play Cards Against Humanity here. Uh, we should play the person yep. that is dealing this. Yeah. We should definitely do that. But they also draw numbers. So whenever you talk about the Dallas Cowboys, it draws numbers. That's why a lot of people on TV are told, yep. hey, talk, you talk. Dallas Cowboys. That's right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. LeBron James. Yep, mm-hmm. of course. Tim Tebow. Yep. Sure. Then Dallas Cowboys. Yep. Right. Oh. LA Lakers. Okay. Oh, good idea. Tim Tebow. Okay. And then you go to a break. Yep. Boom. Oh. And then guess what? After that break comes. Yeah. <clears throat> what are we doing? Dak Prescott. Yep. Okay. Dallas Cowboys. Okay. Oh. LeBron James. Right. Oh, makes sense. Anthony Davis. Okay. Yep. Michael Jordan now. Okay. Whoa. Versus. Michael Jordan yeah. versus those two. Okay. Yeah. Because you just did. And then guess what? Tim Tebow. Yeah. And you got to get out of here. And don't forget, mm-hmm. maybe the Jets every once in a while. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. No, that is like the TV yeah. method because they draw numbers. So Dak Prescott has to know that because he's the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, he's going to be talked about a lot. He's also going to be in prime time and get a lot of opportunities. I don't think Dak Prescott is telling Mike McCarthy to tell people that. I think that's just big Mike being transparent and saying, whoa, this is, this is a different ball game down here in Dallas. We got people watching our practice that we don't even know. Yeah. I mean, this is a whole different world. But if they go on to win down there, Dak Prescott, Big Mike McCarthy, they'll put statues up oh, of yeah. them around Arlington <laughs> and around Dallas. And that's what you sign up for. And I'm happy for Dak and the way he's handled it. And I'm happy that he was able to bounce back. Now, with that being said, Michael Parsons is not happy with what everybody's saying about no. the Dallas Cowboys. No, he's not. He went on his podcast called The Edge. The Edge. Yeah. 
with Micah Parsons, a Bleacher Report pod. And obviously, Mike has been on our show, I think, one month ago. We had great conversations with him. He told us he's acting like an actual animal this year. Yeah. yeah he he said, I want everybody to know I'm, 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 I'm an growled. animal. He's growling. he's growling at people. Barking. He's barking at people. He's, his celebration is on all fours like he's an animal. And obviously, last week at the end of the game, before Stephon Gilmore's interception, he got a massive sack for the Dallas Cowboys. That's what he does. He also is not scared to speak. Here's him talking about the Dallas Cowboys being talked about by everybody. I just don't condone the bashing of Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys and have the same energy for the Eagles. We want the same energy for everybody because there's a whole bunch of bashing when it's Dak Prescott, but not the same when it's the Eagles. I got time today. A lot of people said the Browns defense was overhyped. I said the Browns are the real deal. Acho said this, which pissed me off. I'm not worried about the 49ers. They were missing Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel. The Browns were missing Deshaun Watson, Nick Chubb. They were missing them key factors before the game even started. So why is it that we are just scrubs and we're nobodies that don't deserve to be on the field and we're just all talk? But there's a hundred excuses for these other these other teams. If y'all just want to hate Cowboys Nation, just say y'all hate Cowboys Nation. I'm tired of people trashing my quarterback. I'm tired of people trashing my team. And that's why I had nothing to say to the media this week. You want to hear me talk? Come to hear me talk on the edge Monday night. And that's point blank period. Hilarious. Un Real. Absolutely hilarious. Good promo. Uh, the Browns were like, well, well, I don't know how we fit into this whole thing, but I get what you were saying, and uh -huh. we appreciate you pointing out the fact that sometimes we pick and choose what information to give whenever we're backing it. How do we feel about Michael Parsons going to bat for his teammate? Love that. Yeah. yeah. Love Sweet. that. Using his platform mm -hmm. to say, hey, you just like hockey. Oh, I have to fight you because of what you said. Yep. But then also saying at the end, you want to hear from me? Monday nights, the edge, <laughs> yeah. right here. This is where I'll talk. Not a bad, savvy businessman there. No, genius. And it's a point in television now, especially because of the internet. fact that for, yeah, internet, excuse me, that yeah, they'll right. continue to be talked about. But every quarterback gets bashed like this. I don't know why we're just saying Dak. I understand that it's to a greater scale maybe, but like, Think about some of the storylines early in the year. Jalen Hurts and the Eagles aren't the same. Brock Purdy, anyone can do it. Tua, we just heard anyone can do it. Those are three of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Like Across the board, it feels like quarterbacks do get bashed now. Obviously, when you're Dak Prescott and they do lose to the only other team, or I guess one of the only other teams in their conference by 32 points, like that is going to be the game that they reference. But I love Micah doing this, and the Cowboys are going to be fine because of the fact that they can play great defense. It's hot as hell in here, isn't it? It's very. Pretty, yeah, it's a little toasty. What's this all about? Especially comparatively. Some wearing sleeves today for the first time. That could be. First time, long time. Wife bought me the shirt, you know? Good looking shirt. And nice. I, shirt. And I said to great. myself, when the weather changes, thank you. And she thanks you too. Good color. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I think my wife enjoys the tank top every day, but also like maybe. Change we, it up. Uh, sleeves. You know? Mm -hmm. Maybe we buy you clothes that aren't $6. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of, I believe, sure. yeah. how my wife potentially views it. Yeah. But I will say, I don't know how you guys do it. I'm sweating my ass off yeah. in this thing right now. Mm -hmm. These pits need to breathe a little bit. Outside, gloomy, doomy, yeah. cold, in the Thunderdome. It's just heating up, isn't it? Oh, yeah, uh -huh. it is. Well, and I think that's why. It's tough. You know, you we, we all have to kind of relearn this. When it is a little chilly outside, we come in here, and, I mean, it might be time to, you know, lower the thermostat a little bit. I, you normally keep it in here. Because I think it's like Chill. it's yeah. like 69, it's though, which can't is free. It's normally unhealthy. It's supposed cold. to be 55 I'm, and I'm freezing. 63. Huh? I'm freezing. Where I sit back but there. But you know why? Yeah, because that thing's blowing old, right on my decrepit. neck. I'm probably going to be sick. <laughs> I'm with you're you. Be and sick? I'm 63. Got thin I can't ass afford blood, to be old sick. man. I'm with you, Jack. Yeah. Put your ass in a home if think you keep about complaining. Other. Jeez, Louise. What? Listen, he did sound soft, but we don't need to put his ass in a home. This guy's on a what? Peloton every morning. Be a nice home. Let's get to a break. AJ Hawk will be on the other side. Coach Saban will be on the other side. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Go ahead and take three. 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 are massive fans of yours and obviously we haven't got a chance to chat with you since that mustache has become a thing how has that not been your look forever it looks right at home there you look good it's a missed opportunity but i'm trying to make up for it now do you feel like a better coach with that mustache or anything changed yeah i feel like you know better at everything when you walk in places i mean it's just like the doors get open for you they're gonna come right to you at the bar you get the first table something about it i don't know people look view you different when you walk in there and you're rocking a stash you love to worry it's gonna make you soft no if anything i think it gets your t levels up <laughs> <laughs> I think my sea levels are going up just looking at it, so I couldn't even imagine yep. Marine Dad. Ooh, raw! Shout out to him, you know. 
serving the country and doing what he did with FedEx. Amen. And then the Vegas uh, thing. That's real. He went to Vegas. Real. What happened? Yeah, real. He didn't think they were going to be able to, uh, to make the payment. And so he went out there and I think he played blackjack for 18 straight hours. <laughs> won over $30,000. His whole thing was like, hey, look, nothing to lose, really. That was kind of the mentality. That's the way he told it to me. True story, though. And then saves FedEx. Yep. And then obviously now, a Goliath. What a fucking dog, dude. Shout out to all the coaches committing their entire fucking lives so that we can get good football on yeah. Sundays, Mondays, what? Thursday, what? Saturday, what? in America, what? Mexico, what? Canada, what? England, what? Germany. What? How do you feel about all of this? Best thing anybody wants to watch live now. Look, if you don't want to do that, then don't sign the contract. Where the money's going and the game, it's growing. When things change, you, know, you may give your opinion, but once the rules are made and that's what it is, if you don't like it, then don't do it. I just think you waste your time. Like, we're going over to London again this year. We did it two years ago. It was awesome. I'm just trying to figure out. I'm still wondering what your record has to be to get knighted. <laughs> it's what if you play in London, I think the, the winning coach should be yeah. knighted. You know, so oh, I've got yeah. that, that. That joke felt real flat. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur is a knight's name too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. King Arthur. Yeah. King's you have to call me name. sir. 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 Arthur. Sorry, not King. It's so obnoxious. Somebody puts you at a, at a dinner. It has to say sir in front of it, like <laughs> Sir Pat Mac. Yeah. No, but, yes, but I'm not going to win a game over there. You might be no, Sir not. Coach Arthur Smith. Yes. You know what I mean? That might be your name soon. Well, I'm going to try. I don't, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. If serious, he'll take me when I ask it again. How do you feel being one of those last few teams that really do just physically beat the other opponent into a pulp and just kind of really take advantage in those third and fourth quarters after you've already worn down the team? Bijan and CP are they're great all-around football players, and we've got a lot of a lot of young skill guys with unique skill sets with Kyle and Dre and John Oo, you know, Matt Collins. I mean, we've got a diverse group of offensive weapons. We can attack in a lot of different ways. It's not just traditional rushing attack. Dez is another guy that can extend plays with his legs. I think this, when you watch us, we've got a lot of guys that are going to be fun to watch, and the way we'll deploy them is going to be unique compared to everybody else. I never wanted to be boring. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, we need to win games, but we've also got a lot of, a lot of fun guys to watch play. And yeah, the offensive line as well. Those guys play with a certain mentality. Appreciate you talking about all the weapons you have. Pretty big fucking brain behind that. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Coach Shaven Thursday, October 19th, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Football is happening all around us, and tonight, week seven of the NFL season kicks off as the Jaguars take on the Saints. We'll be talking about that for the next two hours, but we got much bigger things to chit chat about right now. The Talks the Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Very majestic shirt today. Uh, thank you, Pat. After the Red Wings performance last night, I figured I'd wear something in here that represents them. Thank you. White, White Panther. How does that represent the Detroit Red Wings? Because they're winners. Nice. Are you kidding me? A white tiger? What are you talking about? All right. Anyways, please, that was anybody can score on an empty net, by the way. It was 4 3. You scored two on an empty net. I could do that. You, you let, guys are you, old. You, you guys are so old. You guys are so old. They well, scored an six empty total. Net. Yeah, six total. To be honest, it was, it was an empty net when the goalie was in the net, too. Yeah, because Jari, our guy, can't see the puck. Anyways, it, hockey's awesome. We will talk about that later. <laughs> One half of the hammer. Dad. Dad. Cowboys turn. Diggs is here. 36 years as an N uh, football coach, 18 in the NFL, 18 in college. Paisano, Chuck Pagano. Is here. Yeah. Joining us now live from an attic in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, father of 10, COVID survivor, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. 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 AJ, good to see you, pal. 
Hey, great to see you guys. Great to see uh, Chuck in studio. I know he's killing it on Thursday night, so I'm going to probably follow him yep, today. Yeah, that's a smart idea. We, I will have him go first, as I normally do, and we can just follow suit. He's 5-1 and one against the spread on Thursday night football picks. Let's keep it going, Chuck. Come on, What's that? Kid. Is that five, man? Five. Let's go, Chuck. Wow. Five, man. Let's go, Chuck. Let's keep it going. Joining us now is a coach who is considered the greatest of all time by every human that has ever watched college football. He's a guy who joins us every single week, and a couple weeks ago, he gave me a full scholarship to Alabama. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who just got a massive win over Arkansas. Didn't cover, though. Yikes. Only one by three, not 20. So, was it, was it an actual win? You tell me. I don't know. And this weekend has the third Saturday in October, a massive game against Tennessee at home. Ladies and gentlemen, seven times, Coach Nick Saban. Yeah. How you doing, Coach? I'm great. How are you doing? Only one by three. That's a loss. Uh, how are you doing this week? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, let's talk about that Arkansas game. What did you learn from your team in that win? Got close. Got hairy. What did you learn from the boys down there? Well, we got ahead 24-6 in the game and, you know, sort of lost our collective focus um, in the game. And, you know, I think it's a great lesson for everybody to learn that, you know, when you have the right sort of mental intensity and focus – how well you play, and then when you lose that for whatever reasons, uh, scoreboard, uh, get relieved, relief syndrome, I call it, uh, like we got this, um, you know, how people can take advantage of, you know, that lack of intensity that you play with. So hopefully that's a lesson that our players learned, and they learned that they have to play one play at a time for 60 minutes in the game, which everybody's heard that a thousand times, but it's still – the truth. Cliches are a cliche for a reason. You know, that's just kind of, uh, they're true. That is why they are cliches. That's why they are said. And you got to hammer it home for everybody. Do you agree with the notion that normally the Alabama teams of the past that have been successful have entered week one playing like dominant football, their best football? This year, it's a little bit of a different story. A lot of growth we're seeing. Even this last week in the second half, kind of getting settled. A lot of growth. Do you feel that? Do you see that with this team, that this is like the most, I don't want to say coaching, but the most growth and development that your teams have had in a long time in one season? I, I think I agree with that. I think this team, being a younger team, um, maybe not the experience and maturity of some of the teams of the past, uh, and especially at leader, what I call leadership positions. And uh, I think that I'm very pleased with the way this team has developed. Now, we still have lots of room to grow, uh, and that's something that we're like embracing the challenge on. You know, I love coaching this team. You know, they've got good relationships. They like each other. They support each other. But there's some competitive maturity like we just talked about, you know, not getting relief syndrome in the game I and being able to play for 60 minutes that we, we still need to learn how to do. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, you say that relief syndrome, which I've never really heard it termed like that. It makes it makes a lot of sense when you say it, but how difficult is it playing with a lead? Obviously, it's a great position to be in. You want to be playing from a lead, but we see it all the time, especially if a team jumps out to an early lead. What do you got to do, I guess, to kind of keep your foot on the gas and not kind of let human nature take over? I think, you know, we talk about this all the time. You know, how are you impacted by external factors? The scoreboard is an external factor in the game. So you get behind in the game, you put your foot on the gas and play harder or better or whatever. Uh, you get ahead in the game, uh, you get relieved and don't play as well. All right? But neither one of those are good things to do. You know, if you're trying to be the best player that you can be, you know, who you're playing against, what the team's record is, what the score in the game is, none of those things should really matter. I tell players all the time, when I was in the NFL, they made me a cut-up of you. I didn't know who you were playing against. I didn't know what the score of the game was. But I was evaluating how you played every play in that game. So if it's your goal to be the best player you can be, so maybe you have an opportunity to develop a career as a football player, why would you let any of these external factors impact and affect how you play, how you focus, how you keep mental intensity and energy up to be the best that you can be? I don't I don't. So that's, that's one of the ways that I do it. Um, 
It's the most common way to do it. Yeah, hey, always talking about people's money or future money is a good way, you know, to kind of get to the bottom, especially if that is potentially a goal or a dream to change an entire generation for your family. Uh, you know, coaches sometimes change, though, too, coach. You know, like they always talk about prevent defense or not being as aggressive whenever you get the lead. Is that something that you talk to your coordinators about? Is that something that's just understood, or how do you handle that situation? No, oh, absolutely. You know, you want to stay aggressive in the game. And, and until the circumstances in the game change, like it's four minute at the end of the game, like we did a good job of that, keeping the ball for five minutes at the end of the game and not giving it back to Arkansas, that's, that situation changes kind of what you do and how you go about what you're doing. But the rest of the game, you want to stay aggressive and um, let the players play uh, and do what you prepare them to do. And, um, you know, I always use the analogy with players like, what if? Okay, what if you played to be the best player that you could be? What if you supported your teammates all the time? What if you were a good leader and you affected somebody else by the example that you saw set? You know, all those things are things that you can control on a day-to-day -day basis. After the fact, you always say, if only I would have done this. If only I'd have prepared better. If only I would have supported my teammates better. Well, you can't do anything about that. Then you can do everything about what's happening now. You know, I used to talk to guys about the church or what's happening now, man. You 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 gotta you gotta affect the moment, all right, in terms of what you're doing every day in preparation and every opportunity that you get so that you have a chance to be the best player you can be. Did you say the church or what's happening now? Church of what's happening now. Yeah. Hey, Amen. I, I, I like that church. Yeah, I, I like that church a lot. I'm trying to live in a moment. My brain isn't big enough to live anywhere else, but I am certainly a servant. No, a uh, yeah, yeah, a them. servant of yeah. the church of what's happening now, mm -hmm. and I will be forever. Let's talk about the game this weekend before the boys have a couple questions for you, Coach. Uh, obviously, last year, Tennessee, Alabama, third Saturday in October, ended with uh, goalposts getting taken down to a river that I jumped in hours before that. This year, a little bit different team. The Tennessee team looks vastly different than they did last year. Your team looks vastly different than it did last year. What's the message you're telling the boys about this Tennessee game, and what do you see from this Tennessee team versus last, uh, last year's team? Well, I think the big thing for our guys is, you know, we have played well when, you know, we're a little bit uh, upset and have an edge to us, and that's something that we have to go in this game with. I thought we played the game last year with a lot of anxiety. Uh, there was a lot on the line. A lot of guys put a lot of pressure on themselves. We, 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 we don't really want to go there. You know, we want to keep an edge about how we compete, how we focus, how we play. Because the way they play challenges you to do that. You know, when they go fast on offense, they run 2.7 plays a minute. All right, that's completely different for a defensive player. It's a difficult preparation because you can't get the scout team to do it right, you know, during the week of practice. And they're going to go fast. And you have to be able to get lined up on defense and not make mental mistakes and be able to execute and do what you do. You also can't substitute in the game, all right, because they're not going to allow you to substitute on third down. So a third down package is something else that you, 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 you have to be able to execute with the people in the game. Their defense is very aggressive. they got good pass rushers, and we're going to have to do a good job of controlling the ball, try to keep it away from them some, all right, so they don't run 100 plays in a game. And um, – you know, it's going to come down to fundamental execution on offense, which has been our little bit of a Achilles heel in terms of our consistency is playing with good fundamental execution. I don't care if it's offensive line, receivers, pass protection, quarterback execution, whatever you want to talk about. It's good at times, but we have to be consistent. You know, success is defined by consistency and performance. You do that by having great knowledge. Right? And to get the knowledge, you've got to go through bumps in the road. So you've got to learn from your mistakes. You can't waste a failing and, and keep moving in the right direction, which I think a lot of our players have done that well this year. And with that knowledge and experience, then you communicate better. And that communication helps everybody on your unit play better. Because a lot of times when we have mental errors and mistakes, it comes from lack of communication, which can come from lack of conf confidence, which can come from lack of knowledge. All right, so all those things become really, really important in games like this so you can stay focused. Coach, every time you get rolling right there, 
I feel like I've become a better human. You need to know that. Yeah, I, I feel like I've become a, a better human with the way, well, the reason why you have a lack of confidence, though, is probably because you have a lack of knowledge, which is probably a cause of a lack of work, which means we can really break this entire thing down from a small point of what are you doing right now in this church that we're living in? Amen. Coach, I wish I could. I know I'm on scholarship now, but I wish I could have got a chance to play for you. I, I don't know what I would do if I had these types of messages every single day. Is the equipment manager charged with spotting the ball? And how many times? Times has he been, uh, you know, chewed out or potentially questioned this week as you get ready for the fast team? He's been chewed out a few times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if we could get the ball set, I believe that is probably been said a few times. Tone has a question for you, Coach. Coach, a lot has been made this week in the NFL that scoring is down the lowest in like 10 years. Um, I saw that college football scoring is also down. Is there any reason that you – think that may be is it is it just that defenses are, are catching up to the spread and potentially the tempo uh is it the new timing rules is there a reason that you think college football scoring might be done it's you know that's surprising to me i wasn't really aware of that um haven't really thought about it um i know that scoring has been going up probably for the last 10 years yeah probably because of tempo probably because of some of the rules in college football that created rpos blocking behind the line of scrimmage if the ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Those are huge advantages for offense and creates a lot of run-pass conflicts for defensive players. But um, I do think that people on defense are doing different things to try to um, sort of equal the playing field. And I think one of the things that you know the Ravens started doing maybe five years ago is a lot of simulated pressures. And um, you know this gives offense – a problem because somebody's rushing that's not supposed to be rushing and somebody's dropping who's supposed to be rushing. So that kind of messes them up a little bit on some of these things that they're, they're, they're trying to do offensively. And um, we do that a little bit, but it gets a little harder to do it when um, you don't have the right personnel on the field. Okay. Have college defenses got more sophisticated over time here the last like 10 years, do you think? I think so. I absolutely think so. I think that, you know, when, People started going no huddle. Defenses got simpler. Uh, and I think now because we've all adapted to that, like we don't even we, we don't even have like the first page of the notebook used to be. This is how we get in the huddle. We, we don't even have that page anymore. <laughs> goes and stands where they line up and gets a signal from the sidelines and goes and tries to execute. So. In games like this, every player on the defense has to know the signal. We, we don't have time to communicate it across the board or even have a signal caller to tell everybody what the call is. So uh, I think we've gotten, and, and in doing that, we've been able to do more things that way, like one-word calls. Like I used to think if you called a defense, like when I was a defensive coordinator at the, at the Cleveland Browns, say, you know, I thought if I called um, base closed, triple 88, six Bronco. That was telling everybody what to do on every formation. If you try to make that call now against a fastball team, no way. Before Bronco even gets out, that ball is snapped. We just have a one-word call for that. Buckeye. Okay? Buckeye. All right, so, and I'm saying, well, the players will never remember all that. Well, they actually do it better that way than the other way. Because the other way, they were thinking about 15 different things. This way, they're thinking about one thing and just applying it to whatever it is they see. When that happened? So, when that happened, Coach? Uh, when old Miss beat us two out of three years going fast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it anymore. What do we need to do? Oh, I love it. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, on the flip side, for for an offense, you hear coaches or people talk about on TV that you have to have a balanced attack, like between your run and pass game. Is that? Does that have uh, as much weight as people, I think, give it? Do you have to have a balanced attack, or isn't the offense just kind of taking what the defense will give them? Well, I, I think that ideally you would like to have a balanced attack because the whole philosophy behind that is the run game is going to help the pass game, the pass game is going to help the run game. So if you have that balance, that's going to be a good thing. But I do agree with you that you really do have to take what the defense gives you. And you don't want to run negative plays into bad looks. So the more you can eliminate that through having the right call, whether it's run to pass or run to run, uh, that, that obviously helps, you know, a lot. So um, 
But I also think on offense, you have to feature the players you have. On defense, you have to play a system because it has to adapt to a lot of things, a lot of different offensive things that you're going to see. But on offense, you have to do what the players you have can do and feature the talent that you have. And if that requires passing the ball a lot because that's the kind of team you have, then to me, that's what you should do. Uh, if you have a big old offensive line and people are going to play nickel defense all the time and they're small and you can run it, then that's, that's what your team can do. That's what you should do. So on offense, you have to feature the talent that you have. The thought of you looking at Derrick Henry before every single game and then looking at the other team and just going, yeah, we're going to run the ball. We yeah, should. We no. should. <laughs> I mean, they can't tackle the guy. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about your quarterback. We do this every single week, and I think I have enjoyed kind of the flow of the season mm -hmm. for Mr. Milrow because of, you know, how he performed. Then the benching happens against USF. Then he comes back. You see great leadership out of him. You see great confidence out of him. The conversation about him was like, okay, this is old-school Alabama football, just like it was when Trent Richardson was there, just like when Derrick Henry was there. They're going to be pounding the rock. Now this dude's throwing for 300 yards. He's opening up the pass thing. The deep ball is like one of the most explosive plays you guys have, and it happens in abundance. What have you learned from him, and how much more growth does he have this season, you think, as the Alabama quarterback? No, I, I think Jalen has done an outstanding job of um, communicating, uh, showing leadership, you know, with his teammates. Uh, I think his teammates have grown confident in him, I, which I think is important. It would be important to all of us if we're playing on a team that everybody believes in you, trust in you, you have great relationships with the people that you're playing. I think, you know, that creates a lot of positive Things. And I think that has developed for us offensively. I think it's developed with the passing game. Uh, we still have things to clean up. We could still be a little more consistent in the passing game, but we have made a lot of explosive plays. And I think that's something that we want to continue to be able to do. But to you know AJ's point before, when you run the ball effectively, those explosive plays sometimes are out there for you to get because of the way they're playing you on defense. Yeah, it feels like everybody's kind of hesitant because they're scared to death that Milrow is going to do his thing, and then all of a sudden that leaves a lot of time for your weapon. You got speed. Hey, we got speed. Not as many big names at wide receiver, but we got some speed that's been able to be exposed some defenses. That's good. Hey, coach, they counted you out, didn't mm -hmm. they? Hey, they counted yeah. Alabama out yeah. just a few weeks ago. Now we're growing. That capability gap is getting smaller mm -hmm. and smaller. And small favored by eight and a half this weekend. Yeah. You don't win by that. Everybody thinks you're a loser. Ty has a question for you, Coach. <laughs> yeah, Coach. Post game, uh, you you made a comment. It was it was something to the effect of like we need to learn how to to beat teams and not just win games. But I'm just curious. Like, do you take any solace or comfort in the fact that your team does know how to win close games? Because I feel like that is a trait that all great teams possess. Yeah, I think that's true. I think our team is showing great resiliency and being able to win games. And I think that's really, really important. And I wouldn't trade that for anything. But there is a difference between beating the other team and winning the game. Because if you beat the other team, it means you're able to impose your will on the individual that you played against and you did it collectively as a team, which in essence is what you would love to have happen to see your team play the way they're capable of playing. So um, that's something that, you know, we want to continue to try to instill, you know, in our players that um, we want to impose our will on the opposition, regardless of what the score is. Don't have to be behind to do it. We still do it when we're ahead. Because, you know, you know, I mean, I think the Colorado game was a great example of, you know, a little bit what happened to us last week get ahead 29 nothing in the game, you know, guys lose their mental intensity, their focus, and then the game starts to change and the momentum swings and you can't get it back, All right? So you have to learn how to sustain and grind through it and continue to impose your will so you never lose that. The other team's going to make plays. you got to play the next play, and everybody's got to learn how to do that. But um, I like the fact that our team has resiliency and they've been able to learn, to, to win close games. Do you talk to Coach Prime during this season at all or not really? I have not, but he is a great friend and I root for him all the time. His speech he gave after oh. the game. 
was just like that was the first time you know because he is a you know he's a hard ass coach. I don't think people really understand that about accountability and everything. And he just kind of was fed up with them and say, hey, we're practicing tomorrow. We're getting back in there. Not that you have that on the horizon with this Alabama team, but how do you get that bad taste out of a team's mouth? Like, what is the immediate next day's messaging, and how do you move on from something as devastating as that? I think that's one thing great about being in competitive sports. You always have a next opportunity. And as long as you can look forward and take advantage of the opportunities that you have in the future and not dwell on the past, like, you know, you've heard me say this before, but we have a 24 hour rule around here. All right. We win 24 hours. It's over. We got to get ready for the next game. We lose 24 hours. It's over. We got to get ready for the next game. So um, I think, though, that it's actually more difficult in this day and age for players to deal with success and then it is failure. You know, most of the time when you have failure, people respond really, really well. Uh, but sometimes when you're successful, it can be an enemy of how you stay focused and what you do to prepare. Uh, and you become, using that same term, relieved. All right, we won the game. I should be able to take it easy. I sold my 10 car quota. I should get my trip to the Bahamas. I mean, that's how people think. You can't think like that, that in competitive sports. I heard you got a great car dealership down there, too. I heard you're in the car game a little bit. I, I fancy myself a car person as well. Not the cars you have, though. <laughs> no. Hey, not the cars you have. I heard we have a couple Ferraris rolling around down there. Is that right? Just one. We had two, but we <laughs> traded two on that we wanted, which is the way it works with Ferrari. <laughs> hey, listen, listen to this. Just a West Virginia boy rolling around in a Ferrari being called the GOAT. You're the man. We appreciate the hell out of you joining us. I appreciate it, man. But I want everybody to know I started in a pickup truck, an orange one, and uh, used to go scrape the ball diamond with my dad. And, you know, a lot of the things that I learned about accountability came from that pickup truck. I'm sure you're taking care of that Ferrari now because of that pickup truck. We appreciate the <laughs> hell out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Saban, thank yeah. you, buddy. Yeah. Man, he gets preaching in there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he gets going. It's good. Yeah, it's really it really good. is. It's hard not to just get lost in there. I am. Often. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And I'm always like, yeah. oh, the conversation has to continue yeah. after this answer, though. So let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's pay attention here. I was like, just stop and clap a couple yeah. different times. Like, all right, let's pivot away from that. He has so many in there, Chuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's so many in there just from all the years of coaching, especially with the way he is. And one of the first ones, he talks about how, you know, sports psychologists, sports psychiatrists, he's not scared to take ideas or mental notes from people and books and everything. He's always grasping for ways to motivate the boys. Feels like he's got to figure it out, Chuck. Feels like he's got to figure it out. He brings in during the off season, multiple guest speakers, motivational guys. I mean, and so he just finds ways to keep teaching his message from different, just to like, okay, they may, it may seem to get old and then he brings somebody in, uh, Ernie Johnson, okay, brings Ernie in and he talks and he delivers the same exact message that coach has been delivering. So it just oh, it legitimizes. It just legitimizes everything that coach talking about process, 60 minutes, all you got, one planet, all that stuff we say cliche. But you just got to figure out different ways to get your message across and keep teaching the same thing so you're not all over the place. And he does a phenomenal job of bringing people in to just reinforce those messages. The church of what's happening now. That's awesome. unreal. Amen, A.J. Hawk. Amen. Let's talk about what's happening now around the NFL. Uh, former teammate of yours, I do believe, friend of yours. Never been on the program, but I have met him a few times. Nice. Uh, Las Vegas Raider wide receiver Devontae Adams uh, spoke after this last weekend's big win over the New England Patriots about the offensive efficiency and his role inside of it. And boy, it is certainly uh, generating some headlines. Here's the full presser and full quote not just being read from Devontae Adams. I mean, it's a work in progress. Obviously, we're going to continue to work through it, but I mean, I'm a human being and I have extremely high standards for myself and this offense. So it's to me, it's not just about, you know, I'm sure people thinking like, you know, well, they won the game, they won the Packers game, you know, why is there an issue? I mean, you see why it's an issue. You, you know, y'all should know who I am, know what I'm about at this point. So it's not about, you know, when, when, you're, a, when you're a player like me mentally, it's, the, my benchmark is not wins and losses, it's greatness. So when I go out there, I expect to be able to have that ability to put that on tape and have the, uh, an influence on the game. 
And that's like I say every week, that's the, my purpose for being here. I'm not here just to hang out and, you know, like I said, come here to hang out with Derek and all of that stuff from last year. Came here to win and to, to do it the right way. So if, I mean, if it don't look like it's supposed to look, then, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be frustrated if I'm not a part of that, that plan because, as you know, I have, I have the opportunity to go and make, to, to change that and make it look like a much better pitcher out there. And if that doesn't happen, then I'm going to be frustrated. You know, if, if Jacoby goes out and have a, a monster game or if the offense is scoring every five plays like the, you know, our first drive on the Bills, then it is what it is. I don't, you know, I don't, it's not about me, but, you know, I'm one of the bigger pieces, you know, as to why this offense is going to go. And if I'm not getting it, then that's obviously not um, according to plan. So we want to we want to obviously keep working like we are to, to get that, that right. So some of the ways that press conference was put onto the Internet with some of the quotes, obviously not with the entirety. There's a lot of people saying Devonte Adams won. All he cares about is he didn't get the ball. Now, that press conference was quite a roller coaster of like emotions of how you feel about what he's saying. But I think the most important part, he said, if Jacoby Myers is going to get six catches, touchdowns, and we're going to be an effective offense, we're going to win. You're going to hear nothing from me. I think his big message was like, yeah, our offense is a work in Brock. We need to get better. And I was brought in here to be a massive piece of this offense. So I'm never going to be happy or satisfied when our offense is crop and we're winning games moving forward. A lot of people are trying to make him look selfish. I think he's actually taking a view of the entire team, the entire offense, and talking as if a quarterback would talk about the whole thing. Your thoughts on what Devontae Adams said there? And how isn't it as easy as just like throw the ball to the guy? Isn't that just kind of what Aaron almost said whenever he was playing with 17? <laughs> Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of that guy where if he's out there, even if it looks like someone's over the top, hey, just give give Devontae a chance. He'll he'll probably come down with it. But I could I guess I could see how people could take this many different ways, but how, at least how I took it when I first saw it and watched the whole thing, that he's saying, like, yeah, we're not satisfied just squeaking by and winning and not scoring a bunch of points and all this. Like we are better than we're showing and it, like the greatness thing. He's, I, I took it as, hey, we're not satisfied. We're, we're not just trying to win games by a little bit. We're not just trying to squeak out these victories and whether I'm getting the ball or not. He's, he's basically saying, hey, if we're losing and our offense is putting up no points and I have two targets, like that's an issue. Like we need to give me the ball a little bit more. Hey, Devontae, very good for a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. His move to the Raiders was interesting. We all thought it was very interesting when allegedly, we don't know for sure, we could assume that this is the case because it's been reported, I guess, but Devontae hasn't come out and said, the Green Bay Packers paid him more. I think, to or offered him more to stay in Green Bay once the Las Vegas offer came in for him to be a Raider and get traded away. He decided to go back there. I think he was a Raiders fan growing up, obviously wanted to see new scenes. I think he said he wanted to see what life was like out from underneath the whole conversation being the MVP quarterback and see how I can do. Derek Carr was obviously last year. That ends up not working out, even though it seems to be working out with the Saints. This year, Jimmy G comes in. He's out. Hoyer does okay. He's out. Aiden Con uh, Connell was in there. Jimmy G is back. What do you think from uh, Devontae Adams for the rest of the season? And how do they go about getting that Green Bay Packer Devontae Adams on their team on a regular basis? Well, that's what stinks is like when they actually give him opportunities, like he still is that guy. Like he, you know, like when they actually go into a game and, and make it a focal point of like, hey, it, again, like AJ saying, like Aaron has said, like it doesn't matter who's on him. It doesn't matter if he's getting doubled. Like we need to give this guy at least 15 targets because he will produce. But he could have never imagined. I mean, what you, you just mentioned all those guys like in his second year with the Raiders and he's already played with like five quarterbacks. So he's never really getting the opportunity to kind of create that same kind of chemistry that he had with Rodgers. Like, I, I think this is also a testament to to Rodgers, too, is like, whoa, he he was. Of course, was, you're going to say that. no, just like this show. Of course, whoa, whoa, he was whoa. always he was always healthy. You know, it's like you. You, you, he was always playing with the same guy. So, like, and yeah, obviously Rodgers is amazing, but like Jimmy G already this year, it's like he gets hurt, and then he comes back and he's good, and then he gets hurt, and then he's out in the game. Like, it's just if you're trying to like build chemistry with a guy you've never played with before, like, I don't know how you get, I don't know how you fix that. The first two years of Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, he would come on and we'd run some plays from the game. We would do it this year, but obviously he's not playing. So the only plays we could see is him yeah. before the game yeah. somehow 30-some days after mm -hmm. surgery being able to do it. So we got to do that. But there was a couple plays with, like, Devontae Adams where there was, like, no signal given. No. Was not the play. Just, like, a look and then, like, a look and then, like – yeah, we're running a completely different play than everybody else. His football IQ is so high. So I assume Devontae is like, I know every coverage that we're playing against. 
we can easily make this thing work every single time. I'm not really getting the opportunity to do that thus far. And I think every time he speaks about it publicly, he's not just speaking to the fans. I think it's also to like, for sure. Hey, every, we need, uh, we need, uh, you know, let's. And so. he's, he played, he's used to, he, he played with Aaron Rodgers for so long as well. And Aaron can do things that not really anyone on the planet can do and how he can get rid of the ball and where he can place the ball and all that. And nothing against who he's played with since Aaron, but like you said, it's just so many different guys. Like how do you have that continuity in that, you know, where all of a sudden we give each other a look and we know, hey, he knows what I'm running. Here we go. We can trust each other. Let's do it. Like, it just takes time to do that, and you don't have the same guy over and over again. It's tough. It's crazy that they were able to look at each other and go, you remember in 2013 when a guy played against us like this? Yep. In the first quarter of the fourth game of the season? Yep. All right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, they're just both on the same page. It's like, hopefully they'll be able to develop that because when Devontae's rolling, it's must-see TV. The catches are bananas. Uh-huh. Yeah. The, the, the moxie. The yak. His yak is legit, too, for being a big guy as well. Like, it's crazy. So, hopefully, they'll get that thing rolling. But I don't know if anything has told us that that offense is going to get flowing uh, like we thought that it could be. I think he's talking to Jimmy G. Because last year, with Derek Carr, he had 100 catches for 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns. He was the second most targeted wide receiver in the league. So, the, the, then the coaching staff is the same. The only thing that's changed is Jimmy G versus Derek Carr. I think he's personally just talking to Jimmy G, like, throw me the ball. Yeah, Derek Carr, interesting. Got kicked out of the building last year, right? Now he's mm-hmm. down at the Saints. They're favored by the Jags tonight, Thursday Night Football. Mm-hmm. We have a little bit of an update here uh-huh. on this particular Thursday Night Football game from Adam Schefter. Jacksonville head coach Doug Peterson told Ed Werder, shout out to Ed Werder, covering the Cowboys, been around a long time, that he expects Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence will start tonight against the Saints pending a pregame workout. Lawrence has reported improvement in his mild left knee Sprain. Okay, here we go. We assumed that with the chatter that it has been, that Trevor played earlier in the show. We said with this much talk on a short week, this early in the season, that position, that guy for that team, they would already rule him out. Now, you said Mavis' gamesmanship, though. C.J. Beathard, you elevate the third stringer. But it sounded like there was too much noise about him potentially playing on a short week for the quarterback position for him not to play. What did we learn from that tweet, and what does that workout look like? Have, we ever, have you ever seen one of these? No, absolutely. And if he goes out there in the pregame workout, that's the beauty of the league right now is, is we're kind of speculating because they did bring up the third teamer. He's going to be on the roster. He's going to be active tonight just in case during that 25 30 minute work or whatever that is and I'm sure it's going to be hey can this guy if something breaks down can he get out of harm's way can he protect himself and if they find out in that workout that he's not capable of that and we have to just hand it off every time with him then then we're not we're not going down that road we'll sit him down but that's the beauty of the league right now is that's still out there so New Orleans can't sit back and say okay we're getting CJ Beathard we're getting this other dude instead this is Maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe. maybe. Have sure. the sports books changed at all since the Schefter tweet? Not really. I mean, there was, there's one and a half twos and two and a halfs out there, which was basically what it was before this news came out. I think they already kind of figured based off of there was, there was some reporting, what was it, last night uh, that he was probably going to go. So I think it was already cooked into those last night. Okay, so Trevor Lawrence in the Jaguars, three-game, like, wagon. Right now, two in London, and then against the Colts last week. Hot. They're a hot team right now, this Jacksonville Jaguars team. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't know what Trevor Lawrence is going to be or if he's going to slow down, but they have the leading tackler in the NFL right now. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, 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 Yeah. 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 Leading tackler for the Falcons comes over to the Jags, leading tackler for. The Jack in the in NFL. NFL yeah, now yeah. that's yeah. just for the team. For the we don't even talk about this guy. He's on the Jack. Josh Allen on that team. That defense, very good. Four turnovers for Gardner Minshew last week against that defense. And then you talk about the offensive side. Etn, you see him getting the edge, breaking mm-hmm. through the first round, and he's off and running. Calvin Ridley's running these routes faster and in fast forward. Trevor Lawrence is making all this thing. Christian Kirk was brought in a few years ago. Reset the entire wide yep. receiver market. Has showed up for him. It's like I'm kind of surprised that the Jags are getting multiple points, especially if they're getting Trevor Lawrence back and playing and everything like that. Does that change? I know you, this morning, we don't want to give anything away. Yep. Uh-oh. Chuck sure sounded like he was picking that New Orleans team. Oh, it was 5-1 yeah. and one on Thursday Night Football. That, they so got that some was, injuries. What, both I'm tackles a, are out. I know that. So you got, you got linemen out. You know, you got a, mm, uh, Walker Little's out for the Jags. But 
Uh, New Orleans got three offensive linemen out. They got two starters and a backup offensive lineman out. Already been ruled they benched, out. They benched the guy too. They benched Penny and they, they brought a guy up from the practice squad. And like both these guys haven't played tackle since in years. And so you don't years. think Josh Allen right now, who's got eight sacks on the on the year now as a team, they're like twenty eighth as far as getting sacks. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, but you got Josh Allen there, and they'll line him up on one of those other, whoever it is. I liked Artie Smith saying, oh, "My first year, we went down there and uh, we won on a uh, <laughs> on a game winning field goal or whatever." But they were telling me like, "Hey, when it gets going, you can really feel it." Is what he said. That home field is an advantage down there. But for me, just watch. I don't know. I'm a big like, how is the team playing right now? And if Trevor Lawrence is playing on a Thursday, okay, I think he's going to be more than capable to do everything that he has done. Yeah. I assume it's been talked about much more than the actual injury is. I I, uh, I don't want to make my official pick yet, but I think the AFC South is going to be in a good spot this evening with oh. Trevor Lawrence back there. Against the spread, the tail of the tape here, the Jacksonville Jaguars 4-2. and two. The New Orleans Saints 1-4-1. One, and one. Feels like they've been given favorable odds from the books since the beginning of the season. Haven't been able to show up for them. Points per game, Jacksonville 23.6. Their opponents 20.3. That's how you win. <laughs> okay, you average more points than your opponent, you win games. Points per game for the Saints, 18.2. You have to have over 27 is what um, <laughs> the last 14 Super Bowl champions have had. Yep. Over 27 points per game. So they're at 18. Now, this is a different year with much better, uh, much better defenses, but the Saints' offense has not been fantastic. Plus seven turnover margin for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Plus two for the Saints. Okay, not bad defenses in third 15, down. Uh, 15 takeaways, not to interrupt you. Sorry, Pat. No, go ahead. That leads the, the league. Saints? No, Jacksonville. Well, they got they're, four from Gardner got, last week. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, they were at 11, and Gardner gave them four. And so they're week at 15. One, they got more takeaways than anybody in the NFL too, right? right now. So, they, Jack's D, they, they good. Can, they can turn yeah, the ball great over. Great defense. They're third against the run, but 31st against the pass. Held the Bills in, in London. They had a good defense. And then sure. third down percentages there, 36.1, which is 24th, and then 32.1, which is – Third in the league, four percent change. There's a jump from twenty fourth to third. Well, that's, that's how, the defense. Yeah, that's a parody of the it's NFL. Offense though. versus the defense. Yeah, you're talking about like that much of a difference yeah. is from twenty fourth in the league to third in the league or whatever. I you ah, this is wild. I, I for me, I don't know what the books are. Th- it feels like this is an obvious pick for the Jets, which scares me, mm-hmm. which makes me almost think. Like it's going to be the Saints on this particular Thursday night. Yeah, I mean, it's a bummer, and I hate that I have to be the one to say this, but this game's going to blow. Uh, oh, yeah. There's not going to be a lot of good offense. It's going to be a lot of good oh, defense. Yeah. I like touchdown yeah. parlays. I don't like any of them tonight. But, I mean, look, it's still going to be a competitive game, and both these teams are still in it. And at least we do have studs on both sides of the ball for the Jags and the Saints, so there's guys to watch. And Kirk Herbstreit, Al Michaels, Haley Hartung, the Fitz, Witt, what? Carissa, what? Yeah. Tony, what? Sherm. Of course, yep. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. The, the production of the – Marshawn Lynch. Uh, yeah, I yeah. can't wait to see what he's doing in the bayou. It's going to be awesome. The game's going to stink. It's going to be a tough one. Oh, why are you so negative all this? Is this Marianne Doe? Oh, no, no. Is this because of Marianne Doe? What's the over-under on the game? 40 and a half. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this game's going to stay. Taking the over? No. You're taking the under? Absolutely. Jacksonville at New Orleans line movements. Uh, Best over is currently at 39 and a half. Best under is at 40 and a half. Look out. Best Saints odds, minus 130. Best away odds, plus 120. Best home odds. Minus one and a half at FanDuel. Best away odds, plus two and a half at? Bad MGM. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, a lot of movement there. Hey, nobody really knows, it seems like, what the exacts is. But I know who yeah. does. That's Chuck Pagano. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. I, I will most likely blindly follow Chuck on this one, but I do have an idea of what which way I'm leaning right now. Oh, what is oh. it? Huh? Tell us. I can't tell you that. It's a secret. Come on. Uh, me too. I Me too. Yeah. I'm yeah. leaning towards both teams right now, but I can't mm-hmm. wait to hear yeah. what this old Italian man has to say because he seems to have the touch of the gods. Speaking of the gods, gods have blessed Sean McVay and his wife. Yes. Yeah, yep. they've been married. Yep. Wife with a baby. Mm-hmm. Sweet. She is currently oh. pregnant. Now, the conversation okay. is quickly revolved around, well, coach, what are you going to do if the baby 
is born on an NFL Sunday. You're the play caller. You're the head coach. You know, this happens for players. Very rarely does it happen for coaches because normally this type of thing is planned to potentially happen in the offseason. Now, they got very lucky. He slipped one past the goalie, baby dude, during the football season. And here's what Coach Sean McVay had to say about his unborn baby in the timing in which it enters the world. Uh, my wife's doing great. I think there was a lot made about me missing a game. I'm not going to miss a game. My son knows better than to come during a game. Okay, so I think there's nothing more that needs to be said. That's a matter of fact. AJ, <laughs> do you agree with that? I agree. Coaches are known to induce on Tuesdays a lot. That happens if your wife is pregnant during the season. <laughs> yeah, he changed the tune. Uh, Coach Pagano, your thoughts on uh, coaches potentially having babies during – first of all, shout out to his wife, okay, because I got a chance, obviously, to go through a pregnancy with – my bride for our beautiful baby girl. Pregnancy is uh, one of those things that happens where you go, thank God I'm not a woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like thank yep. God they didn't have me be the one that has to go through what is happening here. Just emotionally, physically, mentally, you're watching an alien inside and organs are moving. Mm -hmm. You can't breathe. Everything. It's just, it's Absurd what happens for a human baby to come into the world. Shout out to all the moms that had to battle oh, yeah. through that. But when you're married to a coach in the NFL during a season, I mean, he is pretty locked in. So shout out to his wife. Yeah. And how do you think this whole thing unfolds? Is it an induction you think this would take place? Or do we need to understand that Sean McVay's been doing football his whole life? His, his seed? His offspring understand that we're coming on an off day. We're coming on Tuesday and probably going to be calling plays on Sunday with dad, if I had to guess. If anybody can make that call, maybe maybe he could. But he's also got to understand that <clears throat> these women want to have these babies natural these days. You know, some home births type things, right? So um, I, sure hope it does, I sure hope it doesn't happen. Look, if you want to be there for the birth of your son – and you want to have great relationships with this kid, I, <clears throat> I suggest you be there. <laughs> you know, otherwise, that, that's one of those things like you don't want to miss the birth of your baby because that's something that potentially could hang over your head for the rest of your life. But, hey, well, we understand because you're – no. So the good thing is if it does happen, he has to miss a game. He's got a great staff. He's got Raheem Morris over there that can, that can run the whole deal Going to be a head coach again soon. Yeah, yeah. Going to be a head coach again, doing a phenomenal job with that Rams defense like always. So – I like That'd the positive vibes, yeah. though. I like the positive vibes. And my baby came uh, two and a half weeks early. So they are, wow. uh, are out of nowhere. You know, like 3.50 in the morning, I believe, or 2.50 in the morning. Wife wakes me up. I think my water broke. So, well, I was supposed to learn how to be a dad in the next two weeks. Baby's not... <laughs> What are we talking about? You might, you might, it's hot in here. You might, you know, yeah. maybe, we sweat, it's AC on. maybe we sweat a little bit. That's the whole thing. So the baby doesn't really, you know, care about what you have going on. Mm -hmm. But I do appreciate the fact that Coach McVay is putting this out into the world. And shout out to his baby, I assume, getting a crash course in football yeah. uh -huh. since about probably three weeks into existence with Coach McVay. Yeah, because I because last week he said he would miss the game if it, if it came last Sunday. And this time, this this week he's he had a talk with his with his baby boy inside the stomach and say, hey, you're not coming on Sunday. So I like that. I had a lot of those talks, too, with my baby girl. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a sign of things to come for me talking to her and her not listening. But I did say, <laughs> hey, your dad has not read all the manuals yet. Mm -hmm. So we need the next two and a half weeks. Okay? There's a lot of learning that has to take place. She did not care. She came. And then all of a sudden, it's a lot of, whoa. Yeah. Whoa! Mm -hmm. What the hell is about to happen to my life? And I think Coach McVay will have that same exact moment, even if it's on a Tuesday or if it's on a Sunday. And congrats to them having the beautiful gift that is a beautiful baby. I can't wait to see what team that player or that baby goes on to play quarterback for, yep. and then ends up coaching yep. inevitably in the NFL. Yep. Right. Certainly already, especially it comes on Tuesday. Yeah, you kidding me? Imagine, imagine this baby does come on Tuesday. It's like chosen one. Yeah, coach's yeah. son. Ch chosen. Born one. in the hot tub at the facility as well for sure or the colds right in the cold tub too just get a good contrast mm -hmm. you know better flush yeah. the veins so we can get any uh any bruising out uh <laughs> let's talk uh let's talk about the greatest of all time in the nfl okay obviously we've all seen him tops off laid out True. on his six million dollar yacht yep. just cruising mm -hmm. through a canal in miami all by himself headphones in living his life. You know, obviously, divorced. We've all heard about his personal life. He has a $6 million yacht to cry on. He certainly was doing that in an incredibly comfortable, jocked. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Jacked. Jo tanned. 
jocked, laid out on a yacht, cruising past houses in Miami. Hey, thanks for representing football. You look so cool, Tom Brady. Thank you, Tom. But Tom Brady still has his podcast every single Monday on SiriusXM oh, yeah. with Jim Gray, who is a man who sounds like... Well, Tom, I know you're looking absolutely jacked right now, but if you'd like to get more jacked, uh, 20% off at GNC with their new uh, Saturday pill pack. And then Jim Gray will professionally move straight from that pill pack right into a real question, and then we'll get an incredible answer from the greatest of all time. This one, this particular time, was talking about the state of football and the physicality. Here's Tom Brady, the greatest of all time, chit-chatting about the current NFL football. There's so many different violations in football. I would actually like to see less violations called. You know, focus on the important ones and let some other things go. I saw DK Metcalf got penalized for unnecessary roughness. He's, you know, it would. I don't know if there's unnecessary or not, but all I know is the defender's got every right to, you know, push back on DK, but he doesn't do it. So DK throws him on the ground. They throw a flag. I'm like, I don't understand what the flag is. This is football. This is not... Yeah. This is not, you know, this is not, yeah. you know, this isn't touch football. This is real football. And I think the physicality, which people really enjoy, I certainly enjoyed. I, I love that physical element of the sport. I don't think we should ever lose that. And I think that we are, you know, there's so many people that are, you know, want it less and less physical. It's a, it's, it's more like flag football, which is going to be in the Olympics in 2028, you know, which maybe football goes to flag football over a period of time. And I don't think <laughs> oh. fans will like that that much. Then everyone should stop bitching about, you know, unnecessary roughness call. It's interesting because Tom Brady sounds like an old talking about football, but he's been saying this for a while. He's saying that defenses are getting more easy. Football is getting more easy for the quarterback. He took a lot of pride in breaking things down, seeing the coverage, having to make a decision to protect yourself. If not, it's going to be an interception or you're going to get whacked. He talked about the number changing with the NFL and how dumb it is that they're even allowing linebackers or defensive linemen to wear single digits. Now he's talking about the pass interference, or not the pass interference, the roughing the passer calls, and other stuff like that. Tom is speaking from a generation that there is a lot of... I don't think any of us expected Tom to be this guy, though. You know what I mean? Tom's the guy that whenever it was close to him, ah, I'm going down mm-hmm. to protect myself. Now, the way he's talking about football, not only does it make me respect him more and appreciate him more, but I like the fact that he's like, this is bullshit. I used to worry about getting paralyzed when I was in there, and now these guys aren't even allowed to touch each other in the face. And when he speaks, I think people will actually listen, especially in New York at the NFL offices, AJ. Yeah, I mean, how could you not listen to, to Tom Brady and all the wisdom and the reps that he has and everything he has seen on the football field? But what I remember is when he – I don't know how long ago it was when he was talking about for quarterbacks it's much easier because there's so many balls you can throw now where your receiver is not going to get decapitated. And before, you had to place it. You had to be even more precise because you, you're going to get this dude killed. And you, like, you're a liability. You cannot throw this ball. And so that's like a funny thing that I, I remember what he was saying before. But, yeah, I mean, Tom – when he got in the league, what year did he start in the league? 2000? Yeah. That was his first year? Mm-hmm. Pick 199. Like, there was we, – we were still – they were horse-collaring dudes. They were helmet-to-helmet helmet at times. Like, there was a different world back then. Well, Drew, the reason why he got to play yeah, is because right. of a hit that happened on a quarterback. Jeez. You yeah. got jacked up was still, like, the highest-rated segment in all of NFL football, which would be multiple millions of dollars of fines now <laughs> if those hits were to happen. It certainly changed. But Tom Brady, I didn't expect him to be OG football guy. This has gotten soft just because everything else – you know, avocado ice cream yeah, sure. or all this other – it's like Tom Brady's like, nah, football, you got to have a hard – edge and we need to keep it that way i respect it yeah and he's kind of been on that side the whole time like when he talks about concussions he says like hey if you play in the nfl you are aware you're going to get concussions they're part of the game there's nothing you can do about it. and he played you know 24 damn years he also i think what aj was talking about when he sat down i think it was gronk him levante david and mike evans with the tampa bay reporters and he talked about how you know unnecessary roughness and those hits across the middle those aren't on the defense like that's on the quarterback to make sure he's putting the ball in a spot where his guy isn't getting killed so now with the game to what AJ was saying it's like now he doesn't have to worry about that because no matter what if he puts this ball right where it's supposed to be even though that guy's getting killed he knows he's getting 15 yards on the other side whether he catches it or not we'll be talking to Peyton Manning in 14 minutes uh, at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show and then also on ESPN SPM Plus. I'll be excited to hear his thoughts yeah. on what Tom just said. I would assume he would echo the same sentiments, Coach. No, absolutely. Uh, it doesn't fall on deaf ears because the way he played the game. And to your guys' point, the way you know how he's talked about it. I just remember, like, 
I think it was the AFC Championship game in 2011 when I was at Baltimore. Nice. And he's on the goal line, and, and you know, like Drew Brees would just put the ball over and then tuck away and just try to hide. He, he goes up over the top, ball's still in his hand, and starts to land on his head, and Ray Lewis hits him right in his spine, right? So this is a guy that loved the competition, loved the physicality of it. So this Loves doesn't, ball. This Loves doesn't, because that's how he played, you know? And, and the game and the rule changes obviously added probably two, three, four years more. I mean, he got to play until he's 45. So that protected yeah. him as well. So uh, I like what he's saying because none of us want to see the, the physicality. Uh, of this game go away and turn into flag football. I don't think it ever will. But And there's a lot of guys getting – I mean, these things are happening bang, bang, not to, you know, pivot away from it. But there's there's flags getting thrown and fines getting levied on, on guys that are – like if they slowed this thing down, you watch it and, you know, slow it down. Yeah, well, that's because – the New York office. That's yeah. right. They're mm-hmm. trying no, to take football out of football. But their shoulders, like Der- Derwin James. Yeah, we got to wrap up. You're doing great. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I mean, anything. We got five seconds. Okay, go ahead. Sports Center is in seven minutes. We appreciate you all. We'll see you. Feel good Friday live from Columbus tomorrow. All right, missed it. Sweetheart <laughs> out. Good one. Missed it. But it always, when I'm, I'm at home, I can okay. tell when we miss, but it's all good. <laughs> you can tell when I, that? That's my fault. Put that one on me. It's on. Oh, it's okay. on I appreciate me. that, Coach. That I appreciate that Coach talk there. Do you watch on ESPN or on YouTube? Both. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, kind of tough for the, the same conversation. Time? How can right you now. work No, YouTube. I mean, excuse me. I go 10 to ten to uh, noon, Mountain Time, ESPN. Oh, give us the rating. And then Thank you it. for that. We then, appreciate you giving us the rating. Appreciate it, Chuck. You got it in, by the way. Did I? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I stuttered four times. You know, so, <laughs> so I went to Columbus. <laughs> They get it. That's bad. I, I didn't catch that. It's because I got this long shirt, long sleeve on. It could be. I do feel like I look much more professional. I accidentally looked at myself a couple times when Saban was on. Who's that guy? What the hell's wrong with that? <laughs> Who's that corpo suit over there? Whoa! It's not a suit. Down, Hawk. It's not a suit, you pig. I have gotten text you messages pig. from a lot of people. A lot of people. Oh, a lot yeah? of people. Are they pumped or what? Well, I told Sam this morning whenever I said, I think I'm going to wear a long sleeve shirt today because the weather's turned at some point. 15 rain. I'm going to have to do this, you know? Mm-hmm. And this is a nice shirt you got me. I appreciate it and everything. I said, it's going to get loud, though. Like, I think people are going to gonna call me sellout. I'm going to be called a little bitch. This whole thing. Can't, can't put sleeves on. It's okay. And I was accurate in my prognostications. Good. What? Mm-hmm. I got somebody in my phone called me a little bitch. Who's that? Oh, no. I'm my- not going to say the name. Chris Angel? Chris Angel Whoa. probably loves what I'm doing, but he'd come in here and <laughs> sleeves would disappear. Yeah, he'd, yeah, he'd get rid of them. Somehow it'd be Take a, your arms off a, with the sleeves. A blue the torso would be gone. That is the craziest trick of all time. Oh, yeah. For real. Like, can we talk to can you? I know you're friends with them. Can you ask him, hey, how do you separate the torso from their lower half? Let me see if I can get his phone number and just. Yeah, some scissors. Yeah. We can do Sean Payton on you right now. Who, who's that? Oh, yeah. Go Sean Figures, Payton. Uh, yeah. Yeah, when he cut, cut his sleeves. sleeves off. Oh, because he was uh, yeah. getting hot or whatever? Yeah. I did that to the Penguin sweater. Mm-hmm. That, that might worked. be why we lost to the Detroit Red Wings last night. Yep. What a. Did you see that disgusting act by the Red Wings fan last night? I don't know if you Kid from Michigan mm-hmm. goes into that arena, grabs an octopus. Oh, oh nice. No. Throws this carcass onto the ice. So, oh, yeah. obviously, this Gross. is something that used to happen where they're like, you know what? What are the aliens that exist on Earth? Oh, octopi. Let's go ahead and grab a couple of those and just start hucking them onto the ice. Kid did it last night. Standing ovation. For that. Yeah, that greatest tradition in all of sports right there. All that is not all true. How do you get it in? It How do you get it into the arena? He stuck it down his pants, I think. Right. Wrapped yeah. that thing around the meat. A lot of them like oh, Easter. Camo- Boy. Yeah. How old yeah. was this kid? Pretty empty arena. Uh, Camouflages <laughs> itself around the meat. That's crazy talk. So he did, the thing was, his dad make him do it. His dad, all right, take your pants off, son. We gotta wrap this thing around. He's actually so close to climax because, like, when <laughs> one leg would start yeah. slipping so off, so many suction cups right. on that. The thing. other yeah. one exactly. grabbing. Yep. It became a yeah, ten exactly. blowies at once. You know, oh no! Nonstop oh, getting no. tugged. If Pittsburgh yep. wasn't so soft, you know what they would do? They Not might, disrespect fucking. They octopi. might get a penguin. A and they might throw are that you thing. Kidding? A penguin? Yeah. Yeah. You are yeah. a fool. This is what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. This is why no that's one knows what's for you guys. What do you want that's why we're hockey town. That would be so dumb. And that's why we won. Let me tell you what Pittsburgh might do once we get the – they might let a penguin do one of these and then – and then on the stomach and then let it kind of fly around. Yeah, alive. Not taking it from up upper deck and being like, hey, octopi. 
You're about to get splat, and then ice, boom. Well, so yeah. dead, rotting carcass all over the, the city's ice. city's getting soft, I'm just saying. At least we know who killed Takate, no? Yeah, it was Detroit. No, I was here. No, we know who killed Takate. I was here. Like it was, we knew it wasn't going to be you, fucking. <laughs> you would never get a hand job from one of those octopi to sneak no. them into that. Never. You would never do that. You might keister it. How come we were favored last night against the Red Wings, Nick? How, how was that? Why? Because they're a poverty franchise. <laughs> That's why. It Look. just so happens that so are you guys now. We are not. Jari oh, stinks. You lost Jari's all the way back. Goal. You yeah. lost every runners. year we do this. Jari stinks in that. That's the biggest yeah. issue with the That's, Penguins every year. That's 78 more games left. Shit happens. Yeah, you're going to lose where nobody's been perfect. What the hell happened to Louis Lasagna? I thought we. <laughs> Louis we Domingue. Fuck, can't we get that guy back? He wasn't <laughs> Italian <Can't> either. <laughs> or no. I mean, you're just going to keep trotting the he same guy out. He was a disciple of Shinshu. <laughs> Shinzu. 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 That's, that's actually Phil Knight. Yeah. That's how Phil you Knight, say it. the creator of, uh, what do you do? He, he, Nike. He put the rubber in a waffle maker, though, didn't he? Yeah. Isn't that what he did? Yep. That's how it all started. That's how it's a good movie. Souls. That air movie's good. I enjoyed it. Great movie. I enjoyed it a lot. I don't know if Ben Phil Affleck Knight played him it. great, I think. I like Ben. I thought Ben Affleck played him great. Yeah, that's just how I view him now, you know? Yeah, I'm me not, too. Okay, so when I go meet him one day, I'm just going to be like, oh, this is a psychopath, hilarious guy. Mm-hmm. Just kind of down for whatever. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Saw you in that documentary of you. Well, that was not how I... Documentary. No, it's not necessarily you how tell I... tell Sean Payton the same thing if you meet him? I've, I have met him. And I'll tell you what, I didn't get a Kevin James vibe, but the way Kevin James was in that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. felt like he nailed it. Mm -hmm. felt like that was an interesting, it. interesting uh, choice to play Sean Payton. Yeah, Why? I'd say... Thought it was quite a shot at Sean Payton, but what? Sean Payton was the one who made the pick. Yeah, Kevin James. No, Kevin James. Yeah, I'm starting star. to think He's that might have been the star. right guy the more we see him coach the Broncos. Kevin James is like the most He's beloved not person. We need to flip a culture. This hey, it's me. not working. That team stinks. All right, let's go. Let's not talk about a team that stinks. Let's talk about some teams that are good. One team in specific. I have some interesting stats from Hembo. Hem okay. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that the – Four of the top five scoring offenses have all been manned by one man, Jared Goff. Wow. Whoa. Ooh. 2017 Rams, number one scoring offense. Okay. 2018 Rams, second. 2022 Lions, fifth. 2023 Lions, currently on pace to be fourth. So four of the top five offenses in the last seven years manned by Jared Goff in the Detroit Lions. And I know that people talk about Jared Goff in a way for the last few years that I think has been well-deserved. You know, I, I think he was a guy that got his team to the Super Bowl. They weren't able to win. Then something happened. He seemed as if he lost his confidence. It might have been because the coach had no belief in him and that weared on him as a human being. Then he gets up to Detroit with MCDC, and this guy is here we go. There was once a conversation about why would you ever pick up that salary with Jared Goff? We were having it. Oh, yeah. It was actually that the Rams sent more to the Lions yeah. so that the Lions would pay the salary. That is where Jared Goff was. He was so far down. I, don't, I, I assume his confidence was down. But in the clout, in the world, in the conversation, it was like, this guy is Jared Goffel. He's going to Detroit to die. And MCDC says, no, no, man. That ain't hate on your shoulders. No. That's wind beneath your wings, man. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. We want you to go all in. Him and Ben Johnson have been this perfect match. The culture in Detroit has matched him perfectly. You were once down and out. Now you're the guy. He is going to go down. They're going to have to win a Super Bowl, obviously. He's going to have to win a Super Bowl. But he's had, he has Hall of Fame stats. He has everything to prove that he is a great quarterback in the modern NFL, in the NFL whenever he came into the league, when it was much different than what it is now, what he was able to do with McVay, what he's able to do with Ben Johnson. Jared Goff is a He's a full-blown fucking stud, AJ, and he very rarely gets talked about in those conversations with the other stud quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I just wonder how long he has to continue to play at this level until he does get mentioned, you know, with, with like the handful of other quarterbacks in the league that are considered like the tier one dudes. But what I'm impressed too with Jared Goff, not only how he's kind of resurrected his career, I know he's had a, a hell of a career already, but in Detroit, like he could throw a pick early, they could whatever, have a slow start. It, Jared seems to not hold on to anything. Like, he is steady Eddie, and then you see the mic'd up. He's on the sideline, like, getting the boys going, and he just comes back and he just slangs it. Like, it's – I didn't expect it to go this well, but it's it's fun to watch him play. It really is. I do. I love watching this Detroit Lions. They're creative. They have explosive plays. They yep. have a run game. And Jared Goff and MCDC are the bestest of buds. What have you seen from Jared Goff over the last couple of years in Detroit? Same thing. I mean, he's a – 
He's got great arm talent. He, he can make all the throws, obviously. The design, again, what Ben Johnson's doing with this offense, um, the ability to run the ball, the play-action pass, the explosives. I mean, nobody hits more explosives than this team. Mm-hmm. You know, 36 of them. They're like number three in the league right now. So I think he likes being in this spot. Oh, yeah. Like nobody's taught. To me, like he's like, keep bringing this on because it's, it's more motivation for him. It's bigger chip on his shoulder. And when you get to fly under the radar kind of like the Lions have, the acid test going to be like they're going to win the division. They're going to they're gonna get a home playoff game. They win the home playoff game, and then if he somehow finds his way into an NFC championship and then can get to the Super Bowl, then this story, like, it's got a long way to go. But he's, he's got to do it on the, on the biggest of biggest stages. And I know he's already taken the Rams to a Super Bowl, right? So it's a great story. Taking the Lions, love Chuck. It. If he takes the Lions to the Super Bowl, yeah, that's another that's, story. No, that's Statue that's a big immediately. They're never going to yeah. respect he had He had success, and Foxy said, give him a lifetime contract. I do not care. That's yeah. becoming more real and real as the days go on. Same thing with MCDC. What a culture flip. He's not only built the confidence of Jared Goff, but the entire city of Detroit around the brand new Ooh. Lions. Lions. And Nickelodeon said, you're right, man. They slimed a coach for the first time. Wow. Hell yeah. yeah. They Bro. got slime, man. Smart move. Earned it. Five, yeah. man. Five slimes, man. It was the greatest day of my fucking life, man. I used to watch all the time, man. <laughs> yep. Nick Kids Choice Awards. Always wanted one of them fucking orange blimps, man. What were some of your favorite shows whenever you were growing up on Nickelodeon? Uh, I love the adventures of Pete and Pete, man. Uh, who could forget all that? Obviously, those early casts were so fucking good, man. Doug, um, I don't know, Cat, Cat Dog. Dog, you name it, man. I've, I've, I got the entire Rolodex for every Nickelodeon show. And now you've been slime coach. How do you feel? I mean, it's just... <laughs> Like I said, it's the greatest day of my fucking life, man. It really is. Hopefully I can host the Kids' Choice Awards next year. Well, I I think they would certainly enjoy that. (laughs) Yeah. Hosting anything seems to be the best option for everything. Let's take uh, a break because a man that has hosted everything and should host everything, he's on the other side of this break. Oh, hell yeah. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it took him six seconds to get voted into the Hall of Fame. Yep. He's on the Mount Rushmore of Players Forever. In his incredible series, Peyton's Places, is launching its fourth season. Peyton Manning will be joining us on the other side of this break. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take five. Five. We have some massive news. A lot of blessings pounding out that I ain't even wished for. No, let the wolf of y'all, I'm locking the fridge door. And the crib cutting hits. I read through the catalog, came to conclusion, no one's touching it. Just finished and made a wish. I've been on the main run, set up shot to kill them off. Whatever the thing, I seen the boats, I'm at home. I'm selfish with the goals, I could give a fuck who try and get along. 6'3, you can't look me in the eyes. Thank you, man. Welcome, the incomparable Pat McAfee. But as soon as we get backstage, I see Serena Williams like six feet from me. And I'm like, oh my God. Hello, hello, hello. You look fantastic. Massive room. Did not expect to see this many incredibly important humans to the media world. And then all of a sudden, guess who pops by? Ryan Seacrest. Good Good you, Ryan Seacrest, how are you? Hey, Congratulations. You are legend, bro. And holy shit, Ryan Seacrest is here. <laughs> Honestly, you. your work I think is something that people Thank you. like me like really inspired you. Why am I here? Great question. Sweet cowboy hat. How you doing, dude? Makes me look thinner. The Kardashians? Bullshit. Come out of the elevator. Hey, good luck out there. Thank you. My show, my guys and I, will be joining the ESPN universe. And we are so incredibly pumped, honored, and thankful to be doing that. And a lot of people are wondering, you know, why would you ever want to do that when you run a couple hundred million dollar valued company with full independence and the ability to kind of do whatever I want, whenever I want, with my crew that is one of the hardest working group of men on this earth. And it's because I had the incredible opportunity over the last two months to chit chat with the leadership at ESPN. I go up to a lounge, Alex Honnold, you know, the guy that was climbing? Yeah, yeah. Holy fuck, that's that guy who just hangs off the side of cliffs or whatever. And I think the future of sports media is certainly something that we're kind of creeping in on. Digital 
has become an influence. It has the structure. It has the ability to reach millions and millions of people. Dan Orlovsky, after his riveting performance uh, <laughs> on the stage, which it was. Gets a Shirley Temple. He comes. No, he got wine. Okay. Oh, wow. The future obviously says that linear television is going to be dead. ESPN, the channel, won't be able to exist. But when is that? Is that a year from now? 10 years from now? 20 years from now? Can we get a 25, maybe 30? 35, 40? By that time, I'm 65, 70 years old, and I've completely missed out on the powerhouse that is ESPN Linear. So when I was talking to Jimmy and Burke Magnus and the Bob father, Bob Iger, somehow got a chance to be in his office for an hour and a half in Burbank. That was bananas. He's now talking, I think, to the leader of France. Dumbest life of all time continues. But they all very much understood that we need to embrace both what tomorrow is and what today is. And I have the exact same vision. Then Joe Buck, Troy Aikman come walking in. I'm very thankful to announce that we'll be on ESPN, ESPN Plus, the ESPN app. And for the first time, I do believe in all of sports media, we'll be live on ESPN's YouTube at the exact same time. Jimmy, Burke, Bob understood that 98% of male Gen Zers use YouTube on a daily basis. So being live there and on ESPN, we should be able to reach the entire world, hopefully, if I don't fuck it up, which I might have just did by saying the F word in this room right here. You so. met the real DeMar Hamlin, okay. not Michael B. Jordan. Are you sure? Not the actor, uh, not the clone. How's he up know, front? He is in Disney the, movies. The clones look exactly the, the same as real people. That's yeah. the actual clone type. Hey. Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! <laughs> Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Coach Show uh, Saving Thursday, October 19, 2023. Hour three of this program starts now. Football it is happening this evening. Week seven of the NFL season will kick off as the Jaguars take on the Saints. The Jags are getting two to two and a half points on most books. That's AJ Hawk. The talks at tables here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Dun. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. 36 year football coach Chuck Pagano is here. And joining us now is a man who is well accomplished in the football world, obviously. Mm -hmm. Five time MVP, two time Super Bowl champion, Walter Payton Man of the Year, Mount Rushmore candidate for every human in the history of football. He's also the host of Peyton's Places, which will debut season four, episode one, this upcoming Sunday, and also the host of the Manning Cast, which has another episode Monday night as the 49ers will take on the Minnesota Vikings. Ladies and gentlemen, Peyton Manning. Hey. How are you? Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you for joining us. I know you got a lot going on, so the fact that you're able to take a little time on this glorious Thursday, we are very thankful for. Let's dive right in. Peyton's Place is Season 4. Congratulations. Congrats, uh, it feels like every time I watch an episode or watch these Peyton's Places, you legitimately love the game of ball and want to showcase everything in the history of football while doing incredibly cool things. Who thinks of all these fucking ideas for you? How do you go about doing these things from doing the Statue of Liberty play at the Statue of Liberty to like uh, a helmet race on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway? Who thinks of this? And how did you start this Peyton's Places, Peyton? Well, I appreciate you being a fan of the show, Pat. Obviously, season four is special. Uh, we have an episode on punters, uh, AJ, Pat's been campaigning. We finally caved. So without a doubt, this is the most special season, uh, we've had so far. Pat, I love football. You love football. AJ, you do. But I got to tell you, my passion for football is matched by the people at, at NFL films, right? These are the people that are filming every game, have created every great highlight tape through the years and they truly love football so they've been our partner on Peyton's Places they have all these all these archives of footage that they've had for years and they've been looking for ways to tell the stories about Coffin Corner right about uh, Elvis being a football fan all the different shows that we've done through the years they have the footage and 
with the 100th anniversary of the NFL a few years ago, we've been able to tell the story via Peyton's Places. You're right. I I've had so much fun doing it, watching film with Joe Namath, watching film with Raymond Berry. Like, you know, it it's incredible. So this season was special. Uh, we, we drop on Sunday. We're honoring George Kittle's National Tight Ends Day. We're trying to make it a federal holiday, Pat. We're thinking bigger than just making it, you know, an NFL holiday. We wanted to be right on the same path as Thanksgiving, Halloween. Oh, um, nice. What else did we do? I went to Disney World with Phil Sims. Phil Sims was the first guy to do I'm going to Disney World, yet he never went. So 30-something years later, we gave him his parade at Disney that he deserved. Uh, went to old RFK with Theisman Wright, incredible stadium. Threw snowballs at Eagles fans with Ricky Waters dressed up as Santa Claus. I could go on and on, but I love the game. This has been a fun way to tell the history of the game in kind of an informative, entertaining way. All right, before the boys have their questions for you, let's talk about the Manning cast coming up, Niners-Vikings. Hey, this year you guys have your fucking fastball, but you know that, hey, this year has been the best year yet for that Manning cast. Do you feel that? Because some of the game's not as great, but you and Eli have had – showcase performances this year on the Manning cast. Is it because you've learned from stuff in the past? Are you more relaxed? Why do you think this year's Manning cast have been the way they have been thus far? Well, I appreciate it. You know, kind of the plan was uh, sort of the same philosophy. We, we, uh, we always uh, we started out with four guests in year one, went to three last year. We tried to have three this past season, as I told you, uh, and we've had some late cancellations. We've only had two guests, so it's given more time for Eli to make fun of me, uh, it's certainly given us uh, maybe a little more time to talk football. So maybe that's something we've kind of stumbled onto. But uh, it's been fun. Uh, you know, uh, obviously a lot of things have happened in the game we haven't expected ever since Aaron getting injured in week one tells you don't ever assume anything uh, in the NFL. This should be a great game, though, right? Looking forward to seeing these Niners uh, up close. Uh, look, I'm a Kirk Cousins fan. You know, never count him out. Uh, but uh, be curious to see how Brock Purdy plays coming after a loss, right? We don't know what that's like, right? Maybe we can watch some old Iowa State film, but he simply hasn't know. lost the NFL until uh, last week, so we'll see how he responds. I see him responding well. Yeah, it's awesome this year, and two guesses is good. You drop that down to one if you really have to. Mm -hmm. There's an Iowa Hawkeye in here that said a lot of Iowa State losses, obviously, for Purdy. We are pumped to see kind of the Niners bounce back. Happy it's on Monday night. Go ahead, AJ. 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 Uh, is AJ dead? <laughs> Can he not? Peyton, what you do? I, I mean, he's staring right at me. He looks comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Pat, oh, no. Pat, we'll segue. Just talk about your experience being on Peyton's Places, right? I mean, okay. this is one of your items, right? Well, listen, I understand. Well, everything's crashing. Yeah, hey, totally. I don't know what you did, Peyton. You just killed AJ Hawk. I, I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy. <laughs> but I do appreciate you hosting there and just saying, I will say this. Being a part of a Peyton's Places was one of the coolest evenings of my life. I have never been a part of something so professional, so ridiculous, so absurd, but. and also so informative. And I assume that's every single Peyton's Place. We have Jim Ursay acting. Whoa. Whoa. I don't want to spoil too much, but Jim Irsay <laughs> is, I acted in a scene with Jim Irsay in a Peyton's Places, and Jim Irsay went off script. Did Whoa. he not? Pay? He went off script completely. Hey, but he was on. He was on his game. He had ideas. He had suggestions. <laughs> right? I mean, look, we've been uh, honored to have, like, Jeff Daniels, uh, you know, like, real actors on this show who you know, you kind of think, okay, they will go off script. That's their deal. When Jim's like, I have some ideas, we're like, whoa, where's this going? And he nailed it. I mean, he, he was on his game. Like I said, in McAfee, I mean, I got to tell you, the fact, like, to, to tell people, hey, we like to put you in a coffin in a cemetery, I think most people are like, no, I'm out. I'm good on that. Pat's like, absolutely. I'm in. It's all about telling the story of Punter's Coffin Corner. So you were a gamer and, uh, that's uh, that's episode two. That's dropping in a couple weeks. Oh, so, nice. I, I just learned that. I just learned that. I got a chance to see, uh, you know, some of the early cu uh, cuts of that particular episode. Man, what an honor to be a part of, honestly. What an absolute oh. honor to be a part of. And you know, I mean, yeah, coffin in a cemetery was certainly like the fastest yes I've ever given, but like, <laughs> yeah. you've helped me out immensely. AJ Hawk has joined us back. Wow. AJ! Yeah. Hey, hey, Payton! Wow. 
Uh, we were all very happy for you. We were very confused. It seemed like you were staring at us. You looked handsome. You couldn't hear anything we were saying. What's your question for Peyton, pup? Peyton, so, sorry, I missed a little bit. They've been throttling my internet for a while now, so I, I apologize. I'm, I'm trying to trying to figure that thing out. But, I, I mean, you and Eli on Monday nights, that's, that's how I primarily watch the games now. I, I love what you guys are doing. I love when you guys go back and forth. Obviously, I love the, the primary crew as well on ESPN doing their <laughs> thing with Joe and Troy. They're, those guys are amazing. But it's really fun to watch you and Eli go back and forth. Have you guys – have you found – have you guys gotten closer from doing this? Like, I know – with how much you guys mess with each other and make fun of each other, that's what you know you're close when you can do that, especially on a national stage. Has this brought your, your family closer? You know, it's, it's funny you ask that, AJ, because, you know, when Eli and I were both playing, uh, you, you know, we talked on uh, Fridays before the game, uh, you know, how's practice been, you know, what's the game plan, what do the Cowboys look like? And then we talked Sunday night after the game, oftentimes on the bus, Right, if we both had road games, right, we'd be on the bus at the same time, and I'd get them. Hey, saw you once. Saw it was a late drive. What coverage were they playing? And you know, I used to cherish those conversations. And then those few years, you know, kind of uh, that I stopped playing while he was playing, didn't have that same uh, rhythm as far as you know keeping up with each other. And then you know, our first few years when we were both uh, you know out of football. I'm in Denver. He's in New York. We weren't talking as much. So doing this, there's no doubt, AJ, it's kept us close. We have our routine. We leave a lot of voice memos. As you know, I do a lot of us and you knows. You know, Eli saves those 35-minute uh, voice memos breaking down the Packers' defense. But it's been fun to work with him, fun to do this with him. And uh, I definitely see it that way, that it, it has kept us close because we have something to do each week together. Yeah, they ran one of those voice memos uh, last week, and boy, you really got some good shit out there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, between that and the fat head with, you know, the, the non-favorable forehead proportions, I thought those were kind of, you know, kind of cheap shots, Pat, kind of below the belt, right? I mean, fair game, thick skin, the fat head was just not accurate proportions, and I actually do say some meaningful things on those voice memos. The fact that he played one with a lot of us and you knows, you know, it's payback time. It's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. excited for that. Uh, you know, um, no, I'm not going to dive into it. You are awesome at payback time, I will say. That, yeah, that, is, that is something throughout the history, uh, I think, of football that has been there. Speaking of football, Tom Brady has his podcast every Monday on Sirius XM Mad Dog Radio, and he spoke to Jim Gray about the state of football. I'd like to play this clip for you and then get your thoughts afterwards because I assume they're pretty similar. Go ahead, Foxy. There's so many different violations in football. I would actually like to see less violations called. You know, focus on the important ones and let some other things go. I saw DK Metcalf got penalized for unnecessary roughness. He's, you know, it would. I don't know whether it's unnecessary or not, but all I know is the defender's got every right to, you know, push back on DK, but he doesn't do it. So DK throws him on the ground. They throw a flag. I'm like, I don't understand what the flag is. This is football. This is not... Yeah. This is not, you know, this yeah. is not, you know, this isn't touch football. This is real football. And I think the physicality, which people really enjoy, I certainly enjoyed. I, I love that physical element of the sport. I don't think we should ever lose that. And I think that we are, you know, there's so many people that are, you know, want it less and less physical. It's a, it's it's more like flag football, which is going to be in the Olympics in 2028, you know, which maybe – Football goes to flag football over a period of time. And I don't think fans will like that that much. Then everyone should stop bitching about, you know, unnecessary roughness calls. Now, he's an old guy yelling at a cloud on his $6 million yacht. It feels like people could paint that image. But I do feel there's a lot of legends around football that are worried about the football changing and losing what football is. Do you fall in line with that? Or, or is there a worry potentially about what the future of the game looks like? Yeah, you know, um, Look, I'm still a fan of the game. I, you know, I've always been hesitant to, to be one of those that back when I played, you know, this is how it was, right? I, I, you know, I pay respect to the people that played before me. I mean, I still say Dan Marino's 48 touchdowns in 84 back when every play full, you know, holding pass interference every play, how he gets 48 touchdowns then, I don't know. So, uh, you know, Look, the game adapts, the game adjusts, but, you know, look, uh, I think it's still a great game. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody wants to see a ton of penalties 
out there, you know, throughout the entire game, right? Nobody kind of loved seeing the Super Bowl sort of being decided on that, you know, controversial, you know, pass interference call. So you love for the game to be played on the field. Uh, but, like, I'm still a fan of the game. I was honored to play during my window. Different players, different rules, you know, different times. I, st- I still think it's great. You know, Tom, uh, you know, certainly, you know, he and Jim and Larry uh, have a powwow every single week. I've been on that show. I've been honored to be asked. Uh, you know, I don't know how Tom, you know, does he fly Delta to get to the yacht? Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Uh, you know, is there a direct Delta flight, you know, into the Bahamas, you know, they can get on the yacht. Uh, I was on a Delta flight, uh, the other night I flew back from Hawaii. My plane got canceled. Flight got canceled. I was in 36 F. Has Tom sat in 36 F on a Delta flight? What do you think, AJ? (laughs) (laughs) I'd say not in about 30 years, probably, Pete. Uh, Put me in an exit row, Pat, uh, which was great (laughs) for leg room, but I swear the door was open. It was... (laughs) Cold as I've ever been. I've played cold weather games, right? I've been in Green Bay, played in New England, and I, I, the, I asked the flight attendant, I'm like, is there any, like, is there a, like a warmer blanket? She was so disappointed that I was complaining about being cold. She, she like, wouldn't give me a blanket. And I was like, I, I'm just, I, it's freezing, ma'am. And so I let her down. <laughs> anyway, I roughed it through in uh, 36F and, and made it to uh, made it to my destination. Always going to be tough, you know. That's wow. old school football. Yeah, that's right. Thirty yeah. six F. Right. First of all, I couldn't even imagine thirty six E just being like, is that? That's fucking Peyton man. Hold on. <laughs> I had. I'm not going to lie. I had. I had a sleep mask on. I kind of put it on my face when I you know got up to use the restroom, and when I walked off the plane, I put that blanket that didn't do any good over my face to get out into the uh, terminal. So. I made some audibles to, to make it through. That's hilarious. You're a legend for doing that. I know you have to go, but we have to ask you about this weekend. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Peyton, huge day on Sunday, obviously, with the premier of Peyton's places, but it's also the third Saturday in October. I mean, this oh, is a big boy. week for all the volunteers out there. How are you feeling about the game, and do you have any stories of you maybe being a little successful against this Alabama team? It's funny. I mean, I can't think of the last time Alabama's beaten us. Uh, you know, we, we obviously took care of business last year. The series has been, you know, so one-sided, you know, since 2022. So um, I'm going to tune in, you know, Saturday. But I, I think I kind of know what's going to happen because we've kind of had we've kind of had our way with them uh, since 2022. Um, golly, it's going to be a dogfight. I mean, Nick Saban, some some reason, it t- uh, I, I think he remembers that game from last year. He re- the pictures of the cigars i was having one as well in the locker room uh it had been a long time since we've had a chance to do that um you know i could i know coach saban's gonna have those guys ready but i also think that coach heupel has challenged our team you know to be known as a really elite team we got to be able to win on the road and we didn't do that last year in athens and in south carolina so this is our first big road test uh it's going to be rocking in tuscaloosa um i look uh Alabama, Tennessee, uh, it's what it's all about. And I was honored to be a part of that rivalry for four years and uh, won three out of the four. Uh, I still have a couple of those cigars, Pat, have those uh, framed. Uh, those, are, those are keepsakes for sure. So uh, uh, I won't be in Tuscaloosa on Saturday. There we go. There's a good shot. Uh, but I'll be uh, pulling hard for the balls. It should be a good one. Yeah, Coach Saban had that picture blasted all around Alabama this week. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, so shout out to you. If Alabama comes out mad, it's because of you. You need to know that. We appreciate you, brother. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, boys. Ladies and Always gentlemen. Good. Peyton's Place is Sunday. Manning Cast Monday. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, Peyton Manning. Thank you, pal. Yeah, I do love the fact that he's like, I I still love football. Yeah. You know, like, Not hey, enough. Tom Tom wants to kind of maybe nip some things in the bud here before that gets going. Doesn't want to change football too much. How do you feel? These guys are still getting hits in the head. I mean, it's just, yeah. mm-hmm. I still love football, basically, is what I was going to do. I appreciate him making time for us, but he is more busy now, I think. Brother, I mean, with every yeah, like he, we're, he's what is whiskey. he not doing? He's, he's doing everything wh- right he's now. He's got a whiskey. He's got a production Why? company. Why? He's got Why? Peyton's places. He's got a Manning cast. Why? He's got obviously he's uh, the coach of his kids' flag football yep. team. Mm-hmm. I mean, he it's and not, he prepares for everything too, right? Like he's not gonna just gonna willy nilly jump into something. Like he's gonna prepare and make sure that he knows exactly what he wants. I got a chance to go golf with him on a golf course down in the south. 
you know, mm -hmm. last year. We all remember that. Yep. Sure. It happened. We actually uh, missed a program because of it. It's mm -hmm. one of those things you get invited to go golf at. Yep. This particular golf course in the South, you're yep. going to go. I think it was in Florida. Was it yeah. Florida? yeah, Florida. A little north, no, north, of Florida. Florida. north of Florida. Where, Florida. Tennessee. What'd you here? shoot? You shoot par? Well, the funny thing about it is I think I'm the first person in the history of that course that's uh, been invited there that did not play a full 36 holes over two days. Ooh. I played 34 because I thought I was given a hint about the second day. Sure. You know, about, hey, you can catch us on the back if you want. Oh. And I said, yeah, that sounds like a hint there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sweet. So then I just, I said, all right, I'm going to do that, you know. Because this place, not everybody's on their phone all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, for the, for the front nine, I'll just sleep in. This is nice. Just sleep in a little bit. Chill. I'll right. be able to be on my phone, do that whole thing. All morning. Yeah. And then Eli Manning came in and said, are you fucking kidding me? I said, what do you mean? What? <laughs> You're gonna, you're just sitting on your, yeah. yeah. Here he said, you're not gonna. I was like, yeah, I'm meeting at ten, right in this what the whole thing. You are disgusting, is what Eli basically said. You're the only human ever, and then like slams the door on me. I'm like, this guy's talking to me like I'm a child. I'm a fucking adult. Either. Okay, <laughs> don't be talking to me. But he was so disappointed. I get out there, hole three, I start really heating up. Really heating up. And then about hole four, it really got cold. Uh, you know sure. what I mean? Uh, then it really cold that second day. That's golf. Yeah, that's golf. I mean, but in that particular golf course, uh, when I was lucky enough to play on it with him, I traveled with him back to Indy afterwards because he had an event going on here in Indianapolis, and he was hosting it. And the entire flight, you know, I was like, okay, here we go. Probably get a chance to chit-chat, bullshit or whatever. No, no. He was reading the he, he was reading the script for what he was uh, going to say, the outline of what he was going to say, memorizing. That was like an hour and a half flight. And then as soon as he got down, handshake, how you doing? There was like three people waiting for him there. Need to go through this, need to go through this. It was like, God damn, this dude never stops. And then you think about this Peyton's Places. For this season, we have a, uh, we actually have a trailer for it. This dude is, and he can run it without sound, I think, like everywhere. We're talking about everywhere shooting stuff. Here's he, he is with Mark Cuban, uh, uh, figuring out the original phones, I think, in a stadium. Sims down in Disney. This is all tra he has to travel to all these. Here's San Francisco. Obviously, support your local. Here's in Indianapolis. He was here. He has a whiskey that he goes to like individual liquor stores. It's just like the guy's a fucking machine. Yeah. It is so impressive. I have no idea how he's able to keep it up, but some people are just built different. And then all the big events in Colorado. Like he's he was at the Nuggets finals games for, for everything. I believe he was at the Avalanche games when they were winning Stanley Cups. Like the guy just doesn't stop. He's a machine. Yeah, it's awesome. He loves Colorado. Loves it out there, dude. Yeah. Do you, do you well, think this is like he'll ever grow tired of this? And is this enough of a football fix and whatever? I know he's living his best life. Can we will we ever see Peyton back in a football building coaching? Front office, GM. I think he's owner. I think ownership is what always the conversation's been, that the Mannings are going to try to be an owner of a team. Now, will they be able to get enough money to own an NFL franchise with how the franchises are all going right now where it's like six, seven billion, eight billion? We assume that they will, and it feels like that's what he's working towards to try to get. I think he's going to have to be in a position to run shit like I don't think there's any So like Jerry, if so if he gets an ownership, like so Jerry Jones is owner, GM. That's what yeah. I think that's what that's you kind it. of expect. I think that that's what it is for like Omaha. You know, yeah. like Omaha has shows about everything. They're involved in everything. Them and NFL films are involved in fucking everything pretty much, if you kind of look behind the curtain. And it's like, yeah, Peyton's in on everything. It's not like I have to see everything. It's like he wants to be involved in to your point about the football fix, I think it's not just the football fix. I think it's the busy fix. Like, whenever he was playing, it was he was doing something at all fucking times. Like, during the punt period, I've talked about this, he's running sprints. Like, normally the punt period is when offense and defense are kind of getting a little break, doing some water, going through some stuff, getting ready for that. He's running sprints back and forth the entire time. Like, a scared, a scared to death to stop from doing something. And as soon as practice is over, okay, we're getting extra reps over here. Then as soon as that's over, I'm getting food, but this is for a minute and a half. I got to go watch film on third. It's like, and then he gets home, home, you know, and then he has the yeah. theater built off his fucking kitchen, near his bedroom so that he is mm -hmm. watching film in his theater. And then Clyde Christensen, the quarterback coach, talks about, I'd get a call at 2 a.m. and I'm expected to have the fucking answer. Like, yeah. Hey, I just saw something, third and six, that this team's running. Why do you think they're doing that? And Clyde's like, I'm in bed, right? right? <laughs> what team are you even talking about? So it's like, I think he's just always been busy. I think he's always been active. And it's like, if 
if he wasn't, I, I think that is the bigger thing. But yes, football, I think, is also a massive piece of it. That's why the Manning cast probably works in perfectly, because he's talking to coaches, he's watching film, mm -hmm. he's game planning, and whenever he's watching the game unfold, you can tell that he had a plan for this team in his eyes yeah. <laughs> on what they should be doing. And if they're not doing that, it's always like, why are we not taking a shot? Why, like, let's let's go ahead and do this. And if they're not acting how we thought they were going to from his preparation. So I think he gets his football fix, but I think the bigger thing is like, needs to be busy. Like needs to be a part of something, growing something. And if he's not, I, I assume he'll just fucking bust. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the way he's wired. And I don't, like, that's why he was so, so successful in the NFL on top of, like, all the God-given ability and traits he had. But, like, I don't think that's something you can really ever turn off. Like, all these guys who are super successful, like, you never hear them just being like, oh, you know, he... Pause. One second. What was that? What's going on here? I don't know. Connor was making a weird face, and I was admiring his nice... His beard looks really nice, like, trimmed up. Ty, what, what did you... I, don't, I didn't hear anything that you neither, alluded to. Neither, well, I didn't definitely didn't allude to anything that would have some snide, snarky comment, no. you know, be a, a rebuttal to... I was just saying how Peyton can't turn off what, you know, it, how he is. AJ giggled I when, know what it when was. you said yep. Peyton was going to bust. Yep. I don't think I giggled. You could run... You it. definitely... That doesn't sound like me. Is he telling on you? I mean, how um, old are you, for Christ's sake? Yeah. Con man, no, Con made me like, Connor's face is what did it. it oh, so I, so I look so funny to you, huh? I'm a clown? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Dude. AJ, what's your problem, dude? I saw your tweet. What's your problem? You had your, first, your, you had your first tweet in like 10 years today. That was sweet. Yeah. I don't, I've been pretty active. I don't know. <laughs> you, you were locked out <laughs> for like the last two weeks. You didn't even know how to yeah. get on there. So I, I got know. back. I yeah. made it back. Yeah, you're back and you made an announcement. I expect to see lots of classy signs in the crowd. This is this guy's first tweet in like a year. Period. Period. That's all it is. No. With the graphic, I mean, really explaining things. Ohio State's playing Penn State, you know. Uh, so. What I, do you mean? I'm just promoting the show. Promoting yeah, the program. We appreciate that. Yep. Thank you, AJ. Yeah, AJ. Joining us now is a man who is uh, back on the football field, and it's great to see. I don't know if he had a cowboy collar, but it did look like he was a little bit more jacked Gosh, up yeah. top. Mm -hmm. He has an incredible golf game, obviously. We've chit-chatted about it. Incredible story. Has been a fantastic leader of the Buffalo Bills for a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the program, all pro po, Jordan Poyer. Yeah. What's up, boys? Yeah. What's up, guys? Hey. Appreciate y'all for having me on, man. Were you wearing you something it. different this week? Did you look different, or was it just you? Just nah, like you know, it's just me. You know what I'm saying? It's just me. <laughs> I'm out there. You know what I mean, my neck a little bigger this year, so you know we just playing a little bigger. Okay, little well bigger. I, I respect it because I was watching. I was like, <laughs> damn, Poirier looks bigger right now, and now that, it was more yoked yeah. than uh, anything. Like for me, when I get bigger, the guy's fatter. For you, bigger, it's more jocked. <laughs> Has that been a change? Are you playing at a different body weight this year? Yeah, I'm playing uh, probably about five to six pounds a little heavier. Um, you know, I feel I feel stronger. Feel uh, feel great, man. It's uh, year eleven, and just. You know, going through it's the middle of the season right now, the ups and downs, the the, the fronts, the backs, but uh, we're grinding. We're excited for opportunity this weekend in, uh, in New England. I know you got some Pats fans in there, so only oh, yeah. one, only one. But he's trying to get the first pick of the draft, so he's actually pulling for you <laughs> yep. this week, uh, which is a much different yeah. get New England Patriot. Uh, before we talk about next week, let's talk about last week. So you guys had a pass interference to end that game. Uh, Giants got fucked. What are your thoughts <laughs> on the game with the New York Giants, and uh, what a battle in prime time? <laughs> I mean, what a crazy game. Uh, you know, Tyron came in and did what he had to do to keep the game close and uh, came down to the last play. Taron Johnson made a hell of a play. Um, ten out of ten times, I'm not calling that flag at all. So, um, we, you know, we won the game on the last play, and that's what it is. You know, the game comes down to the last plays most of the, you know, every game, every week. So, uh, you know, we were able to make a play on the last one and, and, and sneak away with the victory. And uh, like I said, we're excited about this weekend. Uh, another opportunity going to New England, uh, division rivals. So uh, we don't like them. They don't like us. So we're excited about it. So is it like Wednesdays after field goal or punt period, like period two is like, here's how we pass interfere and not get called? <laughs> oh. Is that what happens? I don't know. I don't I'm, not, know I'm, not going in, I'm not going into that argument right there. <laughs> I'm joking. I do, appreciate, <laughs> I do appreciate the fact, though, that that happened. It happens in every game. But whenever it's the last yeah. play, it's going to get spotlighted, obviously. That Absolutely. Giants team played you guys a lot tougher. You get out of there with a win, though. Who cares? Let's move along, right? That's the mindset? I mean, this is the NFL. Uh, I mean, you guys have played you know, a long time, and anytime you can win in, the, in, in any week, you know, it's huge. It doesn't matter who's out there playing, a quarterback, who's out there playing. Um, this is the NFL. Uh, each week presents its own tasks, and you got to come in ready to play. And uh, to get out of any week with a win, you always it's always a lot better to win and, and have to learn from a win than have to learn from a loss. So 
um, you know, we got we, we, we got the win, and we're like I said, we're excited about the opportunity this weekend. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, how big of a deal is it for you guys, obviously, to have Vaughn Miller back in the lineup the last few weeks and what he's able to bring to that team? And I'm sure as the season goes, he's going to get stronger and stronger and feel better. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, man. Just his leadership, his presence, um, you know, everything about – who he is as a person, as a player, um, you know, he brings so much energy to the back, to, to our defense, um, you know, week in, week out. So many new ideas, so many, you know, just seeing him coach the younger guys, Greg and AJ, and seeing, you know, how their game is even leveled up since since Vaughn's been here. So, um, you know, such a huge asset to our team, not even just on the field, but off the field, too. Just his, his leadership abilities, his ability to connect with the guys on, in the locker room. And so it's huge having him back on the field. And, uh, you know, we're excited to continue to see him him, him get, get back on it. A lot of doubters this year, man, doesn't it? Do you guys recognize that or realize that? Like in years past, outside the building, everybody was Buffalo Bills are going to go win it all. This year, you beat the Giants, but, you know, yeah, you do that. Really. You lose, you know, there's a lot of yeah. that. Do you guys hear that or how do you try? You know, you know that's that's for y'all to talk about. You know, I, I have real. my personal opinions on it, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you know, we, got it. we come in here, we work, and none of that outside stuff really even matters. It's just he say, she say. Each week is different. You know, and so you got to be able to have the mindset to be able to block all that. I know it's cliche, but really, at the end of the day, it literally doesn't matter. So you know, everybody can go out there and say this, that, or whatever about this team or that team or whatever. But, you know, what we do in here is what's important. And, uh, you know, we're just continuing to, 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 you know, Kaizen. Coach always talks about the, the, the phrase Kaizen, just continuous growth continuous just you know evolution and uh you know that's what we're doing that outside noise that outside noise i've been here seven years and i've heard that outside noise for seven years since i've been here so it hasn't changed and you know we just continue to work and continue to do what we do and uh ignore the noise how's the team feel this year obviously we talk about vaughn being back but how's the rest of the culture in there Nah, we're great, man. Like I said, this team has been together for a long time. We've been through the, we've been through hell and back, literally. Um, and and we, we've we've had a lot of you know a lot of things that happened in the past couple of years that have been able to build a callus kind of for our football team and, and be able to handle the ups and downs um, through a game, through a season. And so you know, I, I, we're we're a very strong football team, and, and we got a lot of work to do. Um, I think any team would say that at this point of the season, we got a lot of work to do. But uh, I believe we got the, one of the best quarterbacks in the game. We got the best, one of the best wide receivers in the game. We got one of the best defenses in the game. So we come ready to play each week. You know, there's no reason why we shouldn't be in each and every game being able to win. You talk about the calluses and being to hell and back. Like last year, the amount of adversity off the field for your team was absurd. On the field as well with Tamar Ham, Damian Harris situation. I mean, that was, I, I assume, like watching at home, watching you guys. Like obviously we felt for Damian Harris, but at the same time it was like, this Buffalo Bills team, like, why is it always a super scary situation? What was the conversations like? When did you guys potentially know that it wasn't as serious as what you all experienced, obviously, a year before? Because at home, we were all feeling for you, man. I want to let you know, like, mm -hmm. everybody was very much feeling for you guys. Yeah, it's tough, man. Um, anytime you see anybody, it could be your teammate, somebody on the other team, um, you know, go down and have the ambulance come out on the field and the stretcher and, you know, it's a long pause in a game where there's, you know, five, ten minutes, doesn't matter. Um, you know, it puts a lot of things in perspective. Uh, you kind of think about a lot of things in that moment. Um, you know, obviously hoping that he's okay, hoping that, you know, his family is okay and, you know, and, you know, and even throughout the game, just, you know, hoping DH is okay throughout the game. Um, you hate to see it. You know, you play such a violent game and it can, you know, that's really what you accept every single time you step out on the football field that that could really happen to you. And so, um, you know, you just got to be able to, you know, be mentally strong when something like that happens, and it's tough. You know, having to go back after seeing somebody get, you know, put on a stretcher and you know, they have to go back out there and, and, and play. You know, that's probably one of the hardest things I think as an athlete, um, for me personally, uh, having to do. Uh, especially when Dehan went down, seeing DH go down last week, um, it's tough. But at the same time, you know, this is part of what we do. This is part of who we are. Um, we didn't, you know, I got word after the game that. You know, it might have been later that night um, that DH was going to be okay. Um, but, yeah, you know, you just pray for him and his family. And, you know, it, that's just it's, – it's, it's really tough. It's really tough to be a part of. Um, and I'm pretty sure you guys have been through it too. It's, it's scary to see. 
scary to feel, um, but that's the reality of the game that we play. Well, I appreciate that answer because everybody at home was like, the Bills, man, this is just, it's heavy. Like, in last year, you guys went through a lot of heavy stuff, and it's hard to win a game, a football game to begin with, let alone a Super Bowl. With everything you guys went through, I'm excited to see your team continue to build and grow because it's not easy whenever you got real shit happening right in front of your face on a regular basis. They showed tomorrow, and it's not, it was, oh, yeah. Yeah. hey, it was watching at home, it was like, this team, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how, but we appreciate the hell out of you guys. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Jordan, I don't know if you've seen this on tape yet or not, um, but I will let you know, Mac Jones will and is not afraid to kick you or hit you in the balls, okay? And I, and I want you to be aware of that. Are, are you prepared for that? Have you been preparing for that? Are you going to wear a cup this week? What Have you noticed any of this? <laughs> no cup this week. I'll definitely be prepared. Um I don't know how to answer that question. Well, wow. Uh, please. Are you? Be a pro, dude. Be a pro. All pro, po. Be a pro. You're representing the NFL right now. Please. Yeah, that's, uh, you be know, prepared. we're excited to play the game. Um, that you are. Excited about the opportunity to go out there and play Mac Jones in his home stadium and uh, and make plays. You know, we're, we're this He is, does uh, this one here. <laughs> hey, when he slides, watch it because he yeah. does the cleats up at second base. Yep. And the cleats up at second base isn't try to take out a knee. He's going dong. Yep. You know what I mean? That's what he goes. That's his move. I don't know if you guys are watching film or not. Head on the swivel. We've seen it. We've seen it. Well, Definitely two heads on the swivel. They're probably, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. You might right. jump over them. Yep. You know what I mean? That's the whole conversation here. Uh, Chuck has a uh, question for you, Joe. Hey, Jordan. Big, big fan. So getting ready for, you know, teams coming in with winning records and, and all that stuff, and now you're playing, I think, the one in five uh, Patriots. Relax. You know, this week, and, and Boston's obviously not real happy about that, but – I know as a coach, getting ready for games like this, you're always worried about, you know, a letdown. Um, not, you know, thinking you're just going to show up, roll the ball out. You know, they're not very good on offense. They got a good defense, but they're one in five. Uh, it is Belichick. Has, has McDermott been different? Are the coaches uh, any different? Has the messaging been different? Do you notice a change, you know, getting ready for, for teams that uh, don't have winning records like the Pats right now? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, we always try to say, you know, each week it presents its own challenges, its own, um, you know, its own stuff. And, and it's always nameless, faceless opponents. Opponents. It doesn't matter, you know, if the team's out there, they're 10-0 and 0, or a team's out there, they're 0-10. At the end of the day, this is the NFL. Um, this is a very well-respected coach and Coach Belichick um, and, and his staff and what they've been able to do over there. We've played them. You know, over since I've been here seven years, that'd be 14 uh, or 12 times uh, in, in seven years since I've been here. So, you know, they know us and we know them. And so, you know, it's going to be one of the – there's no you – know, I've been in this, in this league long enough to understand there's no – you can't take any team. I mean, you saw kind of what happened last week in, in a sense like that. New York Giants came in and, you know, they, they started to feel like they can play with us. And all it takes is just that little bit of confidence to get a team to, to feel like, they, hey, that we can play. And so being able to start fast in games like that, we always try to talk, hey, let's start fast and, and not even let this team feel like they can play with us. But you know, most, of, most of the time, that's – it's not like that. So just being able to handle the ups and downs, the adversity of the game, and going into the game, understanding, look, this is the NFL. They, they got good coaches. They got good players. We got to play with a win. And, uh, you know, that's just that's the mindset that we have going into each and every week. Everybody gets paid out there on that field. People forget paid. that. The yep. year we were 2-14, and 14, nine games, I think, one-score games, where if we just happened to get a ball to bounce our way and we score, all of a sudden it's a much different story. Hey, they snuck into the playoffs, like that whole thing, as opposed to being, oh, this is the worst team in the NFL. That gets forgotten about whenever you talk about wagons and tanking and all this type of shit. It's real. That's why the Giants thing, like, I assume after the game there was a nice sense of relief. Oh, didn't play our best football. Got a dub. Let's move on and let's do what we got to do. Patriots next week is going to be fantastic. Ty has a question for you. Jordan, I understand the next man up mentality, but um, do you and other guys on the defense feel like you kind of have to carry more weight knowing that guys like Tredavious White and Milano, two all pro guys who are unbelievable, are out for the year? Like, is there conversation about that? How, like, you know, again, Next man up, we get it. But, you know, these are two unbelievable dudes. And do you guys feel like, you know, everyone kind of has to pull more weight trying to replace them? Absolutely. And, I mean, there's no no way to replace a guy like Tredavious White or Matt Milano, um, two guys that have made so many plays for us over the last six, seven years they've been out here. And um, two all pros that, you know, like I said, just it's impossible to replace. And so, um, you know, we got good players behind them and uh, players that have played. A um, couple years, you know, Dorian Williams had a good game last week playing his first start. 
And so, but yeah, Mike and I, we talk, um, Taryn and a lot of it and TV, a lot of it comes down to us just being able to over communicate. Um, you know, we might, we might see something and, and think we have the communication down, but being able to just reiterate to whether it's Dorian, whether it's CB, um, reiterate the call, reiterate the, the checks, um, and just, just that extra, just a little bit more, you know? And so, um, it's not anything like putting pressure on, you know, anybody else. It's just continuing to evolve, continue to understand, you know, who we are as a defense, how we got to communicate. And, and then just, like I said, continuing to evolve. Dorian had a hell of a game last week. CB and Dane are very good corners and Kair, very good corners. And as long as we're all playing on the same sheet of music, the same page, look, coach would call a play. Oh. And, uh, you know, we could, we could make the check and the check be wrong. But as long as we're all on the same sheet of music with the wrong check oh. and playing the, playing the same defense, that's, I don't think any, a, whole lot, a whole lot of teams can beat us. If you were designing the sheet of music, what type of music would it be? Oh, we know. Ooh. Country. You wanted to play in Trump's thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Small town. Yeah, Jason yeah. Aldean. Yeah, Jason Aldean. Yeah. What is a small town song? Uh -huh. Yep. It's, it's e minor. <laughs> yep. Yep. Into that. Uh, yep. That's what we thought. No, what is your favorite type of music? Man, I like Spanish music. Um, I like Ozuna. Uh, hey. I like, uh, starting to like this, uh, this, this, this girl named Aniko. You guys gotta listen to her. Her name's Aniko. Oh, yeah. She's She's like an indie, indie, uh, indie writer, indie song artist. Um, she's very, I like listening to her. And I started playing the handpan. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the handpan, but uh, it's a really cool instrument instrument that I, I found out in Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah, it's it, look it up. It's fun. It's fun. It's a fun instrument to play. I'll have to send you guys a video. Is that what it looks like? Or is it a drum? It's a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a pan. It's got uh, little notes around the side of it. It's called a handpan. You play it, you play around it. Oh, really yeah. Cool. I've it's seen cool. it in the Caribbean, right? This is a... Uh... It might be in the Caribbean. It like might be steel in the drum. It looks like a steel drum. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, an yeah. inverted steel drum. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's Absolutely. it sound like? It uh, sounds like real melodies, real music. Is that Gary Vee on the right? What are, are you going? It yeah, might Gary Vee. Is that Gary Vee on the right? <laughs> is that? No, Hold on. Mike Vee. I know that guy on the left, though. He, uh, I, I, those are, that's the guy I, I listen to and I take lessons from. That's your trainer? What? We just Googled him. No, that's not like he has he does YouTube videos on YouTube and he and he has uh still he has ways to learn how to play. It's like Mike Posner. Thing. Yeah, so what songs are we it does kind of have a little Posner feel. He'll be buried in Detroit where the stupid Red Wings are from. The whenever you <laughs> they beat the Pens last night. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Hey, whenever you what are we playing this thing? We're just playing alongside. To be honest, I'm just trying to learn how to play it. Um there's is a hundred songs you could play. I don't know how. I don't know music. Like hot I, cross I buns, or what are we playing? Play the hit? Yeah, yeah, I can, like, play, can I play, play the hot cross buns. Like that's, you know, I'm just trying to learn the melodies, the the, the tones. I've had it for about two months now. Oh, I got it at the beginning of the season. It's something that I kind of do when I go home, trying to learn how to play it. Can you uh, please figure out how to play our open? Yeah, oh, with this hand pan. Absolutely. That would Absolutely. be. Next time I come on, I'll, I'll bring it. For next time I come on, I'll bring it. I'll play it. I'll play it. I'll play it. Yes. All right, I will. Hey, I, will. Yes. I will. I might not be that great, but like I'm, gonna, I'll, I'll play y'all some. We'll just mute it. You know what I mean? We'll just do the video yeah, and then we'll yeah. play the <laughs> sound. No, it'll be great. It'll be great. All right, last question here for you. We can't thank you enough for your time from Connor. Yeah, Jordan. Obviously, uh, we can all agree England sucks. Uh, <laughs> what specifically? England's awesome, by the way. Well, just in general, though, for the, for this conversation, speaking fish and chips, driving on the wrong side of the road, they just suck. We, we, right, we can all agree on that. No, nah. dude. I don't all right, know. I'll I'll well, ride this plane on my own then. I think England sucks. Oh, okay. Wow. How? Geez. What were the challenges Jeez. over there in London? Because obviously we all know that wasn't you know the Buffalo Bills team completely. It was a much different uh, you know team throughout the game, and you guys proved uh, uh, once again that you guys are top of the league. But what were the challenges over there? What's the travel like going over? And did you do high knees on the plane like Russell Wilson when Denver flew over last year? Not do no high knees on the plane. Uh, we try to sleep as much as we can on the plane. We got out there Friday morning. Um, you know, it was uh, just to say, London is not one of my favorite places to play the game of football. Um, I would, uh, I would have rather played the game at home. Uh, they kind of took a home game away from us. Oh no! Uh, Whoa! I what? didn't know that from Buffalo. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, it's fine, but uh, it's fine. Bond was right. That turf sucked. Yeah, I'm just sorry it wasn't. And my whole idea, my whole in psyche, the moment I heard that we were going to London to play, I'm thinking we were playing on that nice soccer grass. So since whenever the schedule came out, I'm thinking we were playing on Messi's soccer grass out there. I don't know, like some nice grass this long, you know, just we get out there. Probably, probably that Wednesday or that Tuesday or Wednesday, I find out we're playing on turf and it just, I'm like, it's like we're going to London to play on turf. 
It almost doesn't even make sense because they can roll the gra- they can roll the where we played at a Tottenham, they have grass underneath that turf. So they roll the turf out for us to play on it. It made no sense to me. Whatever. I love that. Hey, did you hear what happened? The World Cup was like, hey, NFL teams, you need to put grass down if we're going to play. And the NFL tells the England teams, hey, you need to put some hard ass turf out there (laughs) if we're going to come play. That's quite a different, that's quite a different opinion there. It doesn't make make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But it is what it is, you know? It ain't what it ain't. So just move on. Keep going. And it always will be until it's not. So did you get to see England at all or no? Yeah, well, my wife was out there, went to, went and had some tea. Oh, gross. Tea and some crumpets. Uh, It was a really crazy experiment or experience. Uh, Went to the London Bridge, saw the Big Ben. Um, There's so many people in London. I don't understand how it's just, I mean, it's almost overwhelming the amount of people that are like downtown in London, just walking around, just going to place to place. Oh, it's wow. You didn't enjoy people. London. You didn't enjoy London. England sucks. You say it. You going back it was, soon? It, it, was, it was cool to see. Am I going back? I'm more of a tropical, tropical. Oh, okay. Place. Not going to London. Okay. Turns okay. out. Yeah. yeah. Palm trees. Yeah. Yeah. My I like type beaches. of place. So. Okay. So I can, I can respect that. Whenever we walked around, though. When I walked around, I was just trying to talk to people. You know, I wanted to hear the accent, first of all. I wanted to hear how maybe a word would pop up that I didn't know sounded awesome, like controversy. For yeah. mm-hmm. As soon as I heard, like, English people say that, I'm like, that's how I'm saying controversy forever. Like, as soon as you – so I'm trying to get – everybody over there had a great personality. Yes. Everybody over there had a I great personality. And I don't know if there was actually funny or just as funny as the way they said it. So, like, <laughs> I enjoyed being there a lot. We lost, though. I mean, Blake Blake yeah. Bortles, the boat, punted a ball into the stands in our face after running one in. And then we had to wait for their flight to take back. Not everybody loves it, Jordan. Yeah. Not everybody loves yeah. that London game, I don't I see, think. I can see why. I can see why. I can definitely see why. But uh, experience, to say the least, uh, super blessed to be able to go out there and, and, and be able to experience that. But not something that I'm not a place I'm just going to go on in my off time uh, when I have some free time. All right. They said expansion draft coming. You're right in line to be a part of the London yeah. Destroyers. That's right. Uh-oh. Yeah. Whatever it is. Destroyers. I don't know about that one. I don't uh-huh. know about that one. Hey, have an incredible season. We appreciate you joining Thank us. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I appreciate you. Can't wait to hear the man pad. The man pan. Man pan. Man pan. Yeah. Next time. Man pan. Man pan. Man pan. You, do you play guitar or any other instruments? No, I don't play guitar. I don't play guitar. I tried to learn how to play the uh, the harmonica. It's really oh. tough. Um, but I've been playing the hand pan for about about two months. Getting better. Next time I come on, I'll bring it to you guys. I yeah. keep having A-Rod on. I love listening to A-Rod. Oh, we yeah. Talk about real stuff. Yeah. Man. So keep having him come on here. <laughs> waking these people yeah. up. Hell yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I don't think he wants a partner. I don't think I know what you're talking about. That debate. Wake him up. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you? What he talks about. Tell him, Jordan. You talk scheme and stuff. You know, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Tell him, Jordan. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining us as well. And I'm happy to hear you're a fan because I've heard from a lot of people they are not. Oh. Yeah. So uh, it's great to hear that you're on the side of his conversations because, uh, I mean, it's phenomenal. It, it, the, like, I'm not diving into it too much. I will, actually. I don't know enough about that world to do a full conversation about it. But I do know that Tony Fauci, Mm -hmm. Dr. Tony Fauci, (laughs) was the most powerful human on Earth just a few years ago. Oh, yeah. And now on Tuesdays, he's got to sit in his house with his team and be like... What is this fucking asshole football? Player? Yeah. <laughs> what a thing. That's so dumb to but be. But we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it though. We have to we we have to talk about it. And it needs to be continuous conversation yes. for us to talk about for us to continue to evolve oh. as a human as humans. You know, it's not me versus you, it's not this versus that. It's us together figuring this out together, continuing to talk, yeah. continue to learn. Yeah. And it's it, it's a crazy world we live in, boys, but I appreciate you having him on. I definitely continue to support his. No, and also I think the conversation has to happen for the future, you know, for all of us. This isn't a us versus you type thing or you versus us or him versus them or anything like that. It's like we all went through something that was fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's like we hope that it'll never happen again, obviously, forever, because what a wild thing. But there's a chance it will. And Mm -hmm. when it does, we have to remind ourselves of some of the shit that happened. Yeah. Like, we weren't allowed to make eye contact at one point. Uh-huh. Remember, they were saying, don't look at each other in the eyes if you're going to wear glasses. It's like, right. what the fuck is this thing? And it was like, I have no idea. But we all survived. We're here. We did it. Hell yeah. We did it. We made it. We did it. Woo! Lost a lot of great people, though. It was a damn shame. It was terrible. Uh, but you're not one of them. We appreciate the hell out of you. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for Jordan having me Poyer. Yeah. Give that bar more microphone time. <laughs> mm-hmm. I agree. I'll talk about it. 
Yeah, if you don't, it'll get forgotten. And uh, that can't happen. No. But also, like, somehow, everybody's side is right somehow. Yeah, always. Yeah. Mm. Stats. Isn't it? Chat, yeah. If you, if you ignore the denominator, yeah. Well, Artie Smith <laughs> talked about <laughs> – that was early. Yeah, it was. He might have been right. Meryl Hodge. Meryl Hodge might have been right. Meryl Hodge might have been right. That was early. early. So for those that don't know and are just recently introduced to our program, the reason why you have learned about our program <laughs> – is because during COVID, when the world stopped and when sports stopped and everything like that, because of our positioning in Indianapolis and being a self-operated independent business and having just a YouTube page, we were able to maintain our program without missing a day. Mm -hmm. Not a, not a, everybody had to stop at some point. Okay, like New York where most of the media is set up, LA where media is set up, and I guess Connecticut where media is set up, and Florida and everywhere. Everybody had to stop because they were trying to like figure out what was acceptable, what's not acceptable. There was a lot of people that were scared. Obviously, we're not going to work, and it was a very scary time. But for us, like because of Indiana's rules and because of how big our office was, and because we never had access to live sports anyways, or rights to live sports, and we had Zoom calls mostly with people and FaceTimes with people, so it was like, for us, we were able to continue, and uh, we decided to continue, and we made the decision to be the doofuses on the screens for people to pass time with, because we had the capability to do that. Uh, I ate the hottest pepper on earth yep. during right. the office Olympics. McDonald's. Uh, yeah, tried to eat the McDonald's, McDonald's cool. thing. Started a show with AJ. Uh, Tone Diggs was on a treadmill for 24 straight hours <laughs> yep. uh, to see how many. Like So during COVID was when we were pretty much being introduced to a lot of people because we we're basically the only show that was able to go for a bit. And um, we didn't talk about the shit because we tried to be an escape for people. But, like, if you go back through and watch those shows, it was crazy what was happening. Absurd. Through those COVID times. Like, it was absolutely crazy to do that. And we might have to do that at some point if it ever happens again. That's why, like, when Aaron comes on and says his side of it, like, people ask me, why are they giving a platform that has got to spew his stuff? It's like, there was a platform given to a lot of people mm -hmm. to murder mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers because he decided that for him, he did not want to. If he died, that would have been on him. Uh, he decided not to get vaccinated. It was a big conversation. Then he was on our show. So I was giving a platform to a guy that was spewing things and all this stuff. But then now, if you listen to him talk and a lot of the people on his side, they have found information that supports their side from the very beginning now. And they have not forgotten that there's a lot of people saying that they were murderers and terrible for society yep. and other stuff like that. So it's like, I think that is a good thing that comes from Aaron speaking aside, because I think there is a chance that people will forget about all of the shit that was happening during those two, two and a half, how? Yeah, yeah. Two. two. Two years, mm -hmm. pretty much, uh, through life. It was fucking bananas. So I believe we all have to move on because we don't want to look back on terrible times. But we also have to remember that, like, the reason why Aaron is bringing this shit up so much is because, like, I got a chance to see a lot of the things that were said about him, not only in the English language, uh, but in like, every language, pretty much, yep. around the world, he took a lot of... He was the face of the people that weren't getting vaccinated, pretty much. And it was like, yep. oh, here we go. And that wasn't just one person that was choosing not to get vaccinated. I think people forget about that, too. Yeah. There was a pretty good amount of people. A lot. That were not necessarily for getting the vaccination, for whatever reason. Now, a lot of smart people were saying, I got vaccinated, right here, mm -hmm. for work. For the WWE had to do it. There's people that didn't, though. And it's like, we have to remember that there's always going to be those sides. And if you don't agree with them, it's okay. And then you just move along. Yeah, keep but you going. have to understand that they exist. Like, that is just a part of life, I think, AJ. Yeah. And, yeah, like, it's a whole, like, broader thing. But, yeah, what are we going to – we got to silence everybody? Like, if you disagree with somebody, they don't deserve to speak? Like, is that how it works? I don't I don't get it. And either way, like, we're at whatever – anybody thinks it feels like they're kind of stuck in that situation and they're not turning their back they're not going to change no matter what no. and it's why like sports are so awesome because like mm -hmm. sports like prove it like hey prove it right now yep. and we're going to learn mm -hmm. we are going to learn mm -hmm. and like the great are going to be and the ones that aren't aren't so there's like a scoring system who's good who's not good who's right who's not right who's doing things the right way who's not doing things the right way there's a score and there's a lot of people that get to see it it gets projected what I've learned, and it's why I don't dabble in that world, is like there's no scoreboard in the politics world. No. So there's never, you have no idea 
You know, like I guess the score no answers. Are there answers or right? Like, is yeah. yeah, I don't know. And will you ever say like, hey, that team's run game better than ours? You know, like, yeah. yeah. Like, well, you, can you ever? You know what I mean? Can you ever? Does that ever get? To, uh, you know, that team's defense. Like, look at all the stats. Like, legitimately, they're mm-hmm. number one against rush, number one against pass. They get to the quarterback more than we do. Like, they are better at that. But I'll tell you what, what we are able to do mm-hmm. on offense is much better than what they're – like, that's why it's hard for me to pay attention to the politics world. But we've been dragged into it, obviously, now with – especially Aaron's reminder mm-hmm. of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, one of the most pol- political things somehow of all time, uh, which was a good thing. But it's like it's hard to get upset about something – that like is never gonna end, it seems like. And there's no game just to figure it out and just sort it and just move along. And then we're all living in it. When people forget that like we actually had the virus, we had COVID nineteen on the show. Like we talked to True. COVID nineteen. So yeah, that was we early. were a little that was very early. First day, right? That was right. Nah, it wasn't first day, but it was maybe really? first first week, maybe end of the end sending people into the week. It was before now, the two COVID weeks. COVID nineteen is the descendant of COVID one. Yeah, COVID one, right. Who real son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. That family, that lineage. That's right. Yeah, we weren't taking it as serious at the beginning as probably. <laughs> I mean, how could have we known? Yeah. They were telling us it was coming. From- yeah, those are those. People. You never know. They are outside. Yeah. I, you know, whatever made people comfortable to do whatever. I, you know, you got to do your thing. The people that are still wearing. You were still going on the show. We didn't coming have together. To. And the, did you guys mask up? No, oh, we're six feet. feet. Yeah. yeah, six feet. We could, six feet. we could yeah. distance. So once you got in the building, you. Yeah. Yeah, we never. For you guys. It, was, it was, I didn't dap up. I, I saw the boys. For mm-hmm. a long time, just never couldn't tap up. Remember, Six we had to have those foot high fives. Yeah, yeah right. bingo, foot high. Oh, and maybe elbow, yeah, elbows, but yep. Mm-hmm. So, like that day when they came <clears throat> down the office and said, "Hey, you guys got uh, all got to go home." Who said that? What day was like that? Who's day? Was at, at Who's day Chuck? When I was at the Bears. Oh, oh, that's what they said. Like so, when it came down, said, "Hey, we got to." You heard rumblings, and then all of a sudden, pack up your stuff, go home, and then we'll we're gonna. But take your computer, take this, and we'll, we'll give you details, further instructions as we as we move along. Mm-hmm. How was that? So you guys like, we didn't. Yeah, pack, Pat, you Pat didn't did pack. that same thing. Yeah, Pat came in and he was. No, like, hey, I everybody. actually. This is. You send everybody home and then. You know, no, he, heavy is the head here. Okay, I will say in certain situations, but I had to read through like the cities. Oh yeah. I had to read through our cities like laws guidelines. and guidelines. We had to get a letter. To we had travel. the waivers. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. we had the mandate or a necessity. Yeah. We were a, ne- a, ne- a ne- necessary. Um, essential workforce, right? Something. Essential. No, it wasn't essential it workforce. Was, we were not essential workforce. That was the. I thought that's what the waiver was. <laughs> no, it said we were a necessary. Because we were I've, news. Because we were new. We were a show that could spread information. Yeah. Uh, to people. Real information. Yeah. I thought it was essential business. I thought that's what it was. Might have been essential business. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, essential workers, maybe essential business. Yeah, essential uh, business. Yeah, there's I don't doctors know. in here, right? I don't remember well, what it was, but I had to read through the whole fucking thing to see what we were able to do, what we weren't able to do. I saw that that was something that we had to get. So it was like there was a lot of things that had to happen, but I thought our office was set up for all the guidelines that they had. Like it was set up for us to be able Anybody to. Anybody ever come check? Yeah, oh yeah. Two mm-hmm. times. Yeah, okay. random, random spot checks. Had to have uh, fire marshal. Had to have paper. No, it wasn't fire marshal. The uh, had to have paper taped yeah. around the building, uh-huh. reminding people to hand sanitizer uh-huh. and wash their hands. Had to be at like I, I forget how many pieces of paper we had to have up, but it was like every corner you had to have one it up. It was heavy concentrated areas in the office. That's where, like where people get together and visible at all times. Yeah. I think it was like yeah. some. There was some sort of had to read through all of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Tim McAfee also was. Was Doing a lot of right. taping of his off and figuring it all out. Crushing. Then there was riots happening while we were in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Buddy, COVID was a wild time. Yes, it Crazy. was. COVID was a wild time. <laughs> Not as wild as it is right now. Everything we do is uh, seemingly being seen by the people that we're chatting about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, Dr. Foch, I apologize. But also, Sorry, some things were said there and that I think he will not forget about uh, quickly, mm-hmm. if I had to guess. Now, let's talk about this evening. Let's make some money tonight. Hell AJ, yeah. you just shook your head. How do you do you, you think about Dr. Fauci sitting in his house wondering <laughs> if what Aaron's gonna say about him? Do you think about it? I do. Um I do sometimes. I, I, a lot of times I will think about that person and their extended family. Like you're like, man, this is our life has really changed over the last three or four years, huh? Yeah, I mean, the reason why I know him most specifically is because he is the owner of one of the worst. Oh, by far. Yeah, and that, but he's not a sports person. 
You know what I mean? His opening pitch is not supposed to be that good. No. It's not that big of a deal. But that is not obviously what he'll go down in history. He was the most powerful person in the world. Yeah. And now he's got to listen to this dumbass. We apologize that that happens, <laughs> but also uh, thankful that Aaron's telling his story. So, mm -hmm. I mean, he's one of the greatest football players of all time. Let's move to football. Whenever you talk, Jordan Poyer, he was pumped about it. He was oh, great. Yeah. How about yeah. he was like, oh, let's yeah. not, before we get out of here, just oh, want to let you yeah. know. I love what you're doing. Thank you for letting Aaron. <laughs> Do what Aaron doesn't have his number. He's going to be finding it and send him a th uh, thank you text. Aaron's like, just get all always, pro. Always knew you were good one guy. Of the good one. So <laughs> it will be Aaron. Will be Aaron, JFK, and and Jordan now. And they his debate team. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. I mean, not JFK. Right, okay. Although, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what you know. Yeah, bring up you know something Jr. Though. Jeez Chuck knows something. Louise. All right, let's go to tonight's game. Jaguars Saints. Jaguars can be found getting two and a half points. I believe Trevor Lawrence will be playing, barring a workout happening before the game that will indicate that he couldn't. So I don't even know what that means, but it seems like the lean is that he is playing. He's getting two and a half take on Derek Carr and the Saints down in one of the most difficult barns in the NFL. Chuck Pagano, you are 5-1 in, in the last six Thursday Night Football games since the beginning of the season. Is that five? Boy, you tell me. Five, man. Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> five. How you doing? Five and one. This evening seems to be a much more difficult decision than maybe of weeks past. How do you feel? What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I mean, it great. is super hard. Right. It is. I'm gonna lie. I mean, a tough game. It's absolutely tough. I'm taking the Jags, Chuck. If that helps you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I wow. thought you said you were blindly following Chuck. I thought I you thought said. I love that. I was going to, but I, I realized I can't blindly follow anybody. Nobody, nobody should do that. Yeah, you're not I a sheep. Respect Chuck, but I do. I like the Jags. So I know are you're banking. You're banking on Trevor playing then, obviously. Yes. I am, but if he's not, old Beathard can sling that thing around too. He's, he's, true, he's two and ten. He's got twelve starts what? in his career, and he's two and ten. Yeah, those are those shitty San Francisco 49ers teams. It's that not, not this San Francisco fault. 49ers team. No, no, no. no. like <laughs> back before what's they his, got when they got his Jimmy title. King. What's his title in back Jacksonville? He's backup quarterback. Backup, and so that <laughs> that's why he's a backup. <laughs> Chuck, this guy, this man played okay. in a Rose Bowl. Okay, and, just, and I, I love the name, and I love the hair. I love you know, dad's a country songwriter i think yes he is what yeah oh he is his uh one of his brothers is a country musician as well nice so country I mean, music royalty there and then we got arm wrestling royalty in chicago this yeah mm -hmm. these backup quarterbacks are connected to folks but yeah. sorry bethard certainly he's dad and maybe a yeah. reason why scoring's down why quarterback play oh, back up across wow. 32 teams oh 32 oh Every God. I mean, it seems like every what? week someone's, you know, out of the lineup. So I don't know. But anyway, you look at, you know, the Saints playing at home. Sorry. Got a really good defense. Excuse me. He's going to beat your fucking ass. This is the I thing AJ sorry. was talking about. I, said, sorry. I dropped my pen. I said, I sorry. Old earlier too. What the hell is this about? He said he wanted to put you in a yeah, home. No, he did. I haven't said anything bad yet. He did say that. that AJ a nice home. Why don't we so I'm that? I was leaning. <laughs> if I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that Trevor Lawrence was going to play and play the entire game, I think they're good enough on defense. They're, they're third against the run. They don't do well against the pass. Um, but Derek Carr in the, in the, in the Saints office, offense has struggled. Put points up, move the ball. Um, I would definitely go, go Jags. But. If I if I knew that, but I I don't know that. Oh, I do no. not know that Trevor Lawrence is gonna, you know, start this game. If he plays and, fin and, fin and finish the game. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And they got. It's just it's a it's a hard one for me. So I'm gonna say that. <laughs> And oh, you're no, going to make a pick. Yeah, you're you going, he hasn't made a pick yet. Yeah, yeah. Wow, well, you might have influenced Holy him. Holy shit! He's oh, five no, and one, and you're influencing him, maybe. No. How many points are we getting if we take the Jags? Two and a half. It's two three. and a half? Is it I'm three now? Two and a half. Two and a half. <clears throat> two and a half or one and a half? One, two and a half. I saw three, three and one. Points back. No, no, you didn't. didn't. You didn't. You just locked. So what are, what are things? Are we locked in this minute or oh, by, sure. on kickoff? So let's say oh, okay. for some reason, <laughs> if okay. we go Jacksonville, AJ, let's say we go Jacksonville. How about this? And then he goes through warm-ups, and then he's not playing. All of a sudden, the line goes to six or seven. Now, I think I thought this line was kind of based off of if he was not playing. I thought was, so too. I'm assuming it's going down to oh. one and a half on the books that are assuming that he is playing. And so if there's no doing. question mark, he was in. Say there's no injury. What do you, what would the line be? Would it be pick him? We don't know. That's why I'm very confused. Probably one. What do you yeah. think, Gump? 
I don't. I don't think the Jags would be dogs if Lawrence was fully healthy. There's I don't no think way. so either. I was yeah. surprised that yeah. they were dogs. I still think this line is wrong. I think the Saints stink. I mean, the last time. Jeez, I, Louise, the Saints defense, don't stink. Though, I think the Jags keep them in I think the That's Jags beat them yeah. with CJ, even if Lawrence doesn't go. Wow. Jeez, Be- Beathard, wow. two and ten. Chuck Anderson, good player. Cam Jordan, <laughs> good player. Pete, Pete Warner, <laughs> Kamara Davis. The Honey Badger. They got good team. I mean, they they're got Lattimore. They're, they've got a really good defense. They're fifth in the league. They don't give up very many points. 16 points a game is all they allow. Yeah. Their offense is atrocious, though. They're 3-3. Three and three. They're coming off a di- – they're, they're in a, like, a must – I'm going I'm going with the Saints. Okay. Okay. Because okay. they, they're, they're in a do-or-die situation. Did you just sell think, yourself there at the end? No, no. I'm just telling you guys. Oh, I'm that? telling you guys. I'm Because I know which way AJ's going. And I'm going the other way. You're telling I'm me. I'm taking the Saints, so I'm trying to convince you On that team. in New Orleans, in that dome, with that crowd, yeah. trumpets, I mean, Trump. 76 trombones, let's go. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Chuck, you're right. And I would follow you blindly. No. You know what I mean? I would. Absolutely. All right, I'll take the Saints. How many linemen? Right. How many old linemen are out for the Saints? Both their tackles. We know that. Both their tackles and then one of their interior, right? Two, no, the, two for the All right, give me the Jags. Give me the Jags. Now that we're talking. Wait a second. Uh, yeah, just, right. They got the trumpets down there. No, just you know, just like Chuck didn't know what the hell he was doing at the beginning of his answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know either. You know what I mean? That's not very good for the people. I know? didn't know either. That was not No, we're seeing it in real time. It's good. We want to know your thought process, Chuck. No, Chuck, that's good. Yeah. What everything you did was great. Yeah. Yes. Actually. Because I think this game is an interesting one. Because not of a, it's a short week, too. So what does that mean for offenses? More basic, right? So defenses can fly around a little bit more. Maybe defense matters more than offenses do. So whenever you think like about Beathard, does it matter? Because are they going to be able to move anyways down there? If Trevor's not at 100%, maybe he's not movable enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, enough. And, and they've got what? Rashid Shaheen. You love Rashid Shaheen. Oh. My God, do I ever. Yeah, you love Remember when he came on the scene last year? Oh, yeah. Out of nowhere? Yeah, he was a dog. Mm -hmm. I think he's the wild card maybe in this one, a special teams return. He's been hot. He's getting a lot of burn at wide receiver, actually. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's got a few touchdowns this year. You're watching a decision game, Michael Thomas. Chris (laughs) Olave's beat up, too. I don't think he's fully healthy, right? Got a toe? No. Really? Saints are banged up. Yeah, Yeah, they they are. are. Is Chuck putting today? Ooh. Oh, no one should ever put. All right, I'm picking the Jags. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Those were Saints balls there. Any of those fall, it was a sign from a Saint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's what I had in my right. mind. There you go. So I'm going with the Jags. But this is, I have no idea. And congrats to both of them being at that level. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's not because they're so terrible. No. It's because I think they're both good. Yeah. I think, I thought, and the line freaks me out too. Like, because in my mind, I start to question what I think. And is it because the recency bias of the Jags just beating the dog shit? out of the Colts, and then before that, two games in London. We just heard Jordan Poyer talk about playing in London. So is this team mentally tough and talented to be like a real a real fucking team? You know what I mean? Like that's a real question for me about the Jacksonville Jaguars. So whenever, you know, they're getting points, it's like, okay, I understand that New Orleans is a incredibly difficult place to play. I've We got boat race down there, and I got a lot of respect for them. But also, the Jags seem right now to be a wagon. Mm-hmm. So I'm going. I'm gonna go with the Jacks. So go. they they've won their last three, right? Yeah. Two in London. Yeah. And then Gardner Gardner gave them four turnovers, right? They earned. Yeah. They earned this. They they took them. Yeah. Yeah. They, bingo. Thank you, AJ. They got a leading tackler in the NFL. They yeah. do. Doug Peterson. C T O T T Y. Yeah. Well, they certainly do. You know why that's a statement? Just... You know why that's a statement? Why? Because teams don't. Oh. Catch the ones they throw you. Yeah. See Toddy. There's people that don't, and then the game goes the other way. You know what this Jags team does? They take advantage of their opportunities. Yes, they mm-hmm. do. Josh Allen gets the quarterback. You don't think that made Gardner Minshew a little bit? Wow. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here's the, here's the deal Walker. on that. Even though they've got linemen down, you got to believe that Dennis Allen, Pete Carmichael Jr., they're going to have wherever 41 is. You know how those guys are chasing – Miles Garrett all over the place, yeah, those two tight ends. Yeah. Awesome. They're going to make sure because he's got eight sacks and they've got 12 as a team. Jack so we're talking so they, got one, they got one guy because – what's his name? Trayvon Walker, yeah. uh-huh. their number one overall pick. Mm-hmm. He's got like four in the last two years. Is, is this his second year, right? Second yep. year, yep. So he hasn't like 
the number one. He was like the number one guy, not number two. Ah, Aiden Hutchinson was yeah. who they were potentially talking about. Yeah. Not in two different drafts. No, no, no. no. Same, draft. Oh, same, same draft. draft. Same draft. Same yeah. draft. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's run two. Uh, yep. Oh. But that what happened, though, is because of how good he was supposed okay, to be. Okay, so, but That's anyway. Aiden Hutchinson. Coming out party. My, my point is there's one dude for Jacksonville that can get to the quarterback right now unless they pressure and without with the old line and that, I wouldn't be surprised to see them throw a bunch more pressures at him. But it's one dude, so let's take care of forty-one. Okay. Forty-one cannot wreck the game. Did you hear what AJ just said though? This is like how AJ is when he's playing cards. He's like with his teammate. Boom! The best thing ever is going to happen, and then he's going to try to <laughs> cheat to make it happen. Mm-hmm. He just heard, he just heard about Travon Walker there, and he was like, "It could be his coming out party." Like that's his immediate like, "Hey Pat, we're good here." Yeah. No Remember, let's let's not yeah, forget I'm here. Fully confident in my decision. Always, I will stick with it. Yeah. I, golf next shot and yeah. going in hole. I've yep. never heard a more confident person while competing at something. Best euchre partner of all time. I mean, it's hilarious. Yeah, I like to pump my teammates up. I just like to. I like to. I'm a very positive teammate, especially when it's like cornhole euchre, any of those. Things. Yeah, you guys were down like nine one, I think, and it just mm-hmm. so. Much belief. Still going. Going. Back to the owner for 10. Sure, we dominated that one. I think it ended up 11 1. No, it might have been 13. <laughs> I, think 13. I think I went loner. Yeah, you did. I think no, I went loner. Cheat. Yeah, it was 13 1. And Chuck, your whole thing with Bethard is backups. The Saints O line is backups. It sounds like yeah, you love the Jags. So. Touch the ball. I love every, the they don't touch the ball every play. <laughs> yeah, but all of it feels weird. Bethard yeah. is basically Trevor Lawrence at 85%. That's the, it's the it, Trevor Lawrence okay. at eighty five percent is CJ Beathard. Feels so like it's a biased opinion. It's not. That is a it's real not. knock on like a no, like a hundred not at all. Ty is spot on with this. Like like one hundred minus CJ can't slick. One hundred minus eighty five percent. No 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 no. You know you know you you watched him play in college. Also he's got another he's got an Iowa Hawkeye playing offensive ball ball ball. as well. It, it's an under game. No no no. That's all right. Don't need it. No What if it's a shooting? Then I'll be the happiest putting, guy Chuck, on the right? planet. You're putting, Chuck? Putt. Yeah. Oh, drain it, Chuck. Do you know how to putt? I'm saying with the Jags. No more universe balls. Okay. Nope. All right. Okay. Saints have been outscored by Christian McCaffrey and Raheem Mostart this year. Oh, what was it? Holy shit. Oh. Well, a lot of teams that have been. Etienne. That's the list tonight. I'm staying with the Jags. Chuck, I, I appreciate you going with the Saints and being 5-1. and one. Yeah. So, yeah. let's remember that. We're going to learn a lot about both these teams uh, tonight, aren't we? Oh, yeah. No, it's going to be a poopy game. It's going to go under, and we have no idea. I don't like that. I don't like it either. That's why I tried to say it sucs, but I don't Kirk- want to be the one to say it. Phil- Kirk- Phillies are playing ball tonight. Are they? Oh, Five yeah. o'clock. It's not in Philadelphia, though, right? No, no. in Arizona. No. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll catch them. Yeah, two o'clock game in Arizona. <laughs> Arizona pretty sweet. <laughs> Atmosphere is pretty cool too, though. What's that, AJ? What's that? That's your squad. What do you mean? Why do you have that weird look on your face? Uh, you know, a p- part of my squad is their fan base. Like, yeah. I right. like the nine sure. on the diamond, and then I like the forty thousand strong or whatever the hell sure. it is around them. That's my team. That's my team. So, now I assume they'll invade. Where are they going? Arizona. Arizona. It's on yep. before the football game. Yep. So D backs do have a pool in the outfield. So mm-hmm. a couple of ooh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, exactly. they jumped in it after they won. I did see that. Yeah. One guy must bust a head off the oh, list. Yes, he did. Yeah. He was late to the pool. Yeah, For sure. Let's go to the putting green. You go, Chuck. Yesterday, we watched Darius J. Butler get beat down by this particular green. Today, all Chuck Pagano has to do out of those seven balls yep. is make three of them. Okay. Just if three? He, he's a he, club champion. I know, but this is a tough green. Yeah. It's yeah. a tough green. If he's able to make three out of these seven, we'll give 25 people $500. Now, Coach Chuck Pagano has... Spent a lot of his life here post football, uh, football coaching, golfing. Mm-hmm. He is a damn good golfer, Connor. Yeah, too good, some would say. AJ, club champion in his home club. That's a distinguished That's a title. Big deal. Yeah. People like yeah, people take a lot of pride in that, Chuck. Oh, you should yeah. be proud. He has a parking spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Club what? champion has a parking spot, doesn't he? Not in that age uh, bracket. That's true. That's just the truth of there's it. There's no parking spot for the club champion. He's looked up at them. He makes Tina pick him up. Nope. Why not? What's what, the deal? What do you get? What, what, we, what's that all about? What do you get? What do you win? Chuck, what shoes are those? Those are sweet. Those are sweet shoes. What do you get as club champion? You got to go to the mic, though. Pat on the back and a walker. This is, this is two, AJ. Oh, what, we're not, I'm not playing that compliment. game. I just want to chat. <laughs> what did you win? Do you win a cup? What do you win? Some credit and pro shop. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. That's sick. Get you, mock, get you a mock turtle? 50 yeah. bucks. Respect. Yeah. New golf glove. 
This is my type of club. Yeah. yeah. Stay humble, Jamie. Exactly. <laughs> Stay humble. Good for that. Place. Two times back to the mic. Both times have been warranted. Mm-hmm. What? I can't hear you. What? Yeah. He was talking shit to somebody. I think he it was, was you, AJ. Uh-oh. I, mean, oh, I, I oh. wish I could hear. Oh, okay. He's going back to the mic now two times now. Go, Chuck. There we go. Two Chuck. times. Here you go, Chuck. Not again. But he's not going to do it again because you know what he is nope. going to do? He's going to bury three of these putts. And when he does, 25 people will win $500. Whoa. Will retweet this post. Say something nice to somebody. And put the most efficient way to pay them in the same reply. Chuck. Club champion, Jesus one nothing, Christ. 0 for 1, hey, off the green, in stroke. the sand trap. Confident stroke. What we the like hell it. was that? That was a confident stroke. It was. Really, one after it. He will have to go three of the next yep. six. And shot, rolls it. Wow. Oh. A man's a gopher. You know what he was doing? That first one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Reading? Yeah, six no, bagging. That was on purpose. That was Playing a, possum. He said, are you fucking joking? Oh. 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 Maybe getting too cocky. Must go two of the next four here for 25 people to win $500. That's tough. Chuck Pagano, uh, roll, oh, roll. Uh oh. What's the best score you've ever shot on, on eighteen? I can't hear you. Fifty-five. What? Eighty. 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 Oh. Club champion okay. at eighty. Okay. This club stinks. Like, jeez. Jeez. Kidding me? What is your to problem? win a to win a club championship? They, they, they got Play with handicaps. the handy. Let's, let's fly Foxy out there tomorrow and take that title away. Yeah, we got good we pro go. shop cred. Hey, yeah. listen, so I won low net, so it was <laughs> handicap involved. Yeah. So it's even higher than 80. No. No. No, he shot My 80. low score of all time, legit, What's your playing hand? my own ball was an 80. 80. What's okay. your handicap? It got down to 12 this summer. Oh, okay. Pretty good. So that's a good handicap to have if you're playing with strokes. Yeah. I have that one. I, I, I've great, had that one. Great one. I don't have it now, but I've had that one. Do you take them on par threes? You take a stroke on par three? Yeah, me too. Fucking right. Yeah, yeah. yeah people <laughs> judge us. People judge us. I don't want. That's not my fault. I don't make the rules. If it's one of the 12 hardest holes, yeah, you're yeah, getting Yeah, you're right the holes. Tell that's the right. golf person. That's how it works. I think it was Pete Dye. Yeah, exactly. You tell me. Peter. All you got to do is two of the next three, though, here, Chuck. 25 people, $500. Ooh. Tracking. Okay! Oh, Chuck, go. Go. Chuck, go. Chuck, go. Chuck, you're on a 12 handicap. Okay. Come on, Chuck. Come 12 on. handicap. One of the next Yesterday, two. Yesterday, D-Butt went what? He went to uh, 12. Yep, there this it is. It's a tough green that Chuck is mastering. If he makes this, 25 wow. dollars yeah. $500. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. Everybody have an incredible CFO, Phil. Paying 25 people $500 is always a fun task. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, having to punch in the names in all these apps. But please, all you have to do is retweet the post, say something nice to somebody, and put the most efficient way to pay you so that whether it's on Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, they have to type out your entire name on there, Mm -hmm. send it out, call call the platform, say, hey, we got to... We got to send a, a lot of money out here quickly. Uh-huh. Then they have to approve it. Yep. Then we have to get it all in there. Easy process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, super, Phil. Super easy process. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You know, they make it easy to give away money, but we're thankful to do it because all of you that watch this show deserve to win something for allowing us to do this for a living. What a Thursday. Chuck, we really appreciate hey, that. Man, Chuck, you. love being here. You picked the Saints this yeah. evening. Tone Diggs on Hammer. Dad. Dad. I assume you'll be making your pick. Yeah. Do you know where you're headed? Yeah. You normally don't like betting on Thursday night football games, right? Well, it depends if I like the side. I don't like the side here. I like total. I'm going under. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tone's okay. going under. Ty, I appreciate the hell out of you. What a day by you. I appreciate you too. Thank you. Your belief in C.J. Beathard, uh, the Iowa Hawkeye, okay. truly turned the tide today for me to kind of wonder whether I should stick with the Jags or not. I appreciate that. I'd go with the Jags if Beathard's starting, if if – Trevor Lawrence is starting. I might even fucking take the Saints. Uh, Boston Connor, you're the absolute man. Thanks for the majestic Tiger shirt. The boys in the back, you're the best. Mitt on the phones, even though we don't really get to him as much as we probably should. You're doing great back there. That's a baby, yeah. Mitt. Bill, the cameras that you, or the photos you've been taking with your camera out here, gotten the shot a couple of times. He got some good ones. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Wore a long sleeve today. I'm going to remember today. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get some of those photos. AJ, you crushed it. Can't wait to be in Ohio with you tomorrow. And ladies and gentlemen, the man who makes all of our TikTok videos. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. A guy who I'm not sure I've heard him speak more than uh, 40 to 45 words. Yep. Around there. A guy that I've never seen a more focused worker than, and a man that we're very lucky to have a part of our company. He's the only human that has any action, interaction with TikTok from our show. Yep. 
or TikTok, I think, has a million. Yeah, it does. We're following those people on there. This week. I think it has a million on there. And it's because of this dude's incredible work. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Talk's birthday. And no he's 30 way. seconds Shut behind. Yeah. He's 30, 35 seconds behind. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Headphones and an earbud. Happy, Happy birthday, dear talk. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, talk. Sergeant Talk over there. We How old is he? Anybody know? No, yeah, 17. Not blue. <laughs> I'd take a bullet for him, but I have no idea what his age is. I gotta be 25-ish, if I had to guess. Is the that 35? right? Yeah. 25-ish? Yeah, 25-ish. Yeah. He headphone listening to live show. Yep. AirPod listening to what he's editing. <laughs> yep. Okay. Jeez. So he's listening to a 30 second behind and maybe two hours ago. Yeah. And he's trying to <laughs> caption the entire thing. Uh huh. One of the most fascinating <laughs> brains. <laughs> Of all time. AJ, it is phenomenal to watch this guy work. It's awesome. He just comes like in. Just comes genius. in. Genius. Yeah, just comes in. Yep. Morning. Sits down. <laughs> he does yep. one. Yeah. Comes on in. <laughs> sits down. And he's just locked so in. I fucking love that. I got guy. a photo yeah. of that exact face that I took yesterday. If, if, yep. if we want to show it's it. real. That's actually yeah. what he looks like. He's yeah. fucking legendary. Yeah. yeah, he is. And then as soon as he's done, it's just like, oh, I'm going to run six miles. <laughs> And yep. he gets on the treadmill, <laughs> runs like six miles, just like super. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, just keeps it moving. Talk, you're a good one, pal. We're very yep. lucky to have you. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy birthday. He's phenomenal. He oh, yeah. I love he's the best. So and, good. I, and I do like, I've called him talk since I first met him because yeah. he's doing the TikToks. But like, he also doesn't talk. No, no. Yeah. That's why. So it's like a double on No offense to everyone else. You guys. He's my favorite coworker by far. Talk? Yeah. <laughs> Not even close. There he is, locked in. Boom. There's the eyes. <laughs> That's all man. day. All day. That's focused. I mean, never right stops, there. dude. That's focused. Locked in. It's remarkable. He shows up, sits down, does that, mm -hmm. grabs it. He refills his water bottle over here. He stays yeah, hydrated. Hundred he always. Does, yeah. he, he stays hydrated. He he, that's the only time he really gets up. And then he goes right back over, puts it, both headphones back on. And he's locked right back in until that water bottle's empty. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That is, that is exactly yeah. what he does all day. Yeah. Uh, so Zito also has informed me that he is potentially the first uh, person here that clogged John too, I guess. Oh, he's done it twice. twice. Oh, yeah. yeah. He lays twice. massive, <laughs> yeah, massive He takes log. big shits, too. Add that to his <laughs> resume. <laughs> massive log. Throw man. that in there what? on the back end. I did not know that. Yeah. Works times, really yeah. hard. How do we know that? Lays Those logs. are like commercial toilets there, too, I We feel. say, who clogged the toilet? And he goes, oh, oh shit. God, that was me. Let me go deal with that. Yeah. He says all those words? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, he said, call the toilet again. Yep. <laughs> and went and grabbed a plunger and went yep, and he did. It. <laughs> Just a courtesy flush, dude. You know why you're in the middle there? Yep. He's already, But that's the thing. While he's pooping, he's already thinking about the TikTok that he's not making right at that moment so he's got to get back it's phenomenal dude it is it is <laughs> what did he do before this what was he doing i think he was a talk for another company right? yeah principal yeah. at a uh, elementary school <laughs> 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 he has an emmy doesn't he yeah he's got an emmy actually when he worked for the mlb well uh after college dude he's hilarious hey thank you talk a baby love talk. you talk Give anything to be able to clog a toilet these days. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, when you're eating applesauce all day, that's why you don't get it. <laughs> we got a Metamutasol up in here. <laughs> He's crushed. What are you, I've never heard I'm so thing. jealous, talk. <laughs> what, you dump, dump uh, get tiny when you're older? That's hilarious. I didn't just know wait, that. AJ. Yeah. Just like Not fun. Dumb. No. They, they don't beta, tell you about it. Little beta poop. Yeah, they don't tell you about yeah, that I, as you get older. Things smell like start. dust. That's a good time, though, isn't it? I mean, that's a good... So much is done while people are just absolutely slaughtering oh, yeah. some porcelain. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So much gets done. Oh, yeah. In talk. Multitask. Just absolutely slaughtering our toilets here. Yeah. Has anybody else had got it on the scoreboard there? Uh, I don't think I don't so. There's think been so. some definitely He's some... by a landslide. I know that. He's the first and only <laughs> to be able to uh, clog a toilet here once and also the first and only to be able to clog a toilet here twice is mm -hmm. what we're saying here. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's another well, you fucking know talent, dude. Huh? Hmm. That toilet paper that you buy, these guys, nice. whoever, like it's, yeah, it's, it's a quilt. It's the best. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Is that Charmin in there? Like 
Triple ultra, motherfucker. Yeah. It is ultra. Yeah. Well, I got to be an MF. You didn't deserve that. I got to be an MF. You didn't deserve that, Chuck. No, I'm such an asshole. I'm sorry. I mean, went, what is that all about? And it was like not <laughs> wasn't a like funny moment. No, it no, was like, sorry. Was, as soon as I said it, I knew <laughs> I went too far with the old guy. So you want to, do you want to know why that is, uh, I assume that was a decision that was made at some point uh, here. So I was at, you know, Lucas Oil Stadium. Oh, oh my God. And I had to take... No, a, you did. I had to take a dump before a game, and the toilet paper was single-ply toilet paper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, this should be in the away locker room, and the home locker room should have the nicest toilet paper. Why are we even thinking about you that? You get a pinky through, finger through? Yeah, yeah that's why yeah. I always take off my... Uh, ring that's right. That's yeah, started. Poop in his pinky ring. Yeah, yep. He's going to poop on it. <laughs> But nonetheless, yeah, you can't. If you want to keep people in your favor, yeah. you, you need not get the single it start, it But does the talk know that there's wipes in there as well? Yeah, yeah. obviously there's not. Too, yeah, that's because our guy Ty. He knows there's wipes. In there. <laughs> Everyone knows there's wipes in there. Now he is a he is a backroom bathroom with me. He is, guy. yeah, yeah, he is. Talk, I thought it was upstairs. Yeah. No, no, no. He, he goes, is all over the place. He goes back here. I know where Foxy goes upstairs. That's his yeah, room. Yeah. That's his deal. That's where he, he's got like a little him and uh, that whole side, doesn't it? So why doesn't talk go up there? <laughs> I think he does, guys. He, uh, I know he's he clogged everyone. He clogged, he clogged this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he has clogged I know he's clogged toilet. this one. A plunger just showed up in that upstairs. Okay, okay. so, so yeah, that's so, yeah. That one. That one. Yeah. Two. Yeah. He's taking two two toilets live so far. He's hey. testing them all out. See which ones. Hey, way to go, talk. We'll build you your own throne. And baby, talk. As he tried the women's room because those are strong toilets too. I don't think anyone's used them. Nobody, nobody has used the women's room except diapers. for the ladies of the just red panda. That's right, red panda. I wouldn't mind getting in there though. Giving it a spin, just to see. It's chilly up there. Yeah. It, is, um, it is cold over there. Red Panda, that I watched a video from. Uh, it's in our open, I guess. But like, I watched the video of the Red Panda, draft spectacular thing. Yeah, we gotta do more of that. We gotta we gotta explore this space over here. Absolutely. Don't you think, AJ? We gotta explore this space. Red Panda was out here kicking bowls on her fucking head. Sick. In the middle of the NFL draft. That was yeah. one of the most absurd <laughs> things of all time. It was halftime. Oh, it was I was ten feet away from Red Panda. I mean, it was Mad Mel Kuyper was giving a breakdown from yeah. this mm -hmm. room, obviously way over in Kansas City. That's right. Wherever mm -hmm. he was there. But like we need to do more of that. Right I got back, an idea. Michael Malone. What is it? You know those guys that the trampoline and the crash pads? Oh the dunking? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That'd be oh, got got Phoenix hoops. Suns, the Suns mascot, the, the gorilla. Gorilla. That gorilla posted a photo of me. I ain't never looked more high in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Go oh, yeah. yeah, fire! That was absurd. Jeez, you did look. The Flash. Though, remember, Chuck. You got to remember the, yeah. the yeah. technology. Incredibly these days. bright. It's dark in the suite, and then the Flash made it all weird. Yeah, and you could tell. I've been drinking all day too. <laughs> All day. They were playing sweet. Smoking all day, too. <laughs> all, all, <Yeah>. well, <laughs> maybe, maybe that was happening. But yeah, I was blinking at the wrong time. The flash was bright. And they just sent that thing out. That was the first oh, yeah. time I was really posted on their thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, meet this guy. Yeah. He's there. And everybody's just, he's at the highest motherfucker. <laughs> what the? <laughs> on earth? Yep. Remember that blue carpet they put us on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was cool. Let's get to a break. Wait, Wait, blue carpet in Phoenix? No, out at the uh, oh, ESPN God. thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was the worst. I had oh, red carpet. Thing. Forgot Jesus. about that. I Chuck, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like necessarily prepared for this world that we're in right now. You know, at all that stuff. I decided to eat things at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. It seems like on a very regular basis. And that ESPN party, we had no idea where we we're walking. I don't think any of us knew what we were walking into. No, no clue. Into we heard Posner. Was there? Yeah. Wow. So we were jacked up about that. Oh, wow. but we had no idea what we were walking into. That was my first red carpet. I Everyone got, was in ball gowns, and we showed up in t-shirts and jeans. I had a flannel on. Yep. I had a flannel on, and they're like, "Will you do the red carpet?" And I was like, "No, no, I don't do red carpets." They're like, "Yeah, you have to." Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. If not, nobody's allowed in. It's like, well, we just rode for forty-five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So we, we have, rode for going in that we're, fucking we're room. Going, <laughs> will you just talk to two people then? Yeah, sure. We make a deal. We negotiate. Yeah. I mean, there was. It was certainly something. There, there Bruce is. gave six executives concussions when he was dancing to uh, <laughs> Mike Posner. Posner. Mm -hmm. he did. Yeah, he also licked the college football national yeah, championship trophy. Oh, Tastes like schnozberry. <laughs> I didn't lick anything. Bruce, beautiful Bruce. trophy though. Bruce, you were vibing. You had the most fun out of anybody at that party. Yeah, po of course. When Posner told you to get down too, you did. That was an interesting thing that Mike Posner did. He had crowd control of that place. Yeah, he, he truly did. He told everybody, get down, shut up. Mm -hmm. And then, like, as the song came back, boom, 
the whole, the whole place came back alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never seen a whole place in unison like what Posner had the boys doing. Yeah. And Bruce was right in the middle of all yeah. of it. It was almost like Posner and Bruce were actually controlling the whole room. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah, Tony so mentioned it, though, before. You know, when Lee Corso was playing sax yeah. and you're not standing up and partying for Mike Posner and mm-hmm. Lee, then you yeah. don't have a pulse. Do you think he'll do it at the ESPN party this year? Posner? No, Lee. It was not... Lee Corso, Coach what? Corso on. on the saxophone. It was uh, another very talented saxophone player. I think his name was Lee. Oh. And you guys just said, oh, that's sure. Lee Corso up there. But I believe Lee Corso would be able to. Hey, how about Lee Corso? You're going to see him this weekend, obviously, college game day. In... Yeah. Wait till you see him, dude. Like, he's so quick still. Like, he runs up steps. Oh. Like, this guy. Baller. He, he's 80. What is 80? 80... 84? 85? 86? Yeah, 86. He's great. I always chat with him a little bit when we, whenever we do the Friday live shows and I see him in the halls of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, before and after the show. It's great. It's great catching up. He's still doing wow. it. Wow. You know he what I mean? He seems like he's really good. He's. His gen- yeah, energy he's is still, good. Yeah. His energy is good. You know what I mean? Like, for me, yeah. what I see, he's so nice to me. Always has been very nice to me. I think he is. Um, there's a photo of him and Saban looking at me, and that's one of the most wild situations <laughs> of all time. But I think, like, Lee Corso does. Um, Mm, I don't want to speak for him, but it feels as if he understands what I what I'm doing. Like, I think I, so. I think mm-hmm. he understands what uh, what is happening. You know, like w- why I'm doing what I'm doing, how I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, I think he's very uh, he gets it. You know, with me, he always has. But like, you watch him kind of just operate, and he'll still drop like a little piece of advice mm-hmm. to me. Like, he'll come up to me and like coach me up on something. It's like really cool. Like, it's a really cool interaction with him. You know, he's the first. Um, my grandparents all passed away, so like I. I haven't, I don't really have relationships with like older folks in my life. My wife's grandma, I've got a chance to chat with and everything like that. Boy, they've lived it. You know what I mean? Like we were just talking about like, Mm -hmm. we were just talking about like uh, everything that happened in 2020. It's like the amount of shit that they've kind of been through and seen. So anytime you can get like a little, a nice little advice or. It's got to feel so good, right? Yeah, it is. Super cool. Super cool. He's still working though. Oh oh, yeah. I've told him a hundred times. I'm like, I don't know. I would not be. I don't, first of all, That's people like, are going to kick my ass out of this whole thing in, in no time. But also, I don't know how you well, aren't we working to, man? You enjoy the hell out of it. Keep doing whatever the fuck you're doing. Yeah, uh, you're, no. I do not have That's it. It's like Tom Moore. I mean, no. Oh, what is? That's unbelievable. How old is he? Seventy what? I uh, think no, he's, he's eighty. Yeah, close to eighty five. Because he signed an extension at eighty two, and I think that was last year. <laughs> Coaching for Tampa still. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. eighty four. Yeah, eighty four years old. He's going to go with us this year to Pebble Beach deal that Jim Lines, you know, the guy for Jack's Donuts. Donuts. Jack's Donuts. Hey, a lot of donuts here today. He takes yeah. us out there and hosts host us to that thing. Thanks Coach Moore's going to come out. How's this golf game? He can hit the, I mean, you yeah. the guys are going, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, 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 you know, I get my ass kicked by 80 year olds at the course that does right down the middle. They're never in trouble and they can chip and putt like Moe's. Is Tom one of those guys? Probably. Oh, you think he stinks? Probably. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't mean that. Uh, yeah. No, he, okay. You okay. Snuck okay. In. No, he doesn't. Uh, he, he's he's going to hear this. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's still talking shit. But the stories. Yeah. Just been there, done that with everything. He backed Remember up Johnny Unitas. Yeah. yeah. He backed up Johnny Unitas. That's nuts. And now he's still coaching in the NFL. You guys oh. remember Holcomb, right? Kelly Holcomb? Or yes. Uh, legend. We had him at the Browns when Couch was our quarterback, and then he got hurt, and then the playoff game that we came and. He, he threw for a million yards and touchdown Toddy, Tommy Maddox threw for a million yards. Yep. And come back, come back. he told the greatest story. He's like, how come you're always yelling at me and you never yell at Peyton? You know, when he was at the Colts with him in the early and late 90s. And uh, and you're always MFing me and, and you never yell at Peyton. Why is that, Tommy? And he goes, because he's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> That was life. That's why whenever we learned about Aaron not having any say at Green Bay, I was so confused. Because, like, Tom Moore saying that. I mm-hmm. picked up Johnny mm-hmm. Unitas. It's like the whole building was like that. Hey, I'm, that Peyton's place is fucking wild, dude. The, the, the shoot that I was a part of for this thing, there was like 50. There was, uh, I don't remember the I think I counted. Cool. Yeah. There was like 40 people working this thing. It was like, okay. I like that a lot of people are getting jobs and working out of this. It was one of the most professional things I've ever like. They had a, a trailer for me. It was wow. It was a whole first class. I mean, it was fucking unbelievable. Like, if anybody ever gets asked to do one, I would say like, uh, yeah, you should do it. I had like snacks, food. You like, don't I mean, it's services. Peyton Manning, right? Like a movie, dude. It's it was deep, like you, a fucking. You played movie. with him. Yeah, it's. You can imagine. There's nothing, no detail. 
no stone that's unturned when it comes to that. Well, they had this, they had this drone shot happening at the same time as this other thing. They got this. It was remarkable, and I was like, uh, they sent a request. Is there any chance that you would maybe want to participate in blah blah blah? I'm like, where's it at? They're like Indianapolis. I'm like, uh, yeah. yeah, sure. And then I get there, and I'm like. Oh, this is a really fucking important thing. Like, it feels like <laughs> there's a lot going on here. It was top of the line. Four seasons. That's a lot. Of, they need Lots. to put that on YouTube. I agree. That'd be smart. Yeah. yeah they sure. need to put that on YouTube. Yeah. Don't it's you think? Good show. It? Peyton's great. It's a good show. It's a really good show because Peyton is awesome in those situations. Yeah. They need to put it everywhere. They should also find a block sort of just running on ESPN, ESPN2. Yep. Like, yeah, run it late at night or something. 11 p.m., yeah, I don't know why. You know what I'm that. bummed about? This is a great pivot, and shout out to Peyton for having me on in Omaha and NFL Films for kicking ass and everything. But you know what I enjoyed last night? <laughs> oh, yeah. And it took us too long to talk about this. I'm sure people are pissed off. Don't look now. Okay. That WNBA Finals game last night was a battle. Mm-hmm. There, was a, there was a star player puke in the middle of the game mm-hmm. on TV. Get back out there and continue to play. There was a, a momentum swing, a lead swing, and then a reigning champion goes into somebody else's house and goes back to back for the first time since 2001, I believe, 2002 with the Sparks. And I did my research last night because uh, I will say I don't know much sure. about the WNBA's history. No, you're becoming a fan right now. The Houston Comets, mm-hmm. okay, 97. Through 2000, four straight. Range. Wagon. Just fucking wagon. Yep. Then the Sparks right afterwards, yep, 2001, Leslie. 2002. They were the last team to go back to back until this Aces team last night did their thing. I'm confused about the last play. Very. I, I'm confused about the last play. Mm-hmm. You know, AJ, I know you were dialed in. You coach your daughter's basketball team. That was, a, that was a fun game to watch, like genuinely fun game to watch last oh, yeah. night because the Red Wings were, you know, Kicking the shit out of the oh, penguins. Yeah. So that was on, but no, trying not to focus there. I'm watching WWE. That was an entertaining game, and it was a sold out. Hey, unlike the unlike unlike they play super hard. Whoa, they really do. Unlike that was a full barn. Okay. Anyways, mm. that game was sold out. Great environment. I enjoyed watching it, AJ. I, and I'm hey, that Aces team is fucking in the middle of the dynasty. Okay, and we need they to are. enjoy it while we're watching it, AJ. Who's gonna stop him? I mean. To go three in a row, that's the problem. Like, do they have anybody that can compete? Well, the Liberty were set. The Libs were set up to compete, yeah, right? Yeah, the Libs are still very good. If uh, yeah, they did an off night shooting, a couple of them. Yeah, B yeah. Stu, B Stu, B Stu. Yeah. I think, you know, Fat Joe said at halftime that any given time now, B Stu is going to start cooking. Yep. And she did. She's certainly a force, but not what she usually does. And that's why I think the ball was given to her on that last play because she's B Stu. Yep. Yeah. And, and she's. And, and if she was isolated, one on one, league MVP. How about when they got oh, Sabrina? Didn't get the ball. How, yeah. How about when they got the coaches on? Oh, in the in game, the game. Is, that is awesome. Becky Hammond, she's like, "Well, we need to do this." Hey, motherfucker! You, she it, starts screaming, "Play some damn defense!" They're cutting. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I enjoyed the access. Right. Yeah. A lot mm-hmm. of access. It felt like they were. They understand. Yeah. They got to make it. Why they have that on Sunday? I don't know. To start that whole thing. Makes I no sense. On NFL Sunday. Yeah, it sucks. And if Becky leaves for the Aces, like, mm-hmm. Becky should get an NBA job. She should be a head coach in the NBA for sure. She was with the Spurs, was, right? Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. she almost she got a couple interviews, but then she went to the Aces. She, she should actually be. Like, if the Celtics don't do well this year, I would want Becky Hammond to be the head coach. She's a dog. She's yeah. beast, right? Yeah. Uh, like, like, very, very, very good. Immediately went to the Aces and changed everything. Yeah, right? th- she's been there for two years. And they've won two championships. You know who else has been there for two years? Who's that? Uh, oh. Kirsten Bell. Boom! Mm-hmm. She has maybe the cleanest fade I've ever seen. Did you see her last night? She has oh, this yeah. fade that is just and a neck tat, and at one point, she told the crowd to shut up, bitch. Yep. I saw in slow mo, and I'm like, yup, <laughs> yeah. yup, one would like that on my team. I would not mess with her. Well, there's, there was, uh, cause hey, they're like. Oh yeah, they, they're banging down. Like Asia Wilson is filthy. They let them play too, right? I oh, mean, yeah. there was like, oh, if yeah. that was like an NBA game, guys would be flopping, falling out, screaming for fouls. Mm-hmm. They didn't ask for shit. They just competed their asses off. And then at the very end, we got the special treat of seeing an NFL owner doing his thing, exactly. doing his dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People forget Mark Davis, world champion again. He said it in his speech. Yep. He said, hey, Las Vegas, how about it? We're world champions again. <laughs> Sporting that sweet ass, too. Always. Where was Brady? He's part owner, isn't he? Yeah, he was at one of the games. Or I guess oh. I think he was 
is at game two oh, in but Vegas. not the final. Huh. He's working. He had huh. let's go. True. We ran a clip a couple times. Yeah. yeah. He had a lot of stuff. Let's go. I mean, I think Jim Gray. Is Jim Gray in New York? No. I would assume so. Hey, you know who was? Darren Waller plays for the Giants. He got a chance to be there. Yeah, yeah. That was That nice. was great to see him and Kelsey have their moment afterwards. Yeah. Husband, wife. Mm -hmm. What an incredible power couple. Yeah, that 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 child. Yeah, like, start offer making offers. There's not even a baby conceived yet. I don't think, but you got an offer. <laughs> yeah, from from my school, yeah. whatever whatever school I am I mean, able to do that, I'm doing. She's a dog. Oh yeah. Hey, like she came bouncing into that press conference afterwards, mm -hmm. just like last year with the thing. The mm -hmm. giant took Jay it over. Man. Teammates love her too. You watch teammates all enjoy everything she's doing, and then she'll go out and just the South Carolina women's coach. Dawn Staley. She was there, right on the bench. Yeah, I mean, she so. coached uh, Asia mm -hmm. in college. So that that's the that's the tie. Yeah. What did she do? She yelled at somebody or something. Dawn Staley. Yeah, probably. She's just a fucking junkyard dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I. Yeah, yeah she is. That's yeah. what I remember. Yeah. 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 Love everything about a lot of it. Women's coaches are. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. It was awesome to watch last night. Yeah. It was. Fever here in town. They'll what? get there. They got the rookie of the year. They're saying the fever are bad, right? That's what everybody said. I think so. They do well, have the rookie of the year. Did they have five top ten picks like two years ago? So yeah. I, I don't know what's normal, so please don't judge it. They're on the up and up. You're deliver yeah, absolutely. They're gonna be better this year. Just like the Pacers. Just well, yeah. Pacers are through the roof. Buy stock now. Yep. Tyrese Halliburton's about to go <laughs> bananas. Yep. I met his dad. Absolutely, yeah. His dad's a great guy. Tyrese is a great guy. We we're sitting next to him at the <laughs> WWE event fast lane, pr premium live event. Uh Nice. I do worry that the talent levels between the Pacers and some other teams. There, there are like five about? or six super teams now where it's it, it's almost back to when We got was, TJ McConnell. You need to sh watch your mind. Okay, yep. My bad, my bad. Mm -hmm. My bad. But just think about it. Where did okay? he dominate the hardwood at? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Chartiers Valley, more specifically. Duquesne University. Okay. It's true. He's from Charval, though. Yeah. You were right, as was I, but... Duquesne was a stop point for TJ yeah. McConnell. He was a Duke. Yeah. They go dancing? No, of course. With him? Yeah. And then he went to Arizona. What years? It's a lot of years for him. He's been for a while, yeah. It might be 10 plus. Yeah, Bruce, he, didn't you get bet. into a verbal altercation with this guy and then get a yellow card in the arena? Yeah, he, he's the man. I mean, he did almost get a technical foul for talking shit to me and then said, well, he's talking shit to me. And then I got a technical foul myself, basically. <laughs> But but now we're boys. He's in the stands. Yeah. Knicks were taking on the Pacers. He's in town. He gets rather close seats, right? I mean, you were pretty. Yeah, yeah. I was like maybe three rows up. And I, oh! I, I, was just, I, was just letting, well. I was just letting TJ know that he couldn't guard the guy that he was guarding. He was incapable of doing so, and I decided to let him know. And I got him right Ooh. at that perfect moment before the ball's inbounded where the place just gets real quiet for a second. It was nice. <laughs> Did you get any pops from the crowd? Um, no. No, not really. I, I stuff thrown it thrown at you. The second Knicks game I went to versus the Pacers, I did have some other Pacers fans kind of getting in my face, like, "Hey, shut the fuck up." Yeah, because you are like obnoxious <laughs> at these games, right? I mean, that's yeah, like kind of your really. thing. Does not back oh, down. Yeah, yeah, because he's a Colts fan now, so we get to boozed? experience it yeah. a little bit. So you get mm -hmm. boozed up. You get uh, boozed up, Bruce. He'll have a couple of beers. Wide. He'll have a couple of beers every once in a while. But yeah, he'll get he gets loud for oh, the. Yeah. It's good to see him for the Colts, and I think. The reason why is because he's betting a handsome amount on the Colts, mm -hmm. and he's at the Colts game. Right. Mm -hmm. So in his mind, it's like need to be invested yeah. in the Colts. And I've appreciated watching it because he is like a passionate fan. I've seen him like tell other teams, "Shut up." Mm -hmm. you know I mean, I pre he's but he is that fan in the stands that is very active, mm -hmm. like very very active. People that would say like Robert Mathis, I'd kick your ass. I'm like, what? I don't think mm. so. No. I think Robert Mathis would beat the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. Probably. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Hey, this is about it, though. So let's talk about this. These live shows in front of people, we haven't been able to really, uh, you know, because the crowds don't really take it over. Yep. You know, I mean, that, that's just matter of fact. And with my attention span, I feel obligated for the people that show up to kind of do stuff for them. Yes. So tomorrow, certainly covering tonight's Thursday night football game. Mm -hmm. sure. Certainly making all our picks for the weekend. Sure. But I do believe we are going to be, we're going to have some, oh, Ryan Day is on the show tomorrow. Here we go. Okay, head coach of Ohio State, Ryan Day will be on the program tomorrow. Okay. Hell yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr. will be on Ooh, the program heard of tomorrow. Let's go. Love that. The general Bob Carpenter will be live in person. Okay, yes. of course. Mm, okay, yeah. That's going to be must watch. Can't wait for that for his top five. A.Q. Shipley, a -Q -Sh I believe, is going to be live in person. Remember, he went, he's one of Penn State's <laughs> most famous alums. Right. Oh, absolutely. A.Q. 
and I think some other surprises as well. Rascal Flats guy? <gasps> nah, he's got another gig, unfortunately. Oh, man. Midday on a Friday? Really? Oh, kid's birthday party? He's somewhere out of town, somewhere in a different state. Son of a bitch. He'd have killed it, though. He'd have done great. Always <laughs> does. Us saying we had Rascal Flats guy on the show, too? Like, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. That's it. Don't you think? Yeah, hey. He'll come on. He'll do it. But you said he you won't. said he's yeah. not going to. Not this one. Not this exact one. I guess we, I probably should have given him a little more lead, Next up, one. lead time. Tell him to jump on the highway. Come on, Don. Jump yeah, he on wants the a ride. highway. Yeah. I want to ride all, all night long. long. Yeah, 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 yeah. He has a buttery voice. Oh, right? yeah. He's That's the one, right? Not the other one? Yeah, Gary, the lead singer. Yeah, he loves butter. Rascal? <laughs> more flats. Do you have to... Like to get a buttery. I don't know. What? Is he born with that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Just born with a. Who came up with buttery voice? Well, because it's like a savory. Yeah. You think about butter, you think about like just yeah. putting it over a nice toasted Hawaiian roll. No, I like who, who first said that? Probably Chris Fowler. Sun Tzu, probably. He came in with probably. his buttery voice and just. I don't know if Sun Tzu said that. Did commanded he? Him. he might have. Sun Tzu said a lot. He did. He did. I don't mm -hmm. know if he ever. It might have been in there. Isn't it crazy they were able to keep his. For, when did he die? What did they say? What was how many years back? 1982 30. BC, I think. Oh. 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 But 1982 BC. That's a long time ago. Bro. Long time ago. That's how you know his words are important. Yep. Hey, Amen. That's where we'll end it today in the church of what's happening now. Nice. Love that. Saban was awesome. He was. Unbelievable. Always is. He was sweet today. Yeah. Yes. He had a good good vibe, didn't he? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Great vibe. He I, loves. I mean. Love Every, he loves you. Loves not coming either. on here. Loves all the. I mean, I think he doesn't like. Him. He would not. There's no way he'd do that if he didn't. I mean, yeah, I assume because. And you're paying him fucking a million dollars. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I mean, he will be. God he will forbid. be properly. He will be properly paid for his time with us, but also like, <laughs> he. He he's done it all, dude. He's done everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think he owns a Ferrari dealership. Beast. I like Mercedes, Mercedes. as well. A couple, couple of condos. A couple, couple, yeah. That's that super business stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? That's mm -hmm. like John Elway. He yep. has like a bunch of those car dealerships out there. It's like, that's a lot to manage. It's like, well, I don't, what are we talking about? I don't know do fucking shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, he's never said that. I assume no. he's very hands on. Right. But it's like those types of guys, their entire days are like, boom, boom, boom. Mapped. Need to be out by this exact point. Like Peyton, we definitely kept him probably two, three minutes over. I have no idea what we interrupted. Probably. <laughs> Some sort of very important thing. Yeah, Did a call with the DOJ or something. I mean, potentially, yeah. maybe changing some stuff. Maybe he's up for Speaker of the House. I mean, Could I heard be. that's happening Makes over sense. there. Nice. Hey, figure it out, by the way. What are we doing? Come on. They won't. I don't know what your thing is over there, but you guys should figure something out. I think their thing is not figuring stuff out. I, yeah. Oh, see, that feels like that would be something you say, but I think everybody says that. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, this is a... Put Fetterman in there and be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, just solved it for you. Pittsburgh guy, bro. Yeah. Pittsburgh guy. Yep. We followed that story from the beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's been fun, too. <clears throat> well, I have not kept up since. Aside from the health troubles, yeah, it's been pretty fun. You're a maniac. Let's not worry about that. Let's watch tonight's game, and we'll be back tomorrow live from Columbus, Ohio. AJ, let's crush it tomorrow, pal. Should be fun, man. It should be a great time. Why are you motivating for the uh, classy signs? Yeah, what is I'm not motivated. I, I'm just telling people. I, I was trying to promote the program. That's all I'm doing. Expectation. All right. I like I like interaction. I like the, the fan interaction we have. You're an influencer. We appreciate that. All right, we'll see everybody tomorrow. You're the best. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Goodbye. <laughs>